अभी इसको एक पाँच डिग्री इट इज आई थिंक पाँच डिग्री ऐसा करना है ओके okay. हाँ शूट कीजिए इसको सेव कीजिए ये जो इमेज आपके पास है और एक फिर दोबारा कीजिए नहीं ये ज्यादा हो गया इसको और दस डिग्री कीजिए सॉरी अभी इंक्रीजिंग और एक मिनट बेटा Five degrees is good enough. Shoot, please. Yeah, perfect. निकाल दीजिए. So, जो पहला वाला, इसके पहले वाला से पहला और ये वाला, दोनों में side में रखिए, side by side, और सी हम बाकी बाकी बताएँ. We used to film the site, horrible site. Yeah. Yes, sir. I remember Dr. Chobar and Dr. Tanna always taught us to use a pin. To uh, we used to put a needle in the inter uh, interlaminal space and then go in. Uh, the, those were the times where CMs were difficult to come by and expensive. But uh, it still has an error using the pin. There's a, there are other ways we used to do was to inject a dye, methylene blue, in the, uh, through that needle. So when you open up, you go there. But in MIS, you are not accessing that place. Another thing is getting, uh, uh, Dr. Chauber has shown a series of, uh, I'd say, uh, epidermal uh, cysts happening with the, so I'll just, uh, needles go at uh, dragging some of the skin inside. So what I'm marking here is this is where my, uh, these are the points where my uh, hemostat tips were. And if you see the, scan on the right hand side of the screen. Oh, the can I put a seat? I see our images on the right hand side. Can you put the CM image? Yeah, so if you see that I'm I have what I've drawn are the pedicles here. This is at an angle of five degrees caudal. So that gives me a fair idea of where I have to dock. So we try to dock on the facet which is somewhere here and that's the disk space. So this is and that's the midline. So, uh, एक इसका इमेज आप स्क्रीन पे अलग से दिखाइए और फिर ये इधर इधर का दिखाइए। So that's the anatomy on the table. So we'll start now. Knife, please. Yes. What I do? I place the reference pin and take a spin of the CR. Okay. The images get transferred on the worm, and then I know that where the facets are, and then I go and place my drop my MRI. Yeah, that's a very accurate way of doing it. Uh, but then when you pass your screws, you have to take another spin because the moment you do any interdiscal work with that, your anatomy is going to change. Your L4, say you are doing an L4-5, you are docked on three or four spinous process. Your four anatomy remains static. Yeah. But the moment you put a spacer between L4-5, your five anatomy is no longer the same. So you are going to get an error margin. So if you are going to get an error margin, then that, uh, I mean you use an OAM, we have put more than three and a half thousand screws now in the past four, five years. Not a single one reached the medial cortex. We had intentional in-out screws in thoracic uh, pedicles, which were small. Can we get the table down? So that's the reason I don't do my spin here. I do a TLF. I close that wound. Then I go down more laterally and put in more lateral angled screws so that you get more uh, how to say, juice out of every screw that you put in. A uh, longer, fatter screw will give you more, uh, how to say, um, stable environment. So there are people who do that. I have friends like my friend uh, Arvind, he does, uh, he would put in uh, with the navigation tag. He of course doesn't have an O-arm, but he uses an Arcadis or 2D. But I have that basic difference. If you're using navigation, you might as well use it for implantation for which it is intended. Docking is something that you can do with a C-arm. It's very quick with that. And uh, you will reserve the accuracy of the OAM just for putting in your screws. Is the height come kar sakte hai? Ya to mujhe ek... Very high. Ye, ye dikha rahe hai aap? Yeah. So this, this is the margin. So these are the pedicles. That's the display. Your facet is going to come in somewhere. She's an average size woman.
So you would this, uh, go in a fat patient, you would go somewhere around four centimeters here from the midline, about four centimeters. But she is not that fat, so two to three centimeters is an ideal entry point. And thoda niche ke, thoda niche ke. Kariye, 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 kariye. Okay, bus. So incision, uh, we are using a quadrant, right? So uh, see, it's a 22 millimeter tube, which can be expanded to 25. But that's the diameter. So you have to remember that the circumference is more important. And that is 2 pi r. So it's 3.14 multiplied by 11 that you would want to do. So you would take a 3 to a 3 and a half centimeter cut. Because if you take a 22 millimeter cut, you're going to stretch the skin and you will have a skin necrosis. So that's not what you want. So I'm taking the outsides of the pedicle. Roughly three centimeters will go down. And once that is there, we would angulate that. So and the more, please, yeah. This lady is fairly thin. There is hardly any subcute there. So open up. This causes the muscle not to get damaged. Put in a finger, the smallest tube. What do you have? This is like barely this much deep. Dilators, please. So the sequential dilation, initially we used to have a K-wire. You have to be aware of that. You feel the facet, dock on the facet. Let this be like a periosteum elevator or a cob. I'm trying to take out whatever little I can take out. Then I put the next one. So this takes the muscle away. Again, on the lamina, on the facet joint, the next one. So this has a marking. So three or four. Which one do you have? Three or four? Small, smallest one? Four. Four, okay. So she's a very petite lady. In fact, it's not at all uh, like average where I practice. We have carbohydrate-rich diet-fed Gujarati and Maharashtrian ladies. I am a Maharashtrian married to a Gujarati. So both sides of my family are fairly obese like me. So we would put in six, seven. We had the misfortune of operating a 150 kg lady day before yesterday. I can tell you it's not easy. Docking takes more time than decompressing. Dr. Vishal, are you doing all your cases by MIS or do you do open t lift also? Open t lift I haven't done in a very long time. And when I say a long time, I mean a budget for that. So we have a free kind of ward that happens. So in that ward, we have done probably in this year one tea leaf that we last week, yeah, or that is open. Because even when we don't have the budget for uh, this thing, what we do is we use an MIS photo and we put normal screws through them using landmarks. So that's kind of, now we, I need one more dilator. The last dilator is not there, sorry. Sorry, my bad. So what do you think is a quicker surgery? Open TLF or a MISTD? So uh, this was a question that was asked to me a lot of times by my very good friend Samir. So he was doing an open TLF, I was doing an MIST lift. And he said, look, I finished my surgery and I'm outside and you're still putting your screws in. I had only one thing to say. Uh, the ladies, please excuse me for what I'm going to say uh, to this uh, answer. There is nothing like a fast and quick good surgery. What about the it's safety of the surgeon that's what I'm saying. radiation no, exposure? No, so, so that's what I'm saying. Let me finish my answer. This is for all the trainees and people who wish to do spine surgery. There is no pride in doing a fast surgery. You have to do a proper surgery. Fast surgeries were done when anesthesia was not good and was dangerous. Today, the reason we can do complicated surgeries is because our anesthetists, anesthetists have gone much, much better than what they were a few decades back. Doing a fast surgery is like premature ejaculation. It leaves nobody except the person doing it happy. You should do a proper surgery, pituitary. So does that answer one? Second thing, radiation is a big risk of uh, surgery. And uh, that's the reason you should switch to navigation. And uh, when you use an OAM, the radiation risk to the patient is a little higher. But the surgeon and his team who do it day in and out have very little exposure. So if you, I would show this photograph of my hand on left side. I have no hair here. And I have a lot of this, because this is a uh, hand where I would use a Jamshedi needle to put it in. And that's where, uh, can we get the microscope so that they can have a look at what we are doing? Microscope, microscope dripping, Kijay. So I'm going to, I have just docked on the, this thing. Can I have a opener? Okay. 
is me here. So, uh, so once it is docked, the uh, quadrant being an expandable system, it can be opened ca uh, ca uh, ca in the cephaloid and caudal direction, and you can kind of give it a little opening angulation, so it re increases your reach, and that is the thing, loosen. Sorry, did that answer the question of why MIS is better than open? Yeah, there was a debate uh, in which Dr. Vaccaro mm -hmm. was a proponent of open TLF. Mm -hmm. That is why he put this question. So the thing is, see, I personally believe now, I learned under Dr. Tanna and Dr. Chauber's team in Nair, my PG was there. I did my fellowship with Professor Wong and Daita, and all of them are open surgeons. Eventually, it's like laparotomy used to be the gold standard, but 30 years ago when I was training. Today, if you say, you're going to do an open appendix or an open gallbladder, people will laugh at you. Because that is done where technology access is not there. Where you have the tech, you should not be doing it. It might take some time, but it leaves a much lesser footprint. It uh, is much safer, and the outcomes are definitely better. We do up to grade four listasis. We have more than 100 cases of that that we've done. And it hasn't caused any problem. See our image where we are docked, take lateral lesion. So the proponents of open surgery, when we started in 2012, the entire Bombay Spine Society was like, this is just a marketing tool. Today, if you go on the website of every spine surgeon, whoever he is, all of them very proudly say that they are minimal access surgeons. So that's where world has come to. If you think that open surgery is better than minimal access surgery, it will be fine for today. But 10 years down the line, you're going to be a dinosaur. You're going to go in extinct. So it's better to adapt early at whatever age it takes. Dr. Vikas Gupte, the person who helped me with my initial thing, took a fellowship break when he was 47 years old and today is the finest MIS surgeon in the country. And this was in 2004. Today is 60 and he still pushes the envelope. So there's no reason why anybody else can't do that. I took my break when I was into practice for nine years to go and train again for MIS. Sorry, I can't hear anything from the audience. I hope they are Yeah, here. we are there. Yeah. Iska height badaiye thoda. So this is something I always do. The reason is we operated one staff member 2011 in Jaslok. And uh, while we were docking, the patient was given a head high. So instead of docking at L45, the entry point of L45 and L5-S1 is the same. It is just an angulation of 15 degrees. That 15 degree angulation actually took us to the wrong level and we had big trouble. We ended up fusing the L5-S1. We had to go back to the L4-5 and it was extremely embarrassing to tell the sister that we did the wrong level. She was very nice about it. But after that, every case, it takes five minutes extra, but I would want to check the level I have docked in all the time. Apne gaun pe na? Full down KJ CM? Full down. Full down, full down. Full down hai, the table height ke upper KJ. Okay. Aja please. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry about this. So that's where we have docked. Aap thoda niche leke aye CM ko sister. Ye thoda niche le le. No, no, I would totally agree with Vishal that uh, uh, MIS surgery is the way to go. Uh, but uh, you have no indications for an open um, uh, uh, surgery, Vishal. Say multi-level, you would, um, how many levels would you do with the uh, MIS surgery? So, so uh, initially anything beyond two, we would do open. Uh, because it just takes a lot time, a lot of time to do TLIFs. But with the advent of OLIFs now, we would do a MIS TLIF at 5S1, and if the bifurcation is very uh, high at 4-5, but rest of the other levels would do TLIF. But yes, in adult degen deformities, which are stiff, I still don't do MIS because in stiff deformities, the whole idea of doing was to get a proper correction, which would be lost if you're not doing it properly. So that is one stiff, I would still prefer open because whatever I have done MIS in my hands, the results haven't been so good. So that's uh, the only indication. So of course, money is another thing because MIS is, tends to be a little expensive. But with the in, uh, advent of Indian screws, I think that has also gone out now. 
Say if in an adult deformity you need a fusion at one level and a decompression at two levels. So, so I would still do MIS, sir. Fine. So you would um, uh, want the same. Uh, um, so uh, ideally, yes, sir. I would want it to the same level. Right. But uh, if uh, it is far apart, right. then I would probably just take another entry portal. Right. Fine. Totally agree with you that MIS is the way to go. So, but this, I would also like to add a keyword that this is after doing this for more than about, I think we started doing 2007 T lifts and decompressions before that. So, microscope ready? Okay, so I will just show what I am doing. Uh, it takes time to go there. Lights are hot. Microscope pass me, please. You'll have to excuse me because this is a very good Leica. I am not used to Leica. I usually use a uh, Zeiss microscope for my surgeries. Is the light a little bit less, please? Okay, this is here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it. हाइट थोड़ा ऊपर कीजिए। टेबल हाइट को ऊपर कीजिए प्लीज। थैंक यू बस। Is this seen now? Is the feed they did it? Is so uh, this is the medial, that is the head end, that is the foot end, that's my side laterally. Uh, this is the facet joint. If you can, if you recollect the C arm image, the upper end of the disc is somewhere here. So that's, this is the muscle that you got to take out. You have to remember that this is a few millimeters. Uh, ma the magnification is, I'm sure, a couple of more X uh, than what is uh, normally standard. That's the facet joint I'm taking out. Can you see that? Yeah. That's the capsule going out. Thoda, iska coagulation come karai please. You are trying to take out the facet joint only. Yeah, the facet joint is where your entry should be. That is your guide to what you're going inside. इसको 35 करिए प्लीज कितना है? No part of the CTL लगाइए ना। No no we will just get the anatomy sorted. Let the cortex is a little on the higher side than my preference. So I prefer to have it a little low. कितना क्या बेटा इसको? 35 okay. 35 is good. नहीं नहीं इससे थोड़ा बढ़ाइए। 25 तक कीजिए। So pituitary please stabilize the cortex. So I am usually used to a Ferris Smith handle pituitary. Uh, this is, it gives a much better uh, grip. So that's the parse, what you can see here. And that's the facet joint. So chisel hai, na? So as, uh, if anybody has questions, please just shoot them. We will address them as we go to doing what we are doing. Checking out of this soft tissue, normally you use this pituitary. Yeah, pituitary is better. You can use kerosene depending on how it, how tough or how old or young the patient is. So that's the lamina. Can you see that? Yes, sir. So we'll take out a bit. We don't want to do any damage to the superior facet, which is already not okay. I think there is a bit of lysis. This lysis here, but so that's the medial part. And uh, while the lamina is still intact, you can do a bit of your coagulation and get your vision better. So 
You have to be careful that you're using it only on the bone and nowhere else. Kerosene, eh? Can you zoom out a little bit? We are not able to see the whole ring of that tube. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fine, fine, fine. We'll just. Uh, okay. Is it better now? Yeah. Better more. Yeah. Th thank you, sir. I think this is good enough. Okay. Let if me. If let you are uh, comfortable only then. Let me get it. Is it better? Yeah. It's okay. Yes. And we'll do one more thing. We'll just brighten it up a bit more. Uh, okay, this one. We are having a perfect view, sir. You can zoom in. So, Dr. Bissal, what is your planning in this case? What type of case you are going to use, what screen you are going to use? Of course, sir. So we'll need an, to do an over-the-top ipsilateral as well as a contralateral decompression. At the same time, uh, while you're doing it, of course, the decompressions of all the four roots should take place. Uh, the cage, I prefer a bullet-shaped cage, so that kind of uh, goes in much easier through an MIS tube. My friends sometimes use uh, uh, banana. Everybody has his personal choice. Uh, personal choice. Why? Why? Eh? Single Sorry, sir. Single bullet. Single bullet cage is good enough, sir. Uh, now, in younger patients, we have started using uh, a metallic cage again because peak. There is there are some worries of uh, causing uh, peak lysis. I think they are over uh, stated because it's not that there are lysis not seen in metallic cages also. Uh, but uh, in younger uh, patients with stronger bones, a metallic cage is a much better, robust hold. In her case, typically Indian women after 45 have much softer bones, so it is better to use a peak cage because the modulus of elasticity of peak, that's the joint, if you can appreciate my cautery is right there. Did you take it So the modulus of elasticity of peak is 60% of cancellous bone, whereas titanium is 80 times more than normal cancellous bone and in osteoporotic poor quality bone, peak is the perfect fit because that has got just enough give to keep the fixation a bit dynamic and allow for fusion to happen. So if you can see, that's the facet joint. Can you see that joint, sir? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that's the facet joint. We'll just delineate the inferior extent of the di uh, yeah. dissection. So that's the facet, that's the superior facet of L5. I'm just getting the base of that. That's the inferior facet of L4. You have not opened the joint, sir. This is the joint, sir. Can you see that? Yeah. No, sir. No, sir. Yeah. That's the joint. And you can see that it's, it's was fairly unstable. Yeah. So that's the lower extent of the inferior facet. So, Vishal, have you ever felt the need of doing a bilateral facetectomy? Uh, we have done bilateral facetectomies, especially in our early high-grade listasis. Now, what we do is we do an internal facetectomy by going over the top. So I'll show you what I mean by an internal facetectomy. Kerosene dena thing. Curate hai apne paas Without going from the other side, yes. In very stiff disc plastics, I still do a bilateral uh, two tubes we dock in, do a facetectomy from both sides, and then uh, the reduction is much better. That is also for only high grade because that is. Is it the synovium or the... It is the capsule joint comes synovium complex okay. 5, 5, 5, 5. Very good question. I must say the equipment is top notch. Vishal sir, Jitesh here. Yeah, hi. Hi sir. So, uh, so you will, uh, in some cases we have foramen also pretty tight on the contralateral side, huh. on the other side. Yeah. So you will dock the tube again in those cases? No, no, no. The op over the top ensures a better decompression on the contralateral side than what you'd, you would achieve on the same side. So you won't dock it again? And At all. My, yeah. I am more happy doing over the top and foraminotomy on the opposite side because it gives me, if I have say a right sided fist, uh, uh, cyst per side which I have to take out. I would go from the left side because it gives me a better version. So can you see this? I'm using a curette. Yeah. The reason to use a curette is this is sharp and this is blunt. 
So, even if this touches the dural sac, the chances of it causing harm are less, whereas the sharp edge of the curette releases the flavor from the undersurface. That is what I am doing. So, this is slight angle 3 O that we are using. This is made in India, very uh, good to use and cheap to acquire and it is uh, we have been using this particular one for nearly a decade. Which you please? So, that done, osteotome, uh, osteotome, ready. osteotome ready. Right. Os medium hammer, 150 yeah. to 200 yeah. grams. So, that is the parse and if you see the C arm image, this is where the disc upper end is. So, that is all you need to expose. So, there is a pesky bleeder here that comes, that is a 14 inch elevator. 40, 40, dekhi. So, uh, we, I, uh, you can use a nibbler to take this out or you can use a chisel or you can use a kerosene rounder. Everybody has his own choice. Please do not get carried away by what others use. Nay, children, beta. Are we going to preserve these bones and use as bone graft? Yes, that is the whole idea. The beauty of this is this, this is an hypertrophic situation. So, you should have enough graft. Yeah, it's on. Dr. Vishal, uh, have you ever used BMP for fusion? Uh, we used to use it. In my fellowship days, it was the fashion. Early 2000, everybody was using BMP. Then we had the catastrophic uh, failures that were published, so we stopped. I use it more in scoliosis nowadays. Never for and very rarely in redos where you have had a couple of surgeries and union has not happened. So, one thing that you have to uh, remember here is that is the uh, tip of the superior facet. Can you see that? My cautery tip is there. Yes, sir. So, that is where your dissection for this has to go. Otherwise, you will never be able to take this out. And uh, we need the cautery to work better, beta. It cannot go. Cautery to chow. Yes, sir. Aap kuch aur kariye, please. There is some bleed from here. Are we already into the disc? No, 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 not at all. We are, there, we are far away. We are just uh, sorting the pottery issue. It is working can, fine, can, but. Can you irrigate for the more clarity? Uh, okay. Irrigation of the Okay. So, can you see the uh, uh, images now? Yeah. Is uh, it is uh, not coming proper because of the fumes? But as we, uh, can somebody else put another suction here? No, we can see nicely, means we are, uh, the picture quality is good. Yeah, 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 your microscope is excellent. Leica is one of the better microscopes, like though I use Zeiss a lot. So, get me a chisel now, curate has been there. So, uh, we use this chisel, uh, this is angled at, uh, so it does not come in your way. So, there are two cuts you got to take. So, this is at the level of the parts. Somebody just hold it. Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, the hammer just touched something, and I need a copy piece. Baby, get now. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Don't take it any lower. How much is the baby, sir? 90 by 60. Yeah. They're an excellent team. They're keeping it ideal. Yeah. I'm very scared of giving hypotension. We had uh, when I just came back. There was a time when one of our anesthetists misunderstood our instructions and kept the systolic at 70, and we had a lot of trouble with post-op MIs and strokes happening. Luckily, nobody had permanent damage. But since then, we try not to go below 90. So, that is like, uh, does anybody eat betel nuts? My father used to eat a lot of pan and I used to crack the betel nuts for him. So, this is like that. I have a betel nut in my house. Ah, <laughs> all right. 
So that is the this thing feature tree to me. So this gives you good graft and at the same time it saves your hands from the fatigue of using a kerosene or a less skill. Bone graft rakhe please. And uh, that is the lower part of the facet cautery. Cautery chala hai please. Aap ye wire change kar sakte hai. Kar dije please. So that is another part of the hypertrophic capsule which we will need to take out and just coagulating it before. Chalo, kerosene number 5. So it is better to coagulate and then take it out as Neil Anand used to say because otherwise it becomes a uh, you sometimes land in a pickle, especially at this edge. If you try to take this muscle with a kerosene before burning it, what happens is it retracts inside and the bleeder can be very, very pesky. So now that is the lamina of the lower vertebra, superior end. That is the lower end of our dissection that we are going to do. And this we have already delineated. So I am going to change the orientation of my microscope a bit. Okay. Can you all see what I am doing? Yes, sir. Let's scale. Let's scale. Yeah. So this one, either you use a chisel or another handy one is to use this. Boom. Please take the boom. No, this is not going to go in. We need a size smaller if we have it. Hey, my hand is, get me up. Gloves, please. Check kar ke lena, kaam kar raha hai kya? Give me a chisel. Give me the chisel again. Hammer. Suck. So that's the set picture tree, big one. Be careful, you don't touch what is not sterile. Sir, any precautions you take while hammering uh, to protect the do it gently, nerve root? Do it gently. The nerve root, I will just show the anatomy. So that is uh, your one root is somewhere here going down. The other root is below this. So this is usually safe. You should worry about this. Your hammer should not go down. That is why here I could not get a good uh, bite. So I just cracked it a bit. So to thin it off. Now this is the cambium strangle if you can see. We will go there first. We need to now. Decompress. I am going to reorient myself. So the microscope aage aayega, so I can take it. Bas, bas, bas. Okay, good. That's good. Doctor Vishal, do you think uh, bar would have made uh, things easier? It does make it easier. The issue is it doesn't give you any bone graft. Yeah, but intermittently we can use it. I don't use. I mean, uh, then what happens is it increases the cost of surgery because you have to use allograft. And uh, the best graft is patient's autograft. So I would prefer, okay, so that's there. Cure it to me. Okay. So where will be the exiting root and uh, traversing root, sir? So I'm just coming to that. So can you see this part of the lamina? I'm going to take that out. Yeah. I would have preferred to take this part a little bit more because. This is thin sliver of muscle that I am going to take out to increase the kerosene to me. This suction is closed, son. Suction, see, it's closed. Yes, yes. that the substance keeps working. So that now is a 
front part of the lamina that we haven't managed to take out. Kerala, five bada hai, four ya three dije. Four hai, bone piece. So that now will uh, get our anatomy more into picture. Of course, this is showing a fabulous image here. I'm not sure how much clear it is there at your end. Yeah, it's quite clear. So that's where the ligamentum flavum's proximal most attachment will be. If there are any things that you cannot see or any confusion, please let me know. I will be very happy to get that sorted. Uh, cure it, please. Things are good, Dr. Vishal. Yeah, ballpoint to me. If you find comfortable, sir, on X-ray, just demonstrate uh, from which section you are taking out. Uh, so, so some, some people came late, so orientation may not be as an educator. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to orient everybody again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the head end. That is the foot end, that is medial, that's lateral. They used to, the L4-5 facet joint was here. We took out the inferior L4 and we have taken out a part of the L5 superior transverse process. What you see here is the distance between the two pedicles. The spinous process is somewhere here. We have taken out the lateral half of the lamina. What you see here is the ligamentum flavum. It's still attached to the lamina here. We need to take that out. Here, I'm just doing some of my dissection so that I get a clear, this is a transforaminal surgery. TLIF is a transforaminal fusion. You will do a TLIF from here. Uh, OP lif is from here. So where you would put a nerve root retractor and go and keep your facets safe. So we, uh, for a TLIF, I need this much to be exposed. The advantage of this is that you get a very good quality bone graft with that. And uh, anatomy, uh, if they can pan on the x-ray, I'll be able to show on the x-ray later. So. I'm now taking out the medial superior aspect here of the facet joint. Okay, so there goes. So now, cure it again. So it needs to be dissected uh, attachments, otherwise dural tears are very frequent, especially in demo surgery. So that's the lamina, superior lamina of five. I'm detaching the flavor from there. That is, it is attached here to the five pedicle medial area, facet joint there. And this is the cambium strangle. This is the ligamentum flavum superior attachment, which we will be taking out. Give me the ballpoint, please. So I prefer to use a blunt probe uh, ballpoint here to go in, hook it up, and get it down. Sorry, you were asking a question. I interrupted. So ligamentum flavum uh, lateral margin and the dural lateral margin. Yes, we will be seeing it in some time. Okay. So that what you are seeing is the ligamentum flavum. And let me get the focus sorted. Uh, am I still in the, uh, can you see the whole uh, circle there? Yeah, we can see but the bottom circle is coming in the big block. Itself. Okay, so that is not the part we wish to see. I will yeah. get there again. Okay. Can, this is where, where we need to go. That is the ligamentum flavum attachment superior, keratin, number three. So when you just need to do an unilateral decompression, this much exposure is okay. Bone graft. At this point, what what precautions do you take to prevent a dural, dural tear? <laughs> so there is nothing that can be assuring you 100%. What you need to do is to ensure that you've used and uh, cause an adequate release. You're very wary of the adhesions. There is a lot of adhesions, especially in chronic disease. And you had a small ligaments connecting the flavum that stabilize the dural sac at this area. So those need to be, we'll be coming to that, number four. We'll be coming to that area and let's pray we don't encounter that. So that's the superior end, bone please. And do you, uh, how, how much pressure do you take down? All of it? Sorry, what do I take down? Facet, facets. Oh, the entire facet needs to come down. Otherwise, you will never get access to the foramen properly. So the facet joint is gone. It's already been taken down. And how much of the lamina do you wish to take? So this is good enough for what, I, what I'm planning to do right now. When we go over the top, we'll take out more. Okay, so over the top is we'll have to go there. 
and do it ballpoint. Let us see. Yes. Uh, once he saw the synovium that appears quite edematous. Mm -hmm. So was it inflamed synovium? It is. It is, sir. That's why it is so fluid filled and. And that's, that's see, can you see the two layers yes, of yes. ligament of flame? That's yeah, the inner yeah. layer, yeah. and that's the outer one. Yeah. Now we need to get over this here, and we should be in business. So let's see. Or nikalna pade hai rata. You read DJ, Mujhe? I'm going to move. I'm going to move to Nikita. You need to remove the epidural fat also beneath this. I try to pref uh, preserve it. Epidural fat is like the ad limits, uh, addition. About this, uh, yeah, yeah. so we will, we will. So most of it is usually atrophied and dry by this time. So that, can you see that small peaking dura there? So that's the final attachment. So then you take, turn your curate and bring it like that. Get me a ballpoint, please. Dr. Vishal, are you using any special instruments in this case? No, no, these are fairly common stuff that is available everywhere. So can you see the dura there now, dural sac here? Sir, you have to just centralize uh, the Nahin camera once more. Okay, okay, okay. It's fairly dark also. Let me brighten it up. Yeah, that's better. So let me get the light a little up. Oh, is it brighter now? What I figured about the sound one. Yeah, okay, much better. Wall point. See the wall point handy. Yeah. So can you see this here now? So that's the interval we got to do. There you can see our epidural vessels, and is keep the bipolar at between around ten, and give me a number three black reverse. Yes. Black reverse. Keep four handy. Four handy. Sir. Sir. Huh? We want to know that. You every time you take the facet down with the osteotome or if there is a lot of stenosis in... Uh, I prefer the osteotome when there is severe stenosis. When it is not, we are okay not using it. The reason being every time you put a kerosene inside in a stenose canal, you are essentially making it more stenosis. The chances of landing with a deficit is higher. And if you are using a proper oh. control pituitary over your hand, then the chance of you causing the oh. chisel to plunge down is less. So far, the few times we've had the chisel causing a defect, ballpoint, is when there was an osteopetrosis case where we had disproportionate uh, force to be used, and in one case where I think I was negligent. So can you see that now? Yes. Kerison number one, and number four, two, whatever you have. So now the anatomy should be a little better. Since it's very stenosed and the foraminal component is also bad, the root has actually moved more medial. So just uh, wash it once with the clear saline, yeah, it's almost okay, okay. quite red to us. Okay, I'm going to, okay, the white balance. Hey, suction that works, man. Suction that works, see? Yeah, can you see now? Yes, sir. So that's, oh, give me a dura. That is the, so that's the root. Uh, traversing root. Yes, sir. Yes. There is the exiting is going to be here. This is the disc space. Okay, you can see the disc is the, the disc is fairly degenerate here. Okay. I will have to take this out to delineate the cambium strangle. You'll find the exiting route going somewhere here where I'm tracing now. Would so you like to see the exiting route or just uh, keep it obscured? Dr. Vishal, can you hear?
Dr. Vishal, can you hear us? Hello. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, we lost the mic for a bit. Yeah. So, so this is the route here. The doors, uh, the exiting is somewhere there. What you can see is the disc space is fairly damaged. You should have a T-shaped epidural vessel here. As a standard anatomy, we were taught the uh, uh, trans uh, foraminal. There will be a vessel that will go like that and there will be a branch that comes like that. Of course, you can never be sure that it is going to be like that, so it is better to get that out of business, so that otherwise it keeps a pesky bleed coming. Bipolar, thank you. I try to keep it cool here in case you go near the dorsal root ganglion. It should not cause that to be having a thermal injury. I need a 15 hour blade now. ग्यारह चलेगा चलिए वो दे दीजिए बड़ा हैंडल होगा तो देखिए मेरा निकालिए नहीं था सो इट इज बेटर टू हैव अ लिटिल लॉन्गेस्ट हैंडल यू शुड कट अवे फ्रॉम मोर इम्पोर्टेंट स्ट्रक्चर सो दिस इज वेर आई एम ट्राइंग टू गेट द डिस्क आउट सो माय माय बिगेस्ट मेंटर डॉक्टर उमेश वेंसरकर द हेड ऑफ न्यूरो सर्जरी एट हरकिशन दास एंड नायर हॉस्पिटल यूज टू कॉल दिस कटिंग द केक you are literally cutting the cake here. I don't use an 11 number. It's a very precise knife though, pituitary. So that's the cake coming out. So what number blade did you use? Right now I use an 11 number because that was on the long handle, but I prefer to use a uh, number 15 if you ask me what's my choice. Can I get the shavers please? So once this is done, uh, this is a number 8 shaver. So this is... Uh, sharp on both the sides, we'll just, since this lady we know has a big disc, this should be good. Next size up. Okay. So you go straight. It should not hit the bony plates. If you're hitting the bony plates, you're probably using a too big a size. Apna ye aaya kya Shaver. Boxing Can we reposition the bit? I'm sorry? We can't see the screen properly. Can we reposition the operating side is literally at the point. I'm just going to, yeah, is that better? No, no, sir. Okay, okay, may I zoom out? Please zoom in. Is it better? Yes. Okay, now I'll just zoom in a bit. Yes. My apologies, I'm for not, now is it better? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so this is what I'm hitting in, this is a number eight shaver. So this should go in easy, you don't need actually to take in a retractor for this, which you tree. So I'll just orient you again to the anatomy for those who have come new. So this is the cambium strangle, a little bit of. So that's the disc. Can you locate the dura for us? That's, that's the dura. Yeah, this one. Can you see that? I'm give me the ballpoint, please, or the dura. Thank you. So can you see this root here? So that's yes. the dural sac. That's more like the epidural vein along with that. I'm not going to go there. I'll finish this first and then go there. So that opens up and gives me more place. If I plan to retract, then I have to do an over the top before. Because if I don't do that, it's going to compress the neural structure. So next, uh, Shaver. 10? 10 then, sorry. You can? 12. 11. 11. So that's the number 12 Shaver. I'm using more like a box cut now. Uh, yeah, so we should be using a 14 to 16 size cage if they have it. Which you trade? Please give my curate. Curate, radio to better. Ring curate. Orange hai. Let's go, Pakado. Sister. Ring curate. So the crux of doing a T lift. Do you have the ring, better? Okay. 
whenever you do a tea leaf, I see a lot of surgeons stop after using the shaver. Using the shaver is not going to give you a fusion. You need to make the end plates ready. And to get the end plates ready, I'm just waiting for my curate to come in. Yeah, thank you. So this is a ring curate. Uh, this used to be used in Gynac as a uterine curate. We just use a bigger version. You have to go gently take away. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm taking the bony end plate away. So this is what is will give you a good fusion. That is taking out all the cartilaginous end plate there on both the sides. So I'm just doing the superior end. Once I'm finished with the superior end, clean this up, whatever you can. Which you treat to me? Do you also use a ring curate? Uh, so this is actually a ring curate. Uh, the ones that they give the small one. I prefer this because this is much, much better in doing the job. Can you see what uh, this, this is a little large-ish, goes in better, distributes the weight better. Otherwise, a smaller curate will dig into the bone. See, this is what you need to take out. And then you go in medially and take that out. So this is what is really gets all the mal out. So uh, again, you need to do repeated clearance, a large pituitary. Mm -hmm. Are you going to take out the cartilage of the plate? Uh, the cartilage needs to come out, sir. We don't take out the bony end plate because if you touch the bony end plate, then the, uh, found, the foundation of your cage is gone. It will sink. So a lot of minimal access surgery and, of course, even open depends on indirect decompression also. So if you restore the height, what you're essentially doing, the front of the spine is a load-bearing uh, area. So you need to restore the height there and let the cage do the load bearing. The behind is a top neutralization. Can you give me the curate again? Can that we also ensure that we have taken enough test out by ASEA? So, uh, no. So to quote Dr. Gabriel Lu, who was my friend in Singapore when I was training, Gabriel was the hmm. registrar there. Yeah, how much ever you take out, there's still some more left. The best way to ensure a near total is to go anterior. I am not an anterior surgeon. I don't, though I trained with Ma, Bob Mane, I am not that comfortable doing anterior surgery in India for all the reasons, opposite sides. But you don't need to uh, use the dissector at the vertebral distractor at this level. No, no, not, not yet. Not, yet. not needed. Not yet, sir. So, opposite side. There is a enough is, is space to this. Dick, uh, this remove this cartilage and spurs on the Yeah, so there is enough space. See, I, you, I can take this is a fairly big size uh, instrument. It goes in. This you go to the opposite side, and you then scrub away all the cartilage from there. So this is going to keep your this space very healthy and kind of ready to take in. Osteo integration that's required. Next one. So most important is to see that the eyes are okay. The stomach doesn't have any pressure. So that kind of uh, does half the job. If you have pressure in the stomach and there is, it will show a resistance to ventilation. And that's when you're going to have the continuous ooze from the epidurals that's going to be very, very pesky and not let you function well. So there it goes. Give me the up angle. In high grades of listhesis, mm -hmm. uh, how difficult it is to prepare, how much more difficult it is to prepare a bed so it than is a grade 1 listhesis? The challenge is getting your instruments in because the disk space is practically not there and the step. But I would recommend once you start doing it, once you're done, 50, 60 of these, you are ready to do at least 2 plus. Suck, please. So they should be seeing what I am doing. So what I am doing is I am going to the base of the disc, then hitting the bone and pulling out whatever I can. A lot of surgeons just do this. Medium size box cut. So pitchu tree now to me. Upward, next upward. Sir, as you suggested, uh, one of the major steps in this is your docking. Yeah. So, for the benefit of people who are joining, can you give some basic tips for a successful docking? 
So docking for a decompression should be where the lamina meets the facet and for a fusion should be on the facet so that you can take out the facet completely. Then you have to turn your tube a little bit upward and backward. Uh, pituitary. Nahi hai? Backward hai, beta. Up and down. Do you think pilot gives a better surface area for fusion than T lift? I don't, I'm not a fan of P-lift, though I trained on P-lifts. I think uh, T-lift is a better area because you don't go, you don't have to retract in majority of cases anything at all. As you can see, I have not even seen the dural sac completely here. I'm just preparing the end plate backwards. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the bed of the graph for fusions. No, no, you are, you are already gone to the opposite side. When you see the post op X-ray or for the o matter o arm spin backwards, the uh, P-lift what you do, uh, essentially you have to retract a lot. So uh, yeah, you, the right. preparation becomes a little less as compared to, uh, having said it, you should do what is good in your hands. Like there are a lot of people I see who do a lot much better job in P-lifts than what I can do. So it's good for them. I prefer this. There is no one solution that fixes, fits all. Everybody should do what is good in their hands. I don't do P-lift because it is a uh, lot of re uh, retraction takes place. So this is one corner that you should address. If you can see we are now, we can see the anterior annulus there. This corner when you take out, it allows area for the bone graph to escape when you are punching your cage in. That's the anterior annulus, can you all see? No, it's a computer. Sorry, let me just focus it there. Okay. Can you see that? Can you see this? The white, that is the anterior annulus and capsule. So that's the bone uh, end plate there. I'll just go, uh, uh, see, put your suction in. I'm going to move this. So this is the, uh, okay. okay, can, is it seen on the screen? Somebody had, will have to run. So that is the superior end plate here. That's the anterior area, hold this. And, uh, Give me a backward. Not at all, sir. That's, that is what will help us. If you take that out, you will be saying hello to the anterior vessels, and that's a disaster. Dead end. That would be end of story for all of this. So that's the anterior most part. A lot of people leave a cuff intact there, including me. For the purpose of demo, I'm just going down to show that this is how much you should do. And this is a beautiful view that the microscope affords you. Okay, now I'm going to take a box cut. A lot of people don't take it. You should take it because if you don't take a proper box cut, medium, you're never going to get in a large size caged in. So this is the instrument. Box cut of size of the cage. Yeah, so a size under the, or uh, less than the cage. So this is a medium size. We can't see, sir. Please focus on that. Okay. So now, now it's clear. Yeah, so this is what I do. This box cut opens. See, a cage is like two inverted saucers kept on each other. So unless you have a proper size box cut, you are never going to be able to put in pituitary. Straight. Cage panel, bone panel. So with the box cut, your view also improves a bit. So you do a last minute toileting. Give me a curate, please. Ring curate. That, Abna, then a curate. So now your box cut situation will be the same direction where you are going to put the cage. Yes, yes, a very much same direction. So now that I can see some amount of uh, this space there, there, so I need to clean that out. Uh, you have to be more careful. That's why I use a wider, uh, wide ring curate than a small ring curate. Having said it, no instrument can guarantee you uh, this that he, uh, there will be no breach. But the wider the instrument, more wide the load distribution. So the chances of digging into the bony end plate are less. Okay, bone graft, funnel. So. So uh, shaver, yes, we do use initial part. 
but then later you just stop. So that's the funnel. I'm going to put the bone grafting. Can I see? Itna hi hai. Itna dikha? Kam padega. Like to see sir. Filling of the cage. So this is what we have. Kolo. Ye ye do. Pakda. We'll get more. Dalo. So this is the cage. Can you see the cage yeah, getting sir. in? Yeah. So this is directly not, inside. Not focused. So okay, this would be a challenge to do. Let's see. Okay. Don't move that. I'm trying to show them. So can you see the base blood there? Uh, yes. Yeah. That is deep inside the disc space. So put in the graph, please. Now. All in. Uh, all, all in. Hey, don't open it. Okay. So okay, this is going in. And I have touched the this thing. Okay, dollar. Table height come on. Okay, thank you. Discard this instrument. Doctor Vishal, we did not see the cage. We have not yet put it. We'll just show it to you. So you are tamping the graph, and then yeah. you will put the cage, yeah. and then you will again put the graph. No, the no need, no need. That should be good enough. I'm discarding because I have touched this. Someone wear a glove. Uh, Vishal sir, ah. uh, so once you will be uh, inserting the cage, you will be shifting for the case presentation. Okay. So you have another 10-15 minutes. Sure. sure. Okay, just give me one minute. Sorry, I have touched the microscope, so I need to change my gloves. Okay, done there. Now let's get a time, please. So this generally happens in your own uh, setup also or this is because of a new microscope you are so using? So we use a Zeiss complete cover. Yeah. So the entire microscope gets covered. Okay. Here you have covered only the, uh, how to say, the hand grips. Yeah. So that leaves the uh, upper part unsterile. So Sir. we have a cover that covers that also. So usually it doesn't happen. Yes. Yeah, can, can you hear me? Yes. So that's the graft going in. It's a fair amount of graft that has gone in. After this, I would do a trial. Give me a 12. 14, eh? Trial. So we'll do a 14 travel. 14 here? 14 digestion. Yeah, 14, right? Yes, sir. So that's. What cage is this, sir? This is a capstone cage. So I'm doing a trial first. So number that's 14. number 14. So see, there, this is a nice, if you can appreciate. I did a box cut with a medium, that's a size 12. And uh, we did a shaver also with a size 12, with a just going there. So this looks quite good and robust here. So we're going to use that as a cage uh, for insertion. Uh, anything less than 14 is actually an undersized cage. Because if you don't jack it up properly, show the cage 14, please. So will you see on the CM how much distraction happened? Yeah, yeah, we will be showing. We will be showing. So we, I will show that in the OAM images. So there are another two aspects that are still remaining. One is over the top decompression which I would have done before, but since this is not a big deformity and I don't have to retract, I will do that as the next one. Is the cage 1422 or 1422? So we are using a 1422. Can the, they show it on the camera that we, what size we are using? So usually 14 to 16 is what Indian patients take in if you do the box cut properly. If you don't do a box cut, then people put 8, 9, and 10. So we have to understand the biomechanics of a fusion. The front is the weight bearing part and the back is the torque limiting part. So if you don't have an adequate size cage in the front, your screws become the weight bearing uh, uh, construct and that is when they fail. So the chances of the construct failing are less if you have a large proper size cage inside. So that, that does the weight bearing part and the screws are just doing a top neutralization. Okay, am I coming through? Sorry, yes sir, but uh, hello. Yeah, Can we see the sir? placement of the cage? Yes, yes. I have not yet. I have not placed it yet. This was just a trial. 
now the, the trial is to check that we uh, indeed can get it in now that we know we can get it in because peak is softer than a trial sir i have a just question about sizing of the cage hmm. because it's open till if you are mostly putting 10 11 12 but uh, here you are saying that you routinely put 14 and most of the times 14 and 16 yeah so uh, is that over distracting or putting lot of the pressure on end yeah. plates or uh, except for one or two cases we have never ended up over distracting because the average this size is 12 plus in any patient so when you're putting a smaller cage in an open you rely on laminectomy as a decompressing tool in an mis cage you don't do a laminectomy you need to restore the anatomy and anytime you put a smaller cage, because the level is going to remain kyphotic and not get restored to its original height, the chances of adjacent level disease will be higher because the stress on that will be a kyphotic stress. The more you put a proper size cage, the more you will restore lordosis and the more you restore the lordosis, the chances of adjacent segment disease get down. So, there is a disease of undersizing of the cages because the surgeons are scared. I mean, if you are scared, then spine surgery is not the branch to be in. We have to put a proper size cage. And that's what, if you do a, a, a anthropometric study of uh, heights of disc, uh, disc heights, it is always going to be 12 plus in Indians. Even a four foot something lady would take a 12 size minimum. So, I'll say most of us are undersizing, then that is the point taken. So, uh, so the even I was, I would be very honest, I used to put eight and nine and 10 when I started practice. But as with time as you learn, you only learn by making mistakes and learning from what you have done before. If you analyze your results over a period of time, I was fortunate enough to see my follow-ups and everybody with a smaller cage ended up with a problem. That's the reason I have stopped doing a lot of olives because the idea of olive was to put a large 16 size cage which we anyway put it from behind. So the other is uh, how much is the lordosis uh, cage is there? Like, so this like is five an anatomical cage, ideally 5S1 and 4-5 which are responsible for more than 60% of the lordosis of the lumbar spine should have cages which are like at least 12 to 15 degrees uh, lordosis which are not available in the country. The expandable cages I am not a big fan of because expandable cage, the moment you put a joint in a weight bearing structure that becomes its weakest link and it does not do the job well but in cases where we have to do we use a metronic expandable cage which goes up to I think 12 degrees is their height that they open up. There is a 6 degree and an 8 degree opening up in their cages. So, uh, you alpha S1 you have to put a lordotic cage. If it is not available, you put an anatomical cage but while you are giving your position, you give a position in extension. So that the position itself gives you some lordosis while you are operating. Yeah. Hi Vishal. Yeah. Hi. Do you want to say that as you become more senior, you put larger size cage? No, not at all. I am here. I just want to ask uh, whether you uh, distract, compress or you no, use you a snug fit cage? Uh, use a snug fit cage. A proper size. You can see this is a 14 by 22 that we are putting in and uh, there it is going in. This We had done a trial. Did you, were you there? I saw, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, so there it is going in. So any thoughts on peak versus titanium? This is a peak cage, I think. Yeah. So I we had this discussion before. I think we are. Yeah, there it goes. So there will be a bleed some point here. So I think we have gone beyond. This is a time to open up, check that it is adequate. You do not want to bang it too much in the front because in degenerate annulus in the front might sometimes just bust. Can I get a ballpoint? Yeah. So, you have to check two things with this that there is adequate, it is not there and here we need to bang it a little bit inside. So, I can still take my ballpoint there, it is just flush here, give me the holder, yeah. So, I am going to re-engage the holder here and tighten it again because peak, if you use a cage pusher which does not go into the threads at this point, the cage's threads will get damaged and God permit you want to do an extraction, you can never do that. So, here? You always prefer a peak cage? Uh, depends. Ideally, yes, peak because majority of my patients are beyond 45, 50 with poor quality bones and peak modulus of elasticity which is 60 percent of the normal cancellous bone of a young adult is ideal modulus of, yeah, I can just feel the cage entry here yes. and here. And so in your practice, uh, you have seen subsidence of peak? Yes, both, both. 
subsidence of peak and titanium will happen. The only advantage of peak is you can't make it out on X-ray that it has subsided. Yes. Right, please. So can we move to the opposite side? Table goes taraf ghumaiye. So once that is done, now we want to do the decompression of the dural structures here. Table tilt kije. So that's the T lift part which has got over, but the main part that is the decompression still remains. Ek minute ruke bas. Kitna kya? Do you use neuro monitor in this? No, in this? never. We don't eat even in high grade recesses. Neuro monitoring isme to ap nerve dekh rahe ho. It becomes an overkill you can use. Okay. But it becomes an overkill. So that's the structure there now. I have wanted this tube to that side. Okay, loose kijiye isse. So can a tight kijiye. Okay, now give me a suction with ball tips. So these are the suctions I use. They are a little blunt at the tip there, a little bigger size. That's your cage. So that's the ligament of flavum here. Cure it to me, beta. So screen pe centering nahi hai? Okay, just give me one minute. I think I'm not centered here. Thoda ha. Is it centered now? Okay, so a little bigger one, suction bigger one. Please watch it so that we get that. I have not focused it, I have not focused it. So, okay. So, a suction bandha ke haan pakada usko. Give me a cue red. So, this is the flavor. Can you see this? We removed a part of that. There is a root and it is the vessels there. We got to take this out. But we have to go over the top, so we will also dissect a bit here. Are we working? working. Yeah. So we take this thing down. So we are heading for a over the top decompression of the opposite side. Yes. The spinous process is untouched. No, we have not yet. I'll, the the spinous process is somewhere here. Yeah. I am just taking the lamina and the base of the spinous process into uh, Yes, sir. After distracting, hmm. uh, getting the neurology corrected. Hmm. So, does this patient require decompression of the. Uh, sir, she has severe opposite side uh, okay. facet hypertrophy. Okay. So, it is better to check uh, to that we have done it than to regret it later. KR, we did not do it and the patient still has some amount left. Okay. Medial lateral retractor leg, carta, yeah, pasta. Sakli. Vishal, sir? Yeah. Sir, do you want us to uh, switch to the case presentation? You or can, you can, you can watch this uh, on side of EIP. Uh, I'll take five minutes to finish this, and if anybody has questions, they can always ask. So, if you are good, just good. They, this is not something new that is happening. It will be running. So, if there are any questions or if there's something I feel is important, I'll let you know. I'm just doing the exposure. You can run your cases yes, by there. Let the picture up. And you will be on the auto TV, sir. You complete your case yeah, yeah. as usual. So, in the meanwhile, as sir is going to do an over the top decompression, we can have it. To quick case presentation. So, to with the panelists, I request Dr. Chabra sir, Dr. S. K. Saraf sir, and Dr. S. K. Singh sir to come on the dais. And I request the first presenter, Dr. Harpreet Singh sir, to, to come on the dais and present its case. And I request all the audience, do not hesitate, please question them so that we all can learn and they can learn too.
Hi sir, good morning. I thank Dr. Aski Singh and Dr. Saroop for inviting me here and having a very good academic program going. So I will not take much time. So, so we have a case here. She is a 65 year old female. She has a history of fall at home three months back but then she was able to walk with little pain and was diagnosed as a compressive fracture D12 and was treated conservatively but slowly and slowly her back pain increased for yeah. last six yeah. weeks and uh, instead of getting corrected it keeps on in back pain is keeps on increasing for last six weeks and uh, her pain gets relieved on lying down and increases on sitting and standing so she is not able to walk without support for last one month she has a history of knee buckling while standing and walking and on examination motor power was four by five she has a known Okay, so this is the MRI picture. You can see that uh, there's a D12 collapse and it is hitting on the uh, spinal cord here. And also if you can see, also if you can see there's a lot of compression in the axial views and it's a, now it's a, it's a three months old fracture and now it is going into a pseudoarthrosis. So if you, we got her CT done and if you see her CT showed almost a, a hollow vertebral body here and if you see a sagittal uh, coronal view here also you can see a hollow vertebral body. Actually what is happening is because of the instability the yeah. vertebral body is gone into osteonecrosis called as Kummel's disease where the vertebral body is, has become osteonecrosis and has lost yes, a potential sir. for healing. Now whatever bed rest you give her that will not help her because she is already three months into it and she has all the symptoms of mechanical back pain and uh, developing uh, neuro deficit because of the repeated instability and buckling of the uh, vertebral body which is hitting on the spinal cord again and again. So now this patient requires a stabilization but that, that's what it is. She is a quite osteoporotic lady and there is a large defect here. So how are we going to fill it? What are the options? Are we going to do only vertebroplasty? No, sir. I don't. I don't have the X-rays here. We did not did any flexion extension X-rays, sir, because we could clearly see the cleft on the CT, and also MRI shows already the fluid signal changes on MRI, which gives you that it's a pseudoarthrosis. You have to uh, proceed, and also the history that lying down is. Uh, giving us his pain, our pain relief and getting up is, so it's a mechanical problem. So here if you see, this is there. So what are the options I am discussing? One is you can do a vertebroplasty, but because she is having already neurological symptoms, then vertebroplasty alone will not be indicated. The other option is to fix and do a vertebroplasty. So how many levels up and down we are going to fix? I will show you what I did here. and. It, it opened up beautifully on the prone position and I put the screws up and down because it opened up very well. So I was confident that I will be able to construct the anterior column very well. So I did not go two levels up or two levels down. I stopped at one level up and down and then I put a cement inside with bilateral transpedicular needles and filled the defect completely and it filled very beautifully. You can see to the good shape. And then one thing I did, see that if there is no leaking, to put the saline in one needle and it comes out of the other needle very freely. You can do it from both the sides so that you know that both the needles are in the same cavity and then there is no leakage. So once you will put the cement, so it will stay inside the vertebral body. And that is what I did. I put, I put screws in that 
that is the immediate post op x ray and this is one year follow up x ray it is holding very well patient got relieved of her symptoms and started walking after uh, uh three weeks of physiotherapy and she still uh, fine she it is now almost four years post op so so take home message from my side is on three or four whenever you treat a osteoporotic compression fracture the you should always see that pain should gradually decrease if your patient is complaining that pain is actually gradually increasing and she is developing right. symptoms of uh, uh, neuro deficit then you have to consider that your vertebral body has gone into a pseudo arthrosis or kumar's disease and you should consider stabilizing it rather than continuing bed rest for it so there are other options like vertebroplasty and fixations and also now people are putting cancellous bone graft also who are not in love with cement so these are the various options thanks a lot in this case sir, there was decompression was done in this case because the patient had a neuro deficit so i wanted to decompress it also laminectomy was done just a midline laminectomy was done without sacrificing any facet also only what you plus sir it is that if the patient who has already developed neuro deficit or coming with the symptoms of having a, a, a having a problem in walking so it is better to put a, a screws and do a vertebral plasty even though it has opened up very nicely sometimes it collapses again and then the patient will land up in uh, uh, some kyphosis so it's better to stabilize that's what i thought sir Clinical presentation of this patient is not uncommon, but many times we are missing it. It's a very important Five. message to everyone. It Five. looks like a benign compression fracture post osteoporotic, but what he said, the patient is not improving, and then somehow deteriorates in between. Then I think it's a red flag sign. Yes, sir. And I think we we must recognize and the surgery which you done is the most appropriate surgery, and that is exactly anyone could have done. But I think the I again say the recognizing the problem and tackling it the way you did it. I think that's the best. Yes, sir. That was the message actually that you have to recognize Kumal's disease. the patient is pain free in the initial period of fracture and then slowly the pain appears and then it keeps on increasing and patient becomes bedridden many of the time these patients come with electrolyte abnormalities and other issues because of the uh, because they have become bedridden at home and most of the time these are elderly ladies and elderly gentlemen thank you sir thank you for a very well done uh, thank you sir case uh, i you said there was your respect of sir yes sir Yes, sir. So there would be a myelopathy. So, so it's a, yeah, yeah. it was a D12 fracture. So, so there was no, uh, not much uh, exaggerated uh, reflexes were not there. But patient had a buckling. She was not able to stand without support, and uh, gait instability was there. So, uh, gait instability means uh, also L3 would have been lower, etc. So we take it that uh, there were signs of neurological deficit. So. Uh, to me, that is the most important part of it, right? Yes, sir. If there is a neurological deficit associated with a vertebral compression fracture, as you have very rightly gone in for a fixation, yes, sir. Right, and yes, not sir. just uh, vertebral plasty. So that is a very important take-home message. In such cases, if you do only vertebral plasty, it will progress. The neurological deficit. Yes, will progress. that's what. So that is one thing I wanted to point out. Um, You would have obviously have got the feel of the screws yes, sir. as you would have put it, but normally we would always do a DEXA scan before and be ready with it. Uh, suppose the DEXA scan is minus four or minus five, you still would go on the feel of how strong the fixation is. But uh, very often we need to augment the pedicle screws also with, with the cemented and screws. And we may need to add more levels Most of fixation also. Sir? depending on yes, what sir. the feel yes, is sir. but uh, if the patient has had a fragility fracture diabetic 65 years started on teriparatide right? so very often we need to use more screws yes sir to augment yes, so sir. we would always prepare number 3 yes sir uh,
what uh, Dr. Saab wanted to talk, to talk about the dynamic display. We often would go in for a dynamic MRI for no other reason but to also convince the patient. So <laughs> dynamic MRI, you will be able to see the buckling like of the uh, elbow flexion, uh, flexion at the spine at that point. And that also gives us an idea on how unstable the spine is. Right? So that is something that we would also do in our practice. Uh, the other thing is, um, see, it was, uh, as you could see on the CT scan, the almost the entire vertebra was falling. Yes, sir. Right? And as you place the patient, it opens up. It opens up. And uh, the cement spans from one end plate to the, the other. other end plate. Yes, sir. So sometimes there is a danger that because of the lack of cancerous bone on either side of the cement, it can also become like a uh, uh, cement ball. Yes, sir. And fusion may not take place. Yes, sir. So, but also with the cage and bone graft. That's uh, So as to ensure that uh, yes. food arthrosis does not take place. And another technique which we routinely use, you very well brought out is that there was no detail. But another technique that we would routinely use is do, of course, that adds cost to it. Right? Uh, if you do an eggshell kyphoplasty. So there you ensure that even if there is a posterior thing, even if the saline leaks posteriorly, you can prevent any leaks posteriorly. So what you only do is, um, after you inflate the balloon, right, you put in a small quantity of cement and it. Put in the balloon in it, inflate again, right, and you create a shell of cement. And then you put in the cement. So that ensures that uh, no leakage possibly takes place, especially in a case where there is a neurological deficit, where you expect that there is a breach in the posterior cortex. Let me talk about these are yeah. just the uh, organ. Yes, yes, sir. You, it's okay, you want to yes, the case is very yes, yes, sir. These are only just so Thanks, thanks for highlighting, sir. Uh, this was done four years back. Now, I myself is shifting more towards putting bone grafts so that it augments the healing and then also starting them on teriparatide. Little bit uh, shifting away from uh, cement, sir. No, but uh, point where taken, see, if you have to go in for a cage and a, a graft, it adds to, to the, the it's yes. more invasive, more chances of complication. So if there is enough cancerous bone around, we would still do the same. Yes, sir. So as you were. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone, for patience hearing. Thanks a lot. Thank you, so I'm here just finishing. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. So the over the top is nearly finishing. So that's the, if you can uh, give the suction, please. Yeah, so there, this is the paragon at the top. And we have, that's the lateral edge. Dibro, please. OK, this will do. So that's the lateral edge of the, can you see this? And I need to take this out to complete it. Okay, sorry. I think that's all I wanted to show. Sorry, sir? Yeah, that's the dural sac. And uh, I partially decompressed. The advantage was because we put in a cage there, it has opened up. So all the planes have opened up. So I am, it is a little, uh, how to say, less uh, traumatic to try and do the over the top in such cases. Can you see the plane has opened up, so I just have to kind of take away the ligamentum flavor. I use the chisel to take away some of the lamina here, right? And then now we just need to take away this area to be very sure that our decompression is good. I use a ball. आप कैमरा से दिखा सकते हैं उस वक्त उस तरह इसको यहाँ पे फोकस कीजिए. So if you see the table, this is the parallel to the floor. My, I'm holding my kerosene parallel to the floor and the patient is at that angle. So that much is how much I've tilted to the opposite side. My tube is also not straight. It is to the opposite side. So I'm using, working like that. So I get to see in the corner there. So what is your take on placing the, uh, or docking the tube in vertical lamina? Uh, lamina where laminofacetal plane or junction is very small so or a sagittally oriented facet. 
So it depends on what you are going to do there. So if I am going to do a decompression, nowadays we use 16 num millimeter tubes. So they are little better for small Indian tubes, precisely that reason. And in those cases, I would not use an expandable tube. I will use a very, very focused 22 millimeter p lift tube that will help me. So that helps. But uh, yeah, if you are not uh, very happy with uh, using a small tube, then it is better in such cases to go open. So I am, uh, can you see the root there? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, sir, beta. Uh, oh, I'm uh, 3 millimeter ready, Rakhi. Unless this is 3. Agar 3 hai, to 2 dijiye mujhe. So that's the extreme lateral part that we are decompressing and I am going into, this is where you got to be careful, this is where most disasters happen. Ball point, bada wala dijiye mujhe. Yeah, I am just going to delineate the anatomy a little bit better, hopefully. See, so that's the axilla of the root where my ball point is, that's the shoulder and that's the course. Can you see that? I can retract this and that's the lateral aspect here. So that is how much you should be planning to decompress. I can take this ball point everywhere. Axilla tak ho gaya hai ye and this is a retractable and that's the pedicle on the opposite side where I am hitting. Do you have a big one? Kahan gaya beta? Dundiya please. So we usually test with a one, a 2.5 or 3 millimeter this thing, I will use a Woodson since we do not have it. So this is a Woodson retractor, I am not happy putting, so but this is going in, can you see that? So that is a fair amount of decompression, unless you want me to do more, we can do all of this out. So I think I would be happy doing this, uh, stopping my over the top here. So that's how my, you should be able to retract the opposite side. That's the disc on the opposite side, if you can see. Yeah. So that's the foramen. This is the foramen at the top, and that's the foramen exiting below. And all of it is taking this whole number four at both the places. If you could dig up more, you'll see the exiting ganglion there. Uh, so, so there is lamina. Actually, what I did was base of the spine. While the I uh, cut this base of the spine with an osteotome. And uh, it's like a lamana is like a sandwich. So I took out one piece of it that was me, uh, it, uh, facing this with a chisel, and then we removed that. So now we have a roomy canal. You can see there's a lot of place here because the base of the spinous process is here, and the inner lower part, inner part of the lamana is gone, and that's the decompression we have got. Now we got to decompress the ipsilateral side yet because that is still not decompressed here. Can you see that? There's a fair amount of adhesion and all. So we'll come here and then we'll start with the screw. So thank you and I think when we will come next uh, on, on when the warm part of it starts. Sir, one last question sir. Sure. Sida Kuru. Yeah, tell me. Uh, sir, uh, what will be your workflow in case of degen listhesis? Is it the decompression first and cage, interbody cage next or the first cage and go for a decompression. So here it was not a great uh, listhesis, so we did not do it, but in a severe stenosis, I would always do my uh, decompression first including over the top because when you put uh, anything inside, you are essentially causing a, sec a secondary stenosis with your kerosene round jet item please. And when you do that, the chances of the patient waking up with a neuro deficit are very high. So when you make adequate place, see uh, nerves are like noodles in a tube. So once you make enough space for the tube to go in, the nerves will float inside the tube and not have a deficit. Yeah. But if that tube is cramped and then you are trying to push in large cases, they are going to cause some okay. amount of additional con uh, compression. And in severe stenosis, you are heading for deep trouble, especially pinhole canals, we will always do, uh, there is a classification system we have worked up where we want to do over the top, where you do not want to do over the top and where you do the over top before and after. In mid moderate to severe, you do the over the top before you do the uh, interdiscal work. Thank that you. also gives you a lot more graft. Thank you Vishal sir, we are shifting to the uh, another case and we will come back once you are doing the fixation. Yeah. And now I request Dr. Abhinav Agarwal to present his case.
Thank you, Dr. Suroop, and I'd like to thank all the panelists and the chairpersons. So my case here is that of a failed back syndrome, and uh, this is one of the most dreaded complications of any spine surgeon, a case of failed back. So we have a 68-year young female, and she presented to us with a low back ache and severe radicular pain in bilateral thighs since past one month. There is no history of any fresh trauma or any history of uh, heavy weight lifting. There is no neurological deficit. She is a known case of uncontrolled diabetes and uh, severe osteoporosis. Five years ago, she was diagnosed as a case of a PIVD of L4, L5 level with uh, anterior listhesis of L5S1 with neurogenic claudication and was operated at Ranchi where a laminectomy of L4 level was done. So this is the x-ray. Uh, this is the x-ray that we got. This is the patient. Video coming? Yeah, Can you play the video, please? दोनों पैर में दिक्कत है अच्छा कितने दिन से दिक्कत है आपको रुक जाइए कहाँ तकलीफ है आपको किस जगह तक दिक्कत हो रही है कहाँ दिक्कत है दर्द है आपको आपको बताइए माता जी महीना भर से बुखार आया अच्छा पहले भी आपका कमर का ऑपरेशन हुआ था पता है अभी दोबारा दिक्कत कब से शुरू हो गया महीना दिन से शुरू हुआ अच्छा सो शी वाज ऑपरेटेड अपॉन फाइव इयर्स बैक एंड So this is her MRI. Is it visible? So so this is her uh, right section MRI. We can see that there are gross uh, laminectomy was done at the level of L4. Can we magnify this? Anything, <laughs> is it visible to us? So this is the actual section. So we can see that there are, the MRI report described it as L3, L4 uh, stenosis with bilateral foraminal stenosis. L4, L5, there was le uh, grade 1 retrolithesis. And L5, Whatever S1 was L4. also anterior lithesis of L5 over L3, uh, S1. So what is the plan? Yeah, glad you asked. So I got a dynamic x-ray also, the flexion extension views. So anticipated challenges that we have here, 
she was operated already with a laminectomy at the level so of so we are bound to encounter some previous surgery fibrosis uh, the dura must be exposed so uh, there are high chances of getting a dural tear while doing a surgery she's a short stout lady and she's an elderly with uh, osteoporosis Microscope and she also has an uncontrolled diabetes so now what treatment What's options do you have uh, how many would go for pilip she is having right leg radiating pain no? i'm sorry she is having right only right leg radiating pain. right leg pa radiating pain but she has pain in both the legs both the legs both the legs yes. through what the pilip part is that sorry dexa dexa of the patient Dexia scan was not done, but she was, uh, yes, she was definitely osteoporotic. Dexia was not done. Okay. So the issue is if you go back to MRI, at L4-5, if you see the disc which is you know, on, uh, on the axial views, that the last row, third section. If you this one? This, yes, yes. You see on the right side. This is L5-S1, I suppose. This looks to be L4-5 because there is no laminectomy here. There is laminectomy here. Picture is not very clear. I'm sorry. Sagittal MRI also there is a disc which is going on the right side upwards. I know the first one. Okay. The the MRI before that. This one. Mm. Yes, yes. Okay. You see on the right side there is. This is Mr. At the level of L5 S1, you're talking about this one. It's L4 L5, right? This is center, no? Yes. This is more towards coming towards the left side. We start from the right. Start from the left side. You start from the left side. I don't know. Yes, yes. Patient, yes. patient to patient, but you have to see the exact cut at this level, axial level. Stout scissor is the tissue cutting to cut off. Leave the L5 S1 also here. Because that's her second surgery. What is Habra, sir? Today it is a claudication pain or a radicular pain? A radicular pain, sir. Radicular pain on the, on the left side. More on the uh, right side. Yes. Uh, More on the right side. More on the right side. Uh, if it is only radicular pain, I would also... And, and what is the distribution of the pain? Which so more towards, uh, I'd say, L3, L4, towards thigh and somewhat towards L4 level also. So L3 pain. L3 pain. pain. Yeah. Yeah. Reverse femoral uh, stretch test is positive. It is negative, sir. It is negative. It's negative. Fever is negative. Fever is negative. Fever is negative. Is it pain or more uh, paraphernalia than It's more of a pain. I think we just <laughs> heard our complaints. <laughs> it's right. more of a pain. Right, because... If you are saying it is anterior thigh pain, it right, is and radicular pain, and the reverse femoral is negative, and it's a diuretic patient, I would definitely go get a nerve conduction study done because the uh, the findings are discordant, right? Right. Uh, you have L3 pain, which can't be explained very well with the MRI, and reverse femoral test is negative. So I would want to rule out a diuretic neuropathy. That's why I was asking. If it is more of sensory symptoms, then. But anyway, I would not proceed forward without doing an MCV, and I would still do root blocks to confirm which root is causing the pain. Right. 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 Uh, before I would go in. Right. So right now, from uh, the history and the findings, I'm not very really sure what to address. So a recent onset, a single uh, one-month onset pain. Uh, will, uh, will we so be going, on going for neuropathic pain also? Like a a certain onset. Neuropathic pain uh, can be recent onset. Is that yeah. right? But what can explain the anterior thigh pain with the reverse uh, femoral test negative? Uh, L3, 4 is stenotic, you said, but uh, L3 uh, exiting root may not be compromised in that. So I would want to be very sure before I go in. I would uh, get an NCV done. Uh, NCV showing diabetic neuropathy doesn't mean that the pain is not radicular uh, due to the uh, uh, due to the compression. Nice but I would go in for a root block and confirm which root Skin and then progress accordingly.
took his part. Oh, I mean, that may have been the reason for her feeling backwards. So, so I would want to be doubly sure. So, uh, regarding the flexion extension views, any any comments on that? Whatever can be seen, and the L5 S1 is uh, relatively stable, but uh, not much of unstable, right? And it will, in the history also, it will depend on where she localizes her back pain. Is right. it diffuse pain or localizing it to one point? Right. That would also give us a cue what the back pain is. For all you know, the, if it is a diffuse pain, she is uh, diabetic and osteoporotic, that may be responsible for her back pain. Uh, so what all treatment options do we have? Uh, how many would go for p lift in this case? Raise your hands. So p lift has really gone out of fashion. How many would go for a T-lift? A T-lift scan? No one? Exactly. Exactly. So the exact, exact problem is that MRI is showing so many findings. Either you can go all out and do L3 to S1, but then as a spine surgeon, you have to first find out exactly what finding is correlating with the pain, and then maybe we can address that part. So at present, it is difficult to judge ki what is causing the pain. So first, we have to find that. Yes, maybe. So you can try. Perhaps that is a cause of pain. You can try a nerve root block for that, and you can try a nerve root block for that, and. L4 nerve root block because it's a superior migrated disc. Right. So it must be eating L4 nerve root. So you can try that nerve root block and if it relieves the pain, then you can be very yeah. sure right. that your surgery, whatever you do, T-lift, P-lift, that will relieve the pain. Right. Otherwise, she may again uh, land up with issues. Absolutely. So we need to find out the source of pain actually and we need to confirm that and thereafter only we can, we should go ahead. And suppose if you... Uh, Let's take a hypothetical situation that, uh, okay, the nerve, conduct, uh, nerve block was done and L4 level was the culprit level. What surgery would you prefer then? Tracker, wow. I'll do L4, 5 and L5, S1, T lift also. You'll uh, include L5, S1 yes, also? Yes. Because L5, S1 is already, listesis is there right. and you are going to fuse one level above for that. So I'll prefer to fuse L5 S1 also at the same time. Anyone from Udi? We will also have to go more detail into the history. Where will you make it? That is the hard diameter. Two minutes, DJ. We'll just open this. Second thing is, laminectomy was done. Five years back at the age of 63 or 63. Yeah. And it didn't help at all. No, sir. But she I was she was walking comfortably for the past okay, five years. She was absolutely so symptom free. Point, yes, sir. That at that point, hmm. Abhi hata de. Just the laminectomy was done, and nothing Chief. was done. Nothing was done for the laminectomy or anterior. She so improved right. drastically. Thank you. So <laughs> we don't know. We haven't seen the X-ray before the first surgery. Yes, and we don't know. We'll drape this part. Sir, she was diagnosed. Uh, the diagnosed uh, the. Right. Th Diagnosis in the previous discharge summary. Yes, sir. And laminectomy was done at upper level, sir. L4 level. Listesis was at L5 S1. Laminectomy was done at L4 5. She got released. She got released. Some L4 L5 pathology was there, but we don't have that MRI. So five years ago, she was diagnosed as PIVD L4 L5 plus anterior listesis of L5 S1 with neurological claudication, and for that she was operated at Rachi. Laminectomy at L4 level was done. So that but makes it clear that at least L5 S1 is not the cause, right? Right. So uh, no need to touch L4, L5 L S1. But the so even <laughs> if the root block suggests that L4 is the culprit. Is the culprit level? I would just decompress it. Patient cannot regulate. But she was asymptomatic in between. She was asymptomatic so for five years, sir. But her symptoms, what she was telling is L5 dermatomal pain. In the video, what it was not the L3. And Dr. Dishaw must be uh, must have missed. So let's thanks to him. And let's clap. Oh. 
he'll be doing the fixation part also. So considering that video that she is telling L5, then because her symptoms were on the lateral aspect of the calf. So are we going for the OT room or are we going for the Can you shift the presentation? I think we have to decide because it's time. I think we must go back to the patient again. Sir, sir, sir. And I think I would like to know more of the clinical examination findings. Number one, talking to the patient again, again, is it proximal to the knee, that is the thigh level, or going and radiating right up to the, the leg or the foot or things also. Because this is an over here is L5, L4, 5 only or to include L5, S1 also. So what about L3, L4? L3, L4, would you like to include the long segment? I mean, uh, probably not. That's what I think so. In the fixation. OK, sir. So uh, quickly going on forward, uh, how many would prefer only discectomy at the level of L4, L5, or L5, S1? Hmm? OK. With the symptoms, Disc absolutely. Discectomy along with decompression of the L4 Okay. Yes, of course. Yeah, of course. Laminectomy, endospinal teeth, no one. Okay. Foraminal injections, how many would prefer that? Yes, sir. <coughs> so foraminal diagnostic block would be a thing, yes. And if the symptom improves, would you be preferring only a foraminal injection or would you like to still like to go and operate? If suppose the patient improves on L3, L4 block. I would give the option to the patient. Okay, sir. We normally would repeat at least three injections to get the doctor to go. So the patient improved with the L3, L4 injection, foraminal injection, and uh, that's what I did. I went in with a, for a transforaminal endoscopic discectomy and bilateral foraminotomy at uh, L3, L4 level. That was her culprit level under local anesthesia, and there was no fixation was done because uh, on the flexion extension views, the spine uh, appeared to be relatively stable, and she was walking on that for the past five years, the stable spine. It was a only a recent onset uh, symptom that she had. And uh, so this is a previous incision. Although incisions don't matter, the length of the incision, this was a 10 centimeter incision for a L4 level laminectomy that was given. Late, so can we project the last time? Do you have any questions? Do you So this is post-op 1. Stop. First post-operative day. Do you have any questions? No, I do you have any questions? No, चलने में जो पैर में दर्द हो रहा था आपको सब में आराम है अभी नहीं दिख रहा है जैसे पहले तकलीफ थी आपको खुश नहीं है खुश है कि नहीं है खुश है ना सो सो फाइनली आई टू एक्सट्रैक्ट इट आउट फ्रॉम इस थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू आई विल रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर विनीत यादव टू प्रेजेंट हिज नेक्स्ट केस Very good afternoon, everybody. After an interesting case by Dr. Abhinav, I think he has shown this, to have seen that. And uh, that's one of the dicey thing, where to operate and when to operate and what should be the treatment plan. Okay. So this was a young gentleman of age 50 years. He came to our OPD with back pain and this was his X-ray and he had localized tenderness. He came walking to our OPD. He just came with pain from last few days and this was increasing day by day. On and off history of fever and no significant weight loss. We got his dorsal spine x-ray done and this was the x-ray what we got. So any opinion?
स्लाइड्स स्लाइड स्लाइड्स ओके गॉट इट यू डोंट हैव पॉइंटर इन दिस पॉइंटर पॉइंटर ओके ओके सो वी हैड सस्पेंशन ऑफ समथिंग हियर एट समवट राउंड डॉर्सल d6 or d7 vertebra level so there was destruction what we could find there was superior end plate merging of two vertebral bodies inferior end plates look looked okay some osteophytes were also there so we suggested a mr for this patient and what we got so this was his mr mind he came to our opd walking without any neurological deficit with back pain only so what would you suggest this patient saraf sir or chabra sir see the let me tell you there is a evolution in the thought as far as treatment is concerned had it been on the days of dr sumit 30 years 40 years back then at that time you would have thought okay there is no neural deficit patient has come walking start anti tubercular treatment it will heal maybe bone block will form everything is okay and no one ever bothered about the deformity or kyphosis or even the sequelae of that kyphosis that is the late onset paraplegia at that time not now now the things have changed if anyone come even with walking with a picture like this probably i would be bothered i would like to operate and decompression as far as decompression is concerned here also there is a revolution they were all the time hocks on anterior anterior then came anterolateral decompression yes. most of the time most of the surgeries i but right now if you talk i'll do the ald anterior decompression probably people so all decompression fixation the present time is everything from posterior and certainly i have observed seen done you can do anything and everything in tuberculosis just from the back that's great so there was front then there was centrolateral then i think current it is back and as far as surgery should be done or not why not i think this is key for surgery chabra sir yeah. uh, there is also uh, perhaps a focus on the Great. I think they are there, but but that. Could have yes, true sir. Uh, fixation, how and what sort of fixation? What would you suggest, sir? I would definitely get a dynamic X-ray done. Okay. Uh, to see if there is any mobility there. For all you know, it may be already a healing tuberculosis because in many of our population who have bone resistance, it doesn't. So if it is a 55-year-old gentleman with a dynamic X-ray, totally stable, I would at least give the option to him to go in for just a conservative, conservative. treatment. Because right now the surgery would be the same as well if it causes causes problem. Okay. But if on a dynamic X-ray it is unstable, right? It is not fused. I very often get a CT scan done also because bony fusion is more evident on a CT scan than on an, an, an MRI. Uh, then of course uh, i would go in for a i would offer that we do a kyphotic deformity correction in this patient okay and for that we normally would go um, two levels below and at least three levels above okay right for a dorsal spine also sir a dorsal spine also okay uh, because dorsal spine it doesn't matter in this patient because there is the ribs right so there is a deformity the load is more on the superior uh, in this patient will need a pso at least right uh, so then uh, at least two levels above but uh, depending on the fixation we may also so so in uh, active tuberculosis i think we we can uh, go for early debridement and we can fix it also sir anybody uh, would you suggest to go for a cage fixation in this or just fixation with screws only no 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 i said deformity correction My indication of surgery is not tuberculosis. My okay. indication of surgery is the deformity. S okay. Because uh, so for this all you know, just by an ATT, he may the the infection may fuse. But as Doctor Sarab said here, 
the management has now shifted to prevention of deformity. deformity. There's already a deformity. That's true. So we need to manage the kyphotic deformity. That's true. And the late sequelae. So, right. so this patient came to us walking in OPD. Sir, uh, Rai sir. Yes, sir. I do have done one case which was done and the bones are very soft. Entrolateral decompressions are good for decompressing the pronounced of aspirin. But here, it appears more like a dry region, not that wet. So in that situation, the pain he is telling. Well, if the patient is given a support and give you ADT, sometime the pain will go away. As Dr. Chavala said, he is more concerned about deformity. Tubercular infections will cure by your ADT and rest and brace. But if you are concerned about deformity, which is more than 20 degrees, so probably we have to do something. And for that, we have to put a cage from the back. Okay. And I think that that's so on a stretcher. He lost all his power. He was on bed rest. ADT was given. He came to us on a stretcher with zero power, lower limb. So we planned for fixation in this patient and uh, decompression. Yes, yes, sir. No, when he came to our OPD walking, we got this MRI done, we suggested him uh, surgical intervention, he was not ready at that time, we uh, let him go and uh, we gave him ATT, he was advised for absolute bed rest and after five days of our advice, I got it. I got it. he came to us with complete paraplegia. Then we planned for uh, decompression, all posterior approach, decompression, fixation and a fusion. So, uh, Sarub must have uh, done a trans thoracic approach in this patient and enter screws fixation, but I think that's uh, too much kill and that, that causes more of morbidity in these patients sometimes. Removing two ribs and what's, what's your say on uh, ALD, sir, Saraf, sir, which you have seen for quite long time and what was the long term outcome of these patients in ALD where we removed the two ribs and just debride the area? I think probably I have done the maximum ALDs with Professor Tuli also, and after he left, I did myself also, and I have no regrets. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And because I have long followed the patient coming after ALD, so many patients coming and coming and seeing the dramatic results. But that, as I said, what I observed over there, what I was concerned was neural deficit. Okay, patient coming on the stretcher, now he's walking, and so the surgeon happy. But when you were observed or never asked about the deformity part of it, I true. tell you that the present time deformity part is very important. Very important. Very, very true. important. That's true. So, sir, what's, the, what's your criteria in what spine patient to operate for? What, what standard classification you guys are following nowadays? Chabra, sir. So, what's your criteria? You have, you have yes, Santosh, sir. You have limited time. Ah, that's true. So I, I, I for in my I would still follow the middle path regime. Okay. Right. Unless the deformity is likely to progress to beyond a certain um, beyond the acceptable level. Okay. Uh, so we still follow Dr. Tuli's uh, middle path yes. regime. Our ATT is based on the WHO requirement. Sir, what I have seen, what I have read, uh, we have a good GATA classification, GATA, that was given in 2008. That's a very aggressive intervention sort of thing in tuberculosis spine. If two levels are involved, th there's pus formation, you have to... They, they consist of people, surgeons mainly from the developed countries, and they were trying to come up with a classification system for spinal infections. Okay. And they said we'll have one for, the same for tuberculosis and pyogenic, okay. right? When I tried to tell them, you know, it doesn't make sense because tuberculosis is a totally different ball game. They don't, they didn't understand. So subsequently, Dr. Rajasekharan in his mail also pointed out, what I wanted to say is, who has the maximum knowledge of tuberculosis? That's, spinal that's the Asian problem right? in India. The yes, US people probably see one, once in four yes, years, sir. right? Yes. So we, a classification system which is based in our country, in the emerging country is the one which has stood the test of time. And we, whosoever may come out with whatever classification system, we would only see who has more experience. So thank you, sir. Thank you. The type of surgery. <laughs> so this was done. All posterior approach was uh, taken. And two level above, two level below fixation was done along with a uh, uh, expendable cage and with the graft used from the same area. And this was his three month post-op. Ca you can see there is, there is good bone formation anteriorly. 
and this is his two year follow up x-ray. So there is nice bone block formation at the level of uh, infection. So he has recovered completely and doing his day to day activities. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was an expendable cage, yes, true. Uh, Indian one, sir. Actually, many of us are doing almost a similar surgery. So I think uh, we'll stop the cases here and we'll go to the theater. Dr. Vishal, sir, can you hear us? OT1. Yeah, can you hear me, Dr. Patel? Yes, I can, sir. Yeah, so we have just finished acquiring image from the OAM. Okay. And uh, now that is getting fed in the navigation, we will be taking out, uh, just uh, kind of uh, getting all the equipment uh, recognized by the uh, navigation so that we can start with our implantation. Give me two minutes. Okay, sir. You have the latest, this is O2, this is as good as it gets for navigation. The probably the only other 3D navigator that comes close to this is a Mobis. Change your gloves for me. So there are two options with this, one is you can keep uh, the worm in the field but that restricts your movement. So we prefer to take it out. Uh, I think Bharat Bhai, Bharat Dabai in Andabad keeps the worm in the field, that is also an option. Uh, then you can use its 2D uh, images too but… Uh, the worm is coming in between, we are unable to see the screen, the cameraman… They will, they will, they will see, uh, show you now. Okay. So now what I am doing is needle, needle, needle ki there hai, pack needle. So this is the pack needle, can you see that? Camera, camera. So uh, we will come to the images later. So this is the pack needle, this is one of the stars of the whole thing. So what I am doing is this is a patient tracker, so this four gleon. And once you do this, what I am trying to do is this is recognizing the spatial orientation <coughs> of all the instruments. So it can use the algorithm to interpret it and put it where uh, uh, virtually on the screen where it is. Can you hold this on a more sterile surface? Don't keep it here. Okay, next tap. So this is the tap. We are doing the same. This have, uh, when you are using Metronics, it is easier because it is, select the correct instrument please. Now I have 4.5 tap in. Okay. Okay. Nikita, screwdriver. Okay, so these are the instruments that have got verified. So now the tracker and the pen and a pen. So can we make a picture in picture where we get the di direct feed of the screen to them? It's already there, sir. It's already there. It's already there. Okay, so now a pen. Wo pen tha wo gaya? Skin pen tha na bhi. Nahi hai to beta din de dijiye. Okay. Uh, so, sorry, you need to, Varun, Axial, Lateral, I do not need the AP, Varun Salnaya, what of Kaya Salnaya. And centralize it please, make it three screens. Three. Okay, 
third one third one yeah are three na re ha the okay now i want the axial there yeah ha to it is not coming raja can you see you have to move the image raja yes idhar axial dena ha thank you yeah that's what i need usko upar leke jaiye sorry every surgeon has his preference on the navigation screen mine is a little different i apologize yeah this is uh, this is uh, can you see the screen now yes sir so this gives you a fair amount of orientation can you put the tracker length projection projection 10 cm so the blue part is where the true needle is and the yellow part is what the what is the projected track it will take if i continue at that angle can you see that so this is where my entry point will be to get an a good l5 and for l4 it will be here can you see this yes sir we can appreciate it so this is the entry point i plan to take so i'm just uh, uh, this is how i do it people prefer to go through their own wounds so give me a blade please skin blade so this incision uh, about uh, 2 cm bp to be kept around uh, 100 so that it doesn't bleed too much yeah okay give me the bleed thank you ma'am just uh, this thing mallet ready so there it goes and hammer length kiti hai azun da so show me the length that's the length how much 45 so 45 is an optimal size of screw that can be used here correction Okay, wire to me. Right wire. Do we have it? The letter last. Nikita. Nikita, first letter. Yeah. First, first letter. Yes. Letter. Sorry, hammer. So, this gives a little bit of substance to the wire so that it doesn't buckle while you're hammering. I'm holding about half a centimeter, which I want to go in, and when it starts hitting my thumb i stop so that's the amount of wire i want to go let it go in can you hold it please acha tere haath mein kya hai le okay sir sir in meanwhile can you show us the cage position where the cage is right uh, can you show the ap and lateral aro uh varun yeah show the before the Thank 2d you. images please on the on, on the worm even i haven't seen so tackle ready projection yeah we can see that so that is the cage you can see the graft yeah. length 50 50 Okay, can you uh, thicken it up to tell me what size it will take? So we can check the width that will go in also here. What is this? Six point five crore. Yeah, so six point five would just be a good size here. Take the projection out. So you have to leave in between a bit so that you know it's going. It can be a little whippy. Okay, good wire. So if you see my cut here is three centimeters. आप साहब ये दिखा सकते हैं? ये two to three centimeters lateral है, but my entry point for the guide wire is wider. So this gives you a more longer, a better screw purchase and a safer screw purchase. So Srinidhi, Sri used to be an assistant professor with uh, Sion Hospital. He's joined us as a junior consultant, but he is a pro when it comes. He's better than me most of the times passing through. 
younger people have it better because they are more used to their uh, iPad, uh, uh, how to say, PlayStation and everything. So they are more oriented for technology than old foggies like us. Okay, next one. That is what scares me. I am going to become a dinosaur in a couple of years. So you can take your time and check angulate. Yeah. So you know the optimal entry point. Yes, that should be it. The entry point is where the okay. pedicle meets the transverse process. You should get at the base of the U. So it does not sit. Otherwise, if you go too medially, it's good. the tulip is going to sit on the facet and you will get a very early adjacent level from going back. I hope I am making sense. Projection patla karo. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, sir. We can. That, that uh, U that is there, this one, this U, that is the uh, base of the U is where you should be entering. So, all screws 45 hammer. matter this is not a laudotic cage it is an anatomical cage a laudotic cage you got to put it right in the front in an anatomical cage you want it to be in the center the maximum height of the cage which is at the two-third one-third junction front it's not going to restore proper it's going to become kyphotic again so the maximum height has to be at the center so it gets back to its normal alignment so everybody has its own take there is no proof to back it up but this is my theory so, uh, I prefer to use a 24 plus size cage, unfortunately, ulta dalai. Okay, Nikali. And now, uh, you always use the piece cage or you prefer titanium? Uh, in younger patients, we put titanium and in uh, older patients, uh, we prefer peak because like I said, softer the bone, the cage should be softer, otherwise it is going to bite into your end plate. So this is what I call democratization of pedicle screws. There used to be a time when they used to talk about the learning curve, pedicle screw mein ye taklif hota hai. I mean there is a lot of surgeons who would put wires and hooks and refuse to put pedicle screws because the, uh, of the fear that it may go wrong. This can, uh, I mean you do not have to be a great surgeon, you can be a below average surgeon and you can still put accurate screws. It is as easy as that. It is fairly quick. It is fairly adequate. Initial few cases to get used to the technology and the nervousness is going to be there. But it makes a lot of sense. Can you see how wide we are going, Leaf? Okay, go now. No, no, no. no. It is on the spinous process. Uh, we can if we want to. She is fairly young, so no need to do that. Too wide, beta. Too wide. Take it off. Uh, so we, I think, got a very wide entry here, and that's going to be a challenge. Projection. Ten centimeters around. Sir, any experience of using the patient tracker on PSI spin? Yes, we do. Problem with PSI uh, is going to be. Uh, So, we use in PSI. So, what happens is, you can see this in PSI, it will come somewhere here. So, you have to keep your camera downstairs and putting this L5 screw and if you are putting S1 becomes a challenge because it comes in the way. So, we, I used it a couple of times. I still use it when there are tumors to be done, sacral tumors especially. It is more accurate in that case. But uh, otherwise, this is better pedicle uh, entry. And put your tracker there. We tried that too. Again, it causes a problem at the ipsilateral side. So, PSIS tracker is not something I am very fond of. There are people who use that. 
I mean, they are comfortable and uh, more surgically, uh, I would say, talented. Not in my case. Can we just show the CRM so that people can see what is happening, or it's not available? So these are the four wires, uh, Dr. Patel. Yes, I'm sure the yeah, these are the wires gone. So because it's a demo case, how does it correlate to the CRM? How accurate it is? It's better shown so that everybody understands. And I use this as a check. Though we haven't yet had the misfortune of putting a single screw outside, uh, you never know when destiny decides to give you a short hand. So it's better to check always. There is nothing like a sort of thik hoga. There is always a point something error margin which we don't want to be facing. So always check this. I do this check. There are a lot of surgeons who don't. My boss personally doesn't do it. He finds it a waste of time. But uh, I mean, I'm a very scared surgeon, so I prefer to do it all over again. So, एक AP लेना बेटा और फिर एक lateral. Two tulips, four tulips, and six tulips. Tilt him, Ajay. It's okay. Thoda aage jaiye. Thoda aage lije. Aage jaiye aur aur thoda piche jaiye. Aapke height kam kijiye. Hello, Dr. Vishal. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Dr. Virin Kesri here. Yes, sir. And uh, asking you the path of trajectory and the direction of trajectory while putting the wire. Uh -huh. So I prefer to go very wide and lateral. So that gives you a good trajectory. So that is what we have got. Can you see the trajectory? Uh, I just want to say, uh, I just want to ask the lateral. direction angle from the skin to the vertical body. So I go about five to six centimeters lateral to the midline, and before taking the nick, we always check on the OAM projection what would be an optimal entry. That's what we did. Uh, that yellow projection, I was sure I'll do. I'll repeat the step so that it is better understood now. But I'm just checking with the lateral. So what you do is you put your uh, uh, navigation pin uh, on the, the needle on the skin and you draw a projection. That yellow line was the projection. So it projects where it's going to enter. So you have a clear idea which is an optimal entry point. So you just cut where it is to be there, and that's it. Now the AP CM is good, sir. So you are happy with the AP, sir? Dr. Vishal? Huh? Sorry? You, you are happy with the AP? Yes, very. Yeah. It is. Uh, it looks very, how to say, angulated, but that's the whole thing. Yeah. You put the wire in, uh, the entry point is on the lateral most aspect where the transverse process has went the pedicle. It is not at the traditional open trajectory. If this was the traditional open trajectory, I would have been biting the insides of the medial this thing. Here, I am fairly happy with what uh, we have purposely chosen to, to go lateral. Kya ho gaya? Bas, Height badai beta? shoot ki. Can you save the AP picture? Aap kijiye. Yeah. On the monitor. Lateral dikhaiye, beta. Good. Yeah, height. Aapke machine ki kam kijiye. Down, down, down. Plus, dikhaiye. Okay. That's no, a fairly decent one. Yeah, nikaliye, yeah. siyam nikaliye. So, uh, it, uh, is everybody happy with the position of the wires or they are not satisfied? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. And the AP and little both. Yeah.
So, a uh, lot of people skip this step correctly so, but I try to do this every single time. It is just an insurance that you buy that your wires and everything is okay. Uh, after this, the steps are fairly straightforward. You have measured the size, the average size we could think is optimal is 45 here. So, 6.545. Yeah, so this one was measured 45. So, I will now dilate this. So, the entry point, choose, can you see, give me the needle. So, see, Pravarun, uh, can we get a projection? Either a camera kije. So, I am just trying to show how to get the projection there. Uh, project kar. So, what you see in the is the blue, the blue is that position of the true needle and yellow is the projection. So, here I would want to go, my entry point would be somewhere here. Am I being clear? Yeah. To the gentleman who asked me this question. So, my blue is still on the skin. The yellow is the projected line it will take if I go with this entry point. So, that's what so determines the entry point. Slight angulation is downward? So, you can, down, uh, you can go up down as the pedicles are. So, here I would go like this a little up. Can you see the image and image? Where? Right, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, that's how it is determined. So, it is good to use metronics with an uh, OAM because it's, they are, their instruments are made for it. So, I'll just show you this. Uh, so, now can you see the virtual projections? So, what I am using as a tap, you know where your tap is going. 45 ka screw beta. Legacy 45 choose kije please. So, that is the virtual projection of the tap and You have to be careful, you just got to hold on to the wire so that it does not walk out. So, this is the screw that we are going to use. Uh, it is a 45 millimeter legacy. To be honest, I am using this for the first time. I usually prefer to use the Solera. The screw and that is where the screw is going in. You have to be careful with the wire, that is the most dangerous thing that we use in this whole surgery because if it moves any forward, then you are going to be in trouble with the anterior structures. So, that is the screw going in and uh, it is nearly, you can just push it as much forward as possible, capture it please. And uh, usually we would without navigation stop much, this is a very mind you very small lady. So, for her a 45 mm screw, it, this she would have taken a 35, 40 otherwise uh, if Dr. we had. Charles, yes, yes sir. Uh, do you uh, check the real time moment of the patient while putting his screw? Real time? I, I did not get the question sir. You, you get the images on. Uh, the screen what you are seeing is the real time projection. Is it on PIP right? Where I am using this. PIP mein hai ki nahi bhaiya? Aap bataiye, puchhi unse. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, are you able to see? Sorry, because I have lost the screen. So, this is the tap I am using and you can see the projection. It will come into the picture now. And as I move, you have screen band hua, isle main push now. Barabar aare ke. Ah, okay. So, this is the real time movement that you can see. The algorithm calculates the distance and you get in true time that you are going in the right place. My question is, once the patient moves a little bit, one millimeter or the two It does not matter. Your frame has taken a reference. The problem happens when the frame moves. If your frame has moved, then you are in trouble. You have yeah, to yeah. take a… My question. Yeah. You have to take the image again. Tap ka gliance mein blood laga hai kya dekhe, please. Dr. Vishal, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, we are just going to uh, Dr. Shalesh, sir. And that will put you on hold, but we will be seeing… Yeah. The, uh, yeah, so I think uh, one screw is done. Yeah. Take it off.
डॉक्टर शैली सर कैन यू हियर क्लीन करो इसको डॉक्टर शैली सर कैन यू हियर Good, yeah. Gotcha. Hmm. Ye kaun sa hai? Ye dusra wala kaun sa hai? Two, can you hear us? We are from the hall. Dr. Shelly sir, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Hello. Dr. Shelly sir, this is Dr. Swaroop. Yeah, Dr. Swaroop. Yeah, sir. We can see the MRI picture. The camera is focused there. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible, sir. Go, 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 beta. Okay. Uh, I hope, uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the case. Uh, I think uh, everyone has seen the prime uh, preoperative uh, MRI and X-rays. I'll just brief about it. Uh, can you see this MRI here? Not on the skin, sir. Not on the skin. X-ray and MRI. Can you see? And I'm making a window. What is your plan, sir? How, how you are going to make the build Now I'll be using a burr. I'll be using a burr to just widen the foramen. A McDonald. If you see, this is a soft. I can feel this soft tissue. Can you see that? Yes, sir. And this is a ligament of flabum. I just need to just denude this under surface so that the ligament of flavum is attached here. Make a bit of a slightly wider window. I am not doing too much of dissection out there. Uh, we have the burr paddle. Yeah, thanks. Saline, please. Radiation Suction, please. Yeah. Suction, go down, please. Yeah. So I am feeling this is the inferior. Just making the foramen bit wider. You are taking out the inferior lamina. Correct. Inferior lamina and then the medial facet partial. It's a very large disc, huge disc. 
It is very easy. We are very happy to launch uh, this. I think this is a very important surgery for all of us in practice. Shooting, anesthetist, please take cover. Shooting. You have to be careful to not go too much lateral to create a defect. Oh, you are doing all the superior lamina, sir. Patty, please. Patty, 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 patty. Keep the patty ready, brother. One more patty. Yeah, please keep patty and surgery cells also. Sometimes we need it. Because of chronic compressions, we just need to be patient and just keep a patty. Dr. Salis, can you hear Dr. Salis? Yeah. yeah. This bigger is from the bony oozing? No, no, not from the bony. It is, I think, uh, the epidural. Okay. Yeah. And I'm just keeping it there and I'm proceeding with my uh, dura. Uh, we have Penfield. Uh, yeah, I personally just take very, very minimal partial medial facet. Just minimal. As an elderly gentleman, we need a good wide decompression in such cases. And this is what I am just checking. control the user also and under surface of the lamina here. Number one. So anterior part of the lamina you are taking with the ronger? Yeah. Just very, very minimal. Bleeder to stop, otherwise, I to make efforts to stop the bleeder. How much is the pressure, doctor? I need a bipolar also. Just keep it, yeah, pressure is a bit high. Garrison, number one. And I need a. Sir, MRI wise, where is the extrusion, sir? Sorry? MRI wise, where is the extrusion of the disc? It's in the right foramen and central portion, okay. both. Foramen and central. Yeah. And as it's a degenerative spine. A lot of arthropathy has happened here. Go. Not like in a routine case. Go, go, go. Let's see, I'm AP. Oh. Dr. Ranjit Kairanji Urali. I'll just check the... Uh, AP? 
notebook please bipolar, bipolar i'll just need we'll just check that there your jail phone shooting please cover can i just get jail phone and sergi cell both please small and make a sandwich एक मिनट रुको बट ठीक है ना इट इज डन इज जॉब वरुण ये ठीक है ना काफी हो गया क्या अजू ना थोड़ा पूछ करो बोले हाँ थोड़ा पीछे ले लगेगा तो पीछे ले Yeah, phone, please. Now we'll just try to see yeah, whether we. थोड़ा आगे आओ, आगे आइए, आओ और आगे आइए. Give us both the jail phone. हाँ, ऐसा ही करो. इसको ना jail phone को निकाल दीजिए. Cut करके. बाद में जब खत्म होगा तो एक लेटर ले लेना. चलो, final. और छोटा करो. Thank you. Yeah, it is coming from the medial side. Correct. ये तो सब ये press करेंगे microphone को. दबाइए please. हाँ, yours. Thank you. Is the bipolar? How much is it on? Yeah. Can you just give me a foot pedal, please? And keep couple of patties here, four five patties. Thank you. Which one is the A? Foot pedal for this. Okay, uh, so we are finishing here. We are doing the final breakout ah, plug okay, for nice. the section system here on the opposite side. We've uh, it's been a pleasure operating here. I must say, Cesia team here is one of the best I have ever operated across so many continents. And there was no reason for us to ever tell them. Chota, chota sa karenge. Change the BP or whatever. So this is the end point. Doctor Patel, can you hear me? इधर का माइक बंद है. अच्छा ये स्पीकर लिखेंगे. Okay, so this is it. These are small incisions through which everything is done, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor Vishal. Okay. Patty, please. Sister. Thank you. Dr. Vishal, sir. So thank you, everyone, in OT1, Dr. Vishal, Dr. Kulkarni, the OT team. It was really wonderful watching you all. Now we are seeing Dr. Shailesh doing micro disectomy. Thank you for this wonderful live demonstration. Garrison, please. Huh. Garrison, please. Against it. Using the bar hole, we can use the ronger here. Sorry? Bar ki jaga me sir, ronger ko kar sakte te use. Kar sakte te, yes. Yes. Because that is not guided in this small place. Ah, okay. Now only for the partial, just you can use the ronger, yes.
Pandi, please. Bipolar, please. Bipolar. Dr. Shalis, how many times do you check with the CRM to prevent the wrong level surgery? Sorry? How many times do you check with the CRM? I practically check pre-op, intra-op and post-op. Patty? Have you, uh, how, how frequently do you encounter conjoint nerve group? Anomalies. Bone wax, please. Bone wax. No, no. Do the pillow. Give it a little bit. Is it a little bit? Is it a little bit? Yes, perfect. Give it a little bit. It will be a little bit. And another hook we have. Give it a little bit. Press it a little bit. Take it a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Bone wax kira dia. I am on the ligamentum flavum and I am just trying to check the under surface. Uh, Dr. Shalit sir, yeah. we are controlling the bleeding, so can we just have a short case presentation? And we'll yeah, you can, you can do that, yeah. I request Dr. K. P. Agarwal sir, Dr. S. Kumar sir, and Dr. J. Karan sir, uh, J. Kare sir, to please be the panelists for the next session. And I request Dr. Anupam sir to please present his case. And I request everyone to grab their coffee, water, and please be seated. We'll have a nice discussion about the case. Good afternoon everyone. At the outset, I 
would like to extend my Arroh. sincere thanks to Apex Hospital Arroh. management, UPUA, VUA giving me opportunity to present Arroh. the Arroh. case. Arroh. This is elderly Arroh. lady had a moderate to severe pain at rest Arroh. during walking, turning position on the bed since two years. As such, she has no neurological involvement. CT scan, MRI, everything was done. Diagnosis was in a dilemma, whether it is osteoporosis, meds, infection, or injury. So this MRI and CT was done. It was suggested that biopsy has to be done. Biopsy again said this is inconclusive, so many cases. <coughs> Again, we are landed with the osteoporosis, meds, infection, and injury. This is elderly. Question is pending. So a lot of literatures and the data says that if the vertebral compression in the elderly, mostly it has to be think of, of this literature. This is the complication of the compression fractures of the spine in elderly, having a lot of Things that constipation, bowel obstruction, prolonged inactivity, loss of independence, kyphosis, loss of height, crowding of the internal organs, low self-esteem, increased nursing home admission, and last there is mortality. So investigations are in queue. CT, MRI. CT, MRI are used for evaluating the posterior vertebral wall integrity and the ruling out other the causes of the low back ache. Malignancy, not the osteoporosis, should be considered as the cause of the patient younger than 55 years of age with compression, compression fracture, trauma or the minimal trauma. The bone density in every case is important if the patient is having wedging of the vertebra. PET scan is the uh, another investigation must be done. Wait, wait, wait. Huh? Boss? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just I am supporting to my case how I have observed uh, wedging of the vertebra. In a nutshell, uh, just I will conclude. Uh, mostly the commonly it is metastatic and it's involving the 11, L1, L3 and the L4 vertebra. Choice of the primary treatment, if it is the malignancy, radiotherapy is in the 56 percent, operative in the 24, vertebroplasty and the kyphoplasty is 18 percent, medical is 4 percent. Mayo Clinic is having a, its own view and having said that unchangeable risk, your sex, age, race and family history, that is Medical condition is another thing that added uh, for the osteoporosis. What next for such cases, bed rest, teriparatide, vertebroplasty, kyphoplasty, surgery, and the teriparatides. For my case, I'll go for uh, my case. I did the kyphoplasty and huh. suspecting it was osteoporosis. So MRI and CT scan was done. Biopsy was chronic inflammatory lesion. I did the kyphoplasty followed by the fixation. The fixation was my uh, choice of the treatment because that was a thoracolumbar junction. It is most mobile part, so I choose for fixation also added with the kyphoplasty. Case number two, elderly female presented with the egg just a short case. No history of injury suggested the, was having the secondary or the plasmocytoma in the MRI. CT guided was biopsy was done. It, it, it was inconclusive. So again, I did the vertebroplasty and patient is doing. Vertebroplasty with the fixation was done after the surgery and the patient was walking after two days. Meta-analysis, I will emphasize just for uh, two minutes. It's 
very important slides. Meta-analysis of the vertebroplasty and the kyphoplasty. Both are the important things, but kyphoplasty is the superior. It, you can expand the height of the vertebra by the kyphoplasty. In the vertebroplasty, it is just a cementing process. This study shows the intensity of pain by the vertebroplasty and kyphoplasty in the cancer-related patients. Indication of the vertebroplasty and the kyphoplasty is the osteoporosis, myeloma, metastasis, aggressive vertebral hemangioma. The contraindication of the vertebroplasty is for the, just for the knowledge that bleeding disorder, unstable fracture, the posterior wall fracture. If there is posterior wall fracture, you should not go for the vertebroplasty and the kyphoplasty. If the patient is having a ankylosing spondylitis, having the three column fractures. Uh, a lot of the literature is being seen. There is no randomized trial to compare the two procedure and therefore our label data only allow for the indirect comparison. Here is this slide. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Later. Thank you. Dr. Chawra, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Anupam, sir. As you all know, we are getting delayed, but we all are here to listen to the great man, his views. And now I request the moderator for this session, uh, please call Dr. Chawra. Chabra sir on the dais for the talk. Uh, may we please may we please call upon Dr. Chabra sir. He needs no introduction. He is one of the most prominent people in the country regarding spine. Sir, please put a table or side me sir. Yeah. So we are going to have a uh, lecture of uh, Dr. Chabra sir. Okay. So where are you at right now? Yeah, yeah, you can please proceed. We are just uh, adjusting the microscope. Okay, sir. So we'll proceed with the talk. Yeah. And then we'll come back to you. Yeah. Sir, thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Um, I think I would first want to thank all of you for giving uh, me this opportunity to be here with all of you. I think it's a wonderful academic activity. Um, and uh, since it is mainly practical, live demonstration of surgeries, discussion of cases, it adds great value. So I will also keep my talk less didactic, give you a few introductory slides, huh. and share a video with you on a robotic deformity surgery so that it continues with the trend that is there for the day, right? Uh, we've been talking about OAM and navigation today. 
Um, so we know that spine ailments are very common. In fact, they are the second most common ailment after common cold. And um, we know that most of them can be managed still conservatively. Only 2 to 3 percent of them would require a surgery. So with this disclaimer, we move forward uh, with uh, surgical management of spinal ailments. We know that when indicated, spinal ailments through surgical management can have a very gratifying result. So uh, the quality of life improves substantially. And over the time, there has been an increase in incidence of spinal surgeries. Uh, you would ha yourself have seen that in Varanasi taking place. Main challenges which are there are accuracy and resultant complications due to lack of accuracy if you put in pedicle screws. So we saw how uh, OAM and navigation can mitigate that. But also the other challenge is radiation. Not only radiation to the patient, but also radiation to the surgeon. That is also because as minimally invasive spine surgeries have increased, so more radiation has been there to the surgeons. Ah, ah. So um, we Jai can Jai see Jai that Jai. there can be a host of uh, complications which can take place due to misdirected screws. And there is a need for accuracy, even the best of hands when they have done studies. Uh, though it may not have resulted in clinical implications, but very often the uh, medial cortex gets breached in the best of the hands. And uh, as we mentioned, the challenge gets compounded by minimally invasive uh, spine surgery. So what has been done to overcome the challenge? OAM navigation, as has, is being discussed today, was a big step forward. But then the next step has been robotic spine surgery. And let's see how that makes a difference. Uh, from freehand, which is mainly an image-based surgery, when you come to navigation, it is an enhanced image-based. It can take planning to execution with reasonably accuracy and control. But when it comes to robotics, you combine artificial in intelligence and have an artificial intelligence-based construct planning. Planning tank can take place in true AP, lateral and axial orientation and planning can be taken to execution with robotic precision and control. Uh, so uh, free hand registration is not required, but when it comes to Maybe. navigation, it is a feature based registration. And because of that, registration errors can come. There are registration challenges if disk work is performed before intraop imaging, as also was pointed out to you by Dr. Vishal. Whereas robotics, it is an automatic point by point mapping based on grayscale characteristics of the image that the system understands. The spine anatomy is segmented and registered vertebra by when we do freehand. Uh, it is based on direct yeah. visualization, knowledge of the anatomy, experience and tactile feeling, less control and variable outcomes. Though in the learning curve of many of you, that doesn't make a difference because your hand, uh, you, you can do everything uh, very well now. Navigation is based on virtual navigation visualization. So it is a partial freehand technique as you just saw. In robotics, it's based on robotic guidance combined with na no, uh, navigation visualization. It is a fully robotic arm guided and highly predictable and superior outcome. So that is the difference. Now, there have been various studies which have shown that even with deformity, you can achieve a very high level of accuracy with the uh, robotics. And uh, that accuracy has improved substantially. There are significantly fewer complications and revi revisions uh, that are seen with robotic spine surgery. So uh, there are, have been various uh, studies which have shown that complications are reduced substantially. So rates of uh, revision surgery for screw malposition and thus the length of stay of the patient also reduces substantially. And then again, when you use 
uh, imaging, uh, CRM for example, uh, robotics has a very big edge over it in reducing the, uh, the uh, uh, radiation by as much as 74 percent over fluoroscopy and 50 percent over navigation. And this is well described in literature and with the advent of navigation and robotics more and more of open surgeries are getting converted into minimally invasive surgery because you are confident in achieving more accuracy and this is well documented in most of the surgeons, most of the uh, journals, uh, peer reviewed journals across the globe. And it is also, if you see ultimately the costs may go up because the equipment is expensive and you charge the patient more or ultimately is it more cost effective? There are some studies which show that it may be more cost, of, cost effective per se. Uh, so wherever there is an instrumentation required, you can use robotics. Uh, in the cervical spine, um, uh, one uh, of the robo is uh, now in FDA approved. The other. Anil. I think we'll just go back to what we were doing. Listen, we just go back. Take it out. We'll just put it again. Take this out. Now, this is a problem. All muscles are coming in. Take this out. Yeah. So use the retractor. Microscope Bajulina. Take the microscope out for two minutes. Get the light. टेबल वो सेवेन टन करना आपके तरफ
फ्री देना Check the CM once. CM? Yeah. Dura then. Once the screws are planned in the desired trajectory, we stack and see the images across small sub millimetric CT cuts to confirm any error in the planning of the screw. It is recommended Lateral, huh? that we check the trajectory huh. in axial, sagittal, and coronal planes. This is the planning of the L2 level screw, which is around the apex of the deformity, ah, where is the size of the screw on the right side is being increased from 5.5 mm to 6.5 mm, as the pedicle can accommodate a 6.5 mm screw. We stack and play to reconfirm any breach in the trajectory of the screw. Now as we 
we see the right sided screw shows a superiorly directed incorrect trajectory of the sagittal plane so that is being corrected and both the screws are directed inferiorly as per the orientation of the body oozing both tha na bleeding both tha udhar shoot this is the planning of the l5 screw the exclamation mark here denotes high soft tissue pressure and a warning is given for the same by the robotic system we reduced the medialization hence and smoothened the bony surface at the entry points of the screws so as to prevent any possible skiving in this trajectory okay. okay the robo is then directed to the left t12 medical screw the cannula is inserted through the robotic arm the navigation probe confirms the direction of the medical screw the inner sleeve okay. is inserted it has sharp teeth like projections to engage in the bone it is recommended to use the mallet so that the sleeve engages and holds on the bone properly to ye mujhe bas the line should be added to the sleeve before we drill yes. inside to prevent any thermal injury nice. the high speed drill is also navigated and so we can have a live feed to confirm the trajectory in which we are drilling this real time navigation shows that and confirms that we are in the proper trajectory of the pedicle screws and once we cross the pedicle the drill could be withdrawn it is always advised to sound and check the integrity of the walls of the pedicle since patient safety comes first once confirmed we can either tap or directly insert the self tapping screw in the desired trajectory created by the drill now the robotic arm is guided to the right sided medical screw and the similar process is repeated we insert the cannula sleeve mallet the sleeve add the line drill the trajectory withdraw the drill tap followed by insertion of the medical screw ek minute band kar dijiye isko ne T12, L1, and L2 medical screws are inserted bilaterally using the robotic system. We could appreciate the cannula getting skived here, and hence we withdrew it instead of mounting on the bone directly. These dynamic decisions are important to prevent misdirected trajectory. Confirm using the probe the correct trajectory. the same sequence of drilling tapping and yeah, insertion of the pedicle screw is followed once all the pedicle screws are inserted it is proceed with the laminate there are some adhesions because of the heat infection over the cord temporary rod is inserted on one side Harrington gauze is packed around the lateral and anterior aspect of the L2 vertebral body using Cox elevator in order to prepare for contact. The spoon retractor is inserted lateral to the body and in front. It not only retracts but also acts like a protection sleeve. The pars and the pedicle are excised using the nibbler. I prefer having a circumferential view of the spinal cord while doing the corpectomy. It is important to protect the cord using any instrument like Watson chain which is being used over here. Using the osteotome and mallet the vertebral body is removed. 50D diamond burr can be also used. Within this movement of osteotome we try to remove as much of vertebral body as possible anterior to the cord trying to reach to the other side using the osteotome is of advantage since we can harvest good amount of bone graft which will be needed for future we can 
cannot be possible with exclusive usage of gold bar. It is mandatory to protect the cord and the now root at all times as being seen here. Now you can see I am using the bar to remove the remaining vertical body to reach to the opposite side. Since the bar is navigated, yeah, I also then... use it to mark the pre-decided angle of the osteotomy or the axis of the cord pack. Now we are removing the leftover rim of bone over the anterior part of the cord. Contoured rod, both the MEP and SSCP neuro monitoring are intact. We have inserted the rod on the side of the corpectomy in which the corpectomy has been done. Using the bar, we complete the corpectomy on the opposite side. Bone graft is inserted using the funnel, and we now compress bilaterally to correct the kyphosis. Since we have been able to achieve a bone on bone contact, just bone graft was added and no case was required. CRM images show good correction of the deformity in HD and lateral view. Neuro monitoring is intact. The bone bed is prepared by shingling for better fusion. Surgical wound closure is done in layers over a negative suction. around 20 degrees of lordosis with bone on bone contact the patient had a good outcome and was doing well on a one year so um, that you saw was robotics you have seen navigation basically here both the robo and navigation technologies have been combined together. So you um, have the stealth navigation to see real time uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the instruments and the screw and everything. So uh, what is the potential for the future? Uh, see the planning here, there are two ways to do the planning. Plan and scan, which can be done intraoperatively, as was done in this case. Or you can do all the planning on a CT scan the day before or a few days before also uh, on the software so that in the OT you are relaxed. You just need to execute. But then that needs a preoperative CT scan to be done, whereas in plan and scan you have the warm there and you can do everything there and then as well. So there are pros and cons on it. But they are moving towards automatic planning to be done based on artificial intelligence. They are pro pro uh, moving towards not using a, a need, uh, not needing to use a CT scan, but doing it on an MRI scan to reduce the radi radiation. So, uh, rod bending may be tomorrow done by the robotic techni technology, and more and more instruments are being integrated. They are also moving now towards seeing how to decompress, whether adequate decompression has been done. So there's a lot of future potential which is there with robotics. And unless we get into it right now, right, we may not be able to tap the full potential later because we have to position per, per se. So um, like the mobiles have evolved, right, technology has evolved. And it's not about comparison, it's about evolution. So with time, we have to move forward. And uh, this is one technology which has a great potential to move forward. So I thought about presenting this to all of you in this workshop only, where a lot on OAM and navigation is being talked about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chavrasan, for that enlightening lecture. Sir, uh, are you correcting the rotational deformity? The rotational deformity, that's a very good question, is the most challenging part to correct. So like when you do a VCR, right, that is not a challenge. Like you have removed the full vertebral body here. So you have one spine above, you have one spine below. 
right? And you can cut, do whatever you want, right? If you put your finger within, you can feel the great vessels in front because you have removed the full bone. And there are two, uh, basically you have done a full uh, osteotomy there. The challenge is in scoliosis where you, where you don't do a VCR, right? Where, how do you correct the rotational deformity? So there are various techniques available, uh, DVR technique, right? Uh, derotation can be done with the rod or directly through uh, 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 the um, uh, instruments which are available to correct individual rotation of the vertebra per se also. So there are various techniques available to correct that. Right? Thank you, sir. I thank Dr. Chhabra, sir, for the wonderful lecture. And I thank the panelists and the moderator for the session. Uh, I request everyone to take their places. Now we are going to have a very short, very brief inauguration of the program. To make this program successful, we have been blessed bada 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 bada. with UPOA, the Central Zone, our own Varanasi Orthopedic Association. So, uh, 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 Orthopedic Association, UPOA, I request Dr. Mishra sir to be on the dais. I request Dr. Kaushal Lagarwal sir, Executive Member of Central Zone, to please come on the dais. I request Dr. Karmrat Singh. VOA Secretary to come on the dais. I request our senior members of Varanasi, Dr. Saraf sir. I request our guest, Dr. Chhabra sir, Dr. Vishal sir, to please be on the dais for the inauguration. I request the organizing chairman, Dr. S.K. Singh sir, to be on the dais. And please enlighten, uh, lighten the lamp and we can have. I request Dr. K.P. Agarwal sir, Dr. K.V.P. Singh sir. I request Dr. G.N. Uh, Kare sir. And please excuse me if I am missing some names out.
we have a national anthem coming up please get up mayu dena sa sa mayu nayak jay hai bharat bhagya vidhata punjab sindh gujarat maratha dravid uttal banga vindya himachal yamuna ganga uttal jal dhitaranga tava shubha name jage तव शुभ आशीष मागे जाहे तव जय गाथा जन जन मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे डॉक्टर better if someone can come one person come ha swarup sir i think uh, you carry on with the lunch thoda sa yahan pe i'll do repair the dura thoda sa problem hai ha sir sir yeah continue kara okay yeah ha okay ha रिकॉर्ड मत करो अभी वो क्या चालू है हाँ हाँ माइक भी निकाल दो प्लीज इसको थोड़ा टाइम लगेगा अंदर से इसलिए पैटी का बंद कर दो कैमरा भी बंद कर पैटी वो पेशेंट पेंटिंग डिपिंग हो रहा है 
बैठी बैठी इनको बोलो टीसेल ब्लू चाहिए ना अमित से बात कराओ जरा अमित से बात कराओ वन मो हाँ निबला पाइन कटर है ऐसा है कोई तो इंडियन ट्रेन रहना चाहिए था ना यहाँ पे उनका टीम का अभिषेक का है जो आता है हमेशा निबला हैं निबला टीसल ब्लू चाहिए टीसल ब्लू टीसल ब्लू कैरिसन फॉरवर्ड I am comfortable, no, no, it was a little bit of an issue, so we are just repairing that, yeah, yeah, forward please, hi, you can go ahead with the other case, we will show, yeah, बड़ा निम्बल रहे? बड़ा निम्बल रहे? बड़ा निम्बल? We also working in Delhi. हाँ सर मैं उधर जेसी हूँ। हाँ हाँ अभी you are in second year नहीं I finished second year हाँ junior consultant in Delhi only क्या बात है सुपर ऐसे ऐसे growing big हाँ हाँ अभी जितेश और मैं मुझे लिए Carison for हाँ you are from where I'm from Bangalore oh that's good Bangalore also got very big opportunities now ना Persian, lot of hospitals there. Jain Hospital. Manipal. Jain is good? They are doing good work, no? Yes, sir. They are doing good work, no? Yes, sir. Lot of work. Lot of work. Noodle. Noodle is on this side. Sir, TC will keep it. Back up. Yes, it will keep it. What is he doing? So he is doing two, no? Yes. 
You guys are with sir only now. And unit, you got a unit now? Uh, sir, actually I am in clinical research now. Uh -huh. So it is a separate department we have. But sir ka case ke liye hum jaate hain and all other things. Okay, whenever they call. Every day we go sir to OP. Oh. Uncle, Guru. That's good, na? You're lucky to get everything, yes, sir. You want to stay long? Uh, as of now, no, sir. Actually, my fiancé is doing a fellowship in Delhi. So Till the time, yeah. You have no option. <laughs> I have no option. But then you'll move back to Bangalore. Uh, yeah, Bangalore is really good. It was very ambitious. नर हो कहेगा? That is a tear on this side only here somewhere. सरकार तीन आए तो हम वो भी फिनिश है फिर भी दिस ईयर ना? He's good. Yeah. His wife has also come to Delhi. <laughs> huh? Okay. How is Kali Dutta? Guru? After COVID. You guys did good in COVID, na? Hmm. We'll not be very adventurous, we'll just try to take out the compression, discectomy and that repair work. हाँ ले लेना ये बैडी टू पोट या पैटी अरे पीपीटी को वहाँ पे प्रेजेंट कर देंगे आप वहाँ पे लगा दें ये वाला वहाँ पे दीजिए ना क्या गिरा दिया कुछ सेक्शन थोड़ा सा कम करो वहाँ पे प्रोजेक्ट करिए ना पीपीटी प्रोजेक्ट करिए ना Projection. Projection. Arey, 
पैटी रखो हेलो 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 आवाज प्रोजेक्ट करवाओ यार तो लखना चाहिए ना कि स्पाइन का कर रहे हैं कुछ इसको बोलिए ना सर किशोर सर उसको बोलिए ना सक्षम थोड़ा सा कम करो सक्षम सक्षम कम करिए अरे कैंडिड मोमेंट Take out the disc. Hmm? Secret set नहीं है, but काफी ये है. Symptoms हाँ, वो शायद dural को कुछ करने का शायद जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगा, उसको just dab करके in compression pack. अरे वो लिखे गए क्या? आई तो हम्म हाँ आ जाए तो ठीक है Enemy of good is better, huh? अरे मालूम है। छाबड़ा सर का? I'll just try to see if I can. दीजिए कैसे भेजेंगे हम? आप ले लेंगे ना सर? दे दीजिएगा कैसे? Knife. शेट लिया नहीं पकड़ा डिस्क पॉसिबल है ना बायपोला बायपोला मेरे पैर में देना प्लीज एंड पैटी देना पैटी प्लीज हाँ रखो इधर पैटी रखो वील नीड
जरा सक्षम क्लीन कर दे हाँ दे ना हाँ इधर इधर बस 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 क्या था अरे इधर इधर मेरा तो भी चलेगा This was it. इतना फर्क पड़ता है ना? How you operate in your routine conditions, and this is. हाँ, ये सब हो गया? No, the only thing is this should have given a at least a doctor with me. That is now. ये चल नहीं रहे बायपोलर बायपोलर देखो बायपोलर चल नहीं रहा दूसरा लेना पड़ेगा शायद बायपोलर यार कौन देखता है बायपोलर बायपोलो चालू नहीं है रे जॉब इज़ डन बायपोलो दोनों दूसरा करो ना भाई दूसरा लो ना अरे दिस नॉट वर्किंग दूसरा देना दिस फोर्सेस देना पटा पट ज़्यादा नहीं करेंगे कुछ भी ना सक्षम प्लीज नहीं नहीं माइक ना भी बड़ा ही चाहिए सही सक्षम देना भाई थैंक यू फटा फट देना थैंक यू दिस वो सिर्फ देना ये ब्लीडर यार Call it a day? Yes, sir. Look, this is 4 or 5. Yes. Yes. Okay. I request all delegates to kindly have a seat mm. as we are getting a bit late. Uh, so, our next... Kindly have the seat and have the lunch. As we are running a bit Adi. late, so we are going to start our new pro new session. Salaam, last me dekha. Okay, I think. हाँ, वॉश, एक ना इन्फेंट फिटिंग ट्यूब देना, हाँ, नहीं वो लंबा हाँ,
you can say they have done their good show. But we are not used to it. That's the problem. This was his. एक डॉक्टर रहना चाहिए था सिर्फ असिस्ट के लिए नो 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 बट एक असिस्टेंस के लिए मेरे को भी समझा नहीं डिस्क फोर्सेस देना इधर जैसे वार्ड बॉय ना आई थोड़ा डिस इधर ऐसा सक्षम देना आई थोड़ा इधर ऐसा डिस कोई भी नहीं आए नो बड़ी स्क्रब ना बोलो दिया क्या ये लगेगा मुझे भाई बोलो काम कर रहा है बेस बोलो ये जेल फोन देना जेल फोन सर्जिस देना आई रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर सराफ सर एंड डॉक्टर कमराज सर टू मॉडरेट द सेशन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर इज़ ऑन एमआईएस टेलिफ इन हाई ग्रेड लिस्टेसेस बाय डॉक्टर विशाल पेसाटी वर्सर आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल Should we do? Should we try to repair that or just accept? Not seen. Not seen. Okay. Let me give you a gas piece. Fresh, new gas piece. One more. Na, eye pe blood aaya jara sa clean karo. No, no. One gas. New gas piece. Unko dena. Hmm. Arey ek mota gas piece dena, boy. Arey boya. Big gas piece dena ek. अंकर किसील कितना रखे हैं किसील कितना है पूछो एक बार उनको बुलाओ यार कोई रेसिडेंट को किसील है क्या किसील इनको मालूम है क्या ना कितना किसील एक किसील ले क्या हो ना लगेगा जेल फोम सर्जिस हेल देना जेल फोम सही से देना आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल डेलीगेट्स टू काइंडली हैव अ सेट आई रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर सराफ सर एंड डॉक्टर कमराज सर टू चेयर दिस सेशन सीधे आई रिक्वेस्ट छोटा सा था और उसमें से हाँ शोल्डर के नहीं हाँ शोल्डर के पास ही हुआ but away from the root हेलो 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 now we would like to call our August faculty Dr Vishal Peshatiwar for to deliver his talk on MIS TLF in high grade listesis Dr. Vishal is a personal friend and we have studied together in Mumbai KEM and he is basically an undergrad from KEM, a PG from Nair. He has done fellowships in France and Germany and he has made all over the country. And uh, Dr. Vishal, kindly. Thanks, Karma. Uh, it was uh, one of the icing on the cake to come here was to meet Karma after 22 years. Uh, he was the treasurer and I was the cultural secretary in 1994 One in more when we were undergrads. Uh, well, all of us have seen a minimal access surgery. Uh, why should we be adopting it at the initial stages so that this is what we are reaching now after having started it nearly 15, it 16 years level. back. Uh, this is a high grade patient. Not you can see it's it nearly eight plus centimeters to the skin, a very fat patient. And still we were able to do the fusion these are Indian implants, and that's the CT scan at the end of two years showing uh, fusion across. This patient is now nearly uh, eight years post-op and stable. You can do this with uh, normal uh, landmarks. So you, uh, we use uh, just the C-arm to do it, or you can use it uh, using 2D navigation, as you can see in this yeah, case. Yeah. These are some of the or 3D, what we saw today, where in women, middle-aged, between 40 to 60. 
So, uh, usually Accepted. when we do traditional high grade lysis, we are piece. taught that you put a screw in, in four, is you put a reduction screw in five, you so put a sacral or and plus minus uh. an iliac screw and then reduce it. So, you are putting the load of reduction on the reduction screw at L5 in probably an hypoplastic yeah, pedicle yeah. and the chances of the uh, screw walking out are going to be very high. So, the this is something which we believe we haven't uh, had enough in inner spine. The three columns that you go, the weight bearing column is the anterior and middle. The disc space and the uh, vertebral bodies are the weight bearing column. Number the one, two, zero, and the posterior like elements are the torque neutralizing. So, Aye. they give you stability Aye. when there is a rotational force. So, if you want to restore a lysis, it should be done in the front. You should not be using pedicle screws, which are essentially to give you torsional stability to be ah, weight bearing uh, implants because if you do that the chances of failure are higher. So, what we do is ah, this is a set ba? of paddle shifters that are made. They are very sh uh, blunt, uh, that is cheaply made in less than 10,000 bucks. Uh, this start at 6 millimeters up to 16 and, go back. and the yeah. width is 2.5 millimeters uh, at, uh, when it is 6 way. millimeter paddle. I, I in the video will understand. understand. This is the mainstay of what we do when yeah. we do an MIST yeah. lift. Yeah. The yeah. philosophy yeah. being yeah. all yeah. of us yeah. do ligamentotraxis yeah. for yeah. a distal yeah. and radius yeah. where we yeah. use the soft yeah. tissues to give the tension to hold a fragmented distal and radius. Yeah. The same principle you have a listhesis yeah. where the bone has slid forward. Yeah. This what you see, if you uh, think of these as the annulus and the ligaments, they are crumpled and shortened. So, as you distract this, as you distract, this get tense and they serve as the reduction devices. This is like backing up a car when it is got punctured. You are using a rotational force to distract and it lifts it up. So, as it gets lifted, it, this will get tight and it will hold the reduction. And I then know, you know, put the proper size hey, cage. So yours yeah. where the cage comes. No, no, I will present my uh, uh, And undersizing yeah, becomes a challenge. If you are going to distract completely and then put an 8 or a 10 or a 12, it is not going to hold. You have to put a proper size cage. So, to demonstrate, this is a short video. Uh, this is a 60 year old female. Uh, badly uh, degenerated disc. Uh, you can see fairly stiff there. Uh, I use a Jackson table at our place. This uh, essentially allows you to use the O-arm better. The belly is hanging free, so the Bateman's plexus is not under pressure. So, uh, hopefully the epidurals do not bleed as much. And that is, uh, you can give a head high, head low. One of the tip is to get L5 S1 straight. You keep the patient in head high, so that the this space is more vertical, you can see uh, uh, the that the patient's head that's gone up high. And, uh, you mark, uh, you saw in the morning demonstration, you mark the pedicle, so you know where your landmarks are and that's the disc space. So, my cut is going to be paraspinal about 3 to 4 centimeters. I personally use a Thompson's uh, tubular retractor. Uh, quadrant is an excellent retractor to use uh, also. So, once you do sequential dilation, uh, the theory is you do not let the muscle get butchered by trying to cut it. A lot of people put a cautery inside. You should just let the sequential dilatation to be done. As you put a tubular retractor, what happens is the walls of the retractor will give you the tamponade required. So, you do not need to actually get hemostasis there. The hemostasis is by the physical presence of the tubular retractor. Thank Once you. the tubular retractor is docked, no. it is at an angle, it is not no. straight. So, that is the tubular retractor okay. that is docked yeah. in yeah. Thank you. and you yeah. have to always check because it has to be in line with the disc space because if it is not in line, it will dig into the bone uh, or the same. So, that is the facet again, I will orient you, this is superior, inferior, medial and lateral. That is the pars that is there, that is the inferior facet of the superior vertebra. Uh, like I said, I prefer to use a chisel. You should be careful with this if you are not. Number uh, one very familiar Ithira, using uh, a number one y use your Two hammer has to be of the correct size. It is an L shaped cut that you do. Two, three, zero. So, that is where the spinal force is base, uh, basis and that is where the pars has been taken out. And once that is done, you can pick it and block, you get good size and good quality bone graft. Uh, trying to put in a kerosene round under this will cramp up the already cramped up place. That is my logic. So, the chances one in every 100 case you may end up with a deficit just taking the sharp edges off here. You have to see the tip of the superior uh, facet uh, 
uh, here. That's what we saw. Once you see this, you know you're going to go right uh, into the area you want. This is the area of interest, the Cambian strangle that has been described. This ah, is this a less will be this using this very soft this bone. This In this soft this bone, it is preferable not to use a chisel for this cut. Otherwise, it may extend into the pedicle and we will have some trouble trying to get stabilization. So it once that Cambian ka strangle ka is open, the retraction becomes very less. You are right in a very safe corridor. Huh? The only thing you should worry about here is a conjoint so root. You have to confirm that there is no conjoint root. And uh, I use wax in uh, osteoporotic patients because uh, uh, otherwise the cancellous bone tends to bleed. You should separate the flavum from the dural sac. Take your time, gradually and gently do it because a long term disease will have a lot of adhesions. And trying to pull that adhesion is going to give uh, you a dural tear. So keep. Uh, do, uh, see, ensuring that there is nothing that is stuck inside. Use very sharp kerosens. Other thing we do is we our flavum kerosens are different from the bony work kerosens. The blunt ones go to bony work, the new ones are for the flavum. So that the uh, kerosen is sharp and you don't have to tug on it. So you can see I can barely get my 15 number blade inside there. It helps to have bayonet handles. So yeah, the uh, we are closing. We it was an entire hand, so we uh, sealed it, checked it with valsal. And nothing then you coming. take the piju tree. So we are putting the T seal. This is a two millimeter piju tree. This kicked me over. Four or five inches. Finally, letting my pen field go inside. Huh? So, so this let's confirms okay. the direction I'll come we there. go into. Once you know this, I'm trying I'll to get my uh, paddle shifter. It is too tight, not possible. Okay, this is another 2 millimeter carousel. Of the distal uh, vertebral body. Right. Then this is a 3-0 curette, lumbar curette. Talkering. You okay. have to have patience to do these surgeries. There is nothing like a fast, fine surgery. I have already said what ah, is uh, uh, my view on somebody who says he to be a very fast yeah, surgeon. But uh, have patience, open up the space. There have to be no sudden and jerky movements. That's where the trouble starts. Once it's a little easier to go in. This is a time to see if you can push in a paddle uh, shifter inside. It was not good enough. So again, Q read the whole thing of showing this is, this is the most important part of the surgery, the intradiscal work. If your intradiscal work is not good, this is that allows a 2.5 millimeter paddle shifter to go in. Then you jack it up. So it becomes six millimeters. It has to be a very slow process. You don't have to make it very fast. Otherwise it will dig into the cancellous bone. So once this is done, leave it inside for some time. Use small curettes and prepare the end plate. However degenerate the spine is, there will be a couple of millimeters of end plates left there. If you take it out, it gives you more room to do more work. So now I'm able to jack it up. We will use a gradual uh, opening arm of the space by one millimeter serial uh, dilators. You should be prepared for a robust bleed because there are a lot of epidurals lying there dormant who for years have never done anything. So the moment blood goes in, they are tend to be leaky and be prepared for it in the microscope. Blood loss looks phenomenally more. Uh, it also is some, a place where you can forget that there has been a lot of blood loss because you keep sucking while working. So you have to have somebody warning you for every 50 to 100 cc of blood loss that happens. This is the gradual jacking up of the disc space. It has to be slow it takes time be prepared to spend about 45 minutes doing this because you have to leave it for the lack of time you have to put it there leave it for two three minutes let the soft tissue stretch and come back a lot of them are going to have calcified iota in the front so you have to be very careful about how much you're going to do it so once this is done i think the last dilator we've used here was 11 or 12 that's the fat one that goes in that six millimeters wide and 10 top. So that's the last. What you're seeing in the top picture is what I'm doing and that's the uh, in camera view what you're getting. So you rotate it and as you rotate it, stand, uh, it jacks up. So this serial jacking up gives you space. After you've had this stretching out of the ligaments, again there is, Number one, two, zero, uh, you nine. have to go and get the opposite side and the other cartilage that remains. Leave this in place for some time, the final dilator. So that the, otherwise they are going to spring back. This is type 2 collagen. It's going to spring back to its place. So let it stretch out. You can see the uh, ligament and annulus here is little stretched and better than what it was before. Go to the opposite side. Use the feel and then take out the cartilage from the opposite side. This is a larger there. area that you uh, get the cartilage dry, out. But still gives you a larger it fusion surface. It also gives you a larger yeah, yeah. area for the bone graft to go there. Mental piece, oh. So once you've done the upper and the lower end plates, that is the time to get a uh, up-facing curette and uh, sc uh, scrape it out. This is a bone graft. I prefer to use a funnel to put in my bone graft because it gives direction to the graft and doesn't allow it to uh, 
migrate into the canal because retrieving it becomes a nightmare. So once enough grafting has been done, it needs to be impacted. So that's the graft. Uh, you can use a Russian or a bayoneted big grasping forcep to get your graft in. It has to be, once it's in, use the tamp to get it a little more compacted, make space for the cage to go in. Remember, peak is a soft one. That's the trial that I'm putting in. Once you're putting the final trial, in high-grade list cases, initially you should always check whether it's adequate with a C-arm. It takes time, but then spend it. With some time, you will realize that, okay, this is not required and everything. So once it's done, there will be bleed, like I said. Just pack it. And here we checked for the C-arm images. I don't think I have that in my this thing. But you need to pack the bleeders. The reason to show this is don't panic. Oh, there's a lot of bleed. If it's the aorta you're busting, the blood will hit the ceiling. It's not that. It is the local bleeders that will open up. So remember that. Uh, and that's the bullet cage. Uh, this is, I think, a Jesco bullet cage. It's so made in India. It has a patch. softer snub nose, so it opens up the disc space as it goes in. Again, once you have implanted this, it's going to bleed, so be prepared for that. The posterior most edge of the cage should be anterior to Thank the posterior most part of the superior bone. Otherwise, that cage is going to go and hit your... Uh, ganglion of the uh, nerve root that is exiting there and be giving a problem. Then of course you go and do the over the top decompression as you can see here. So over the top becomes a little more easier if you have a cage inside. But if it is severely stenotic, you should be doing the over the top first. So that's uh, how, how over the top should be. You should be able to negotiate a 2.5 to 3 millimeter ball point on the opposite side to ensure that there is no obstruction to the this thing. Otherwise you'll end up with the hypertrophic facet hitting the exiting fruit, uh, a root and giving you trouble. So that's the O arm taking. So then the uh, rest of it, you've seen it in my uh, demo surgery. You t I go a little more wide and that's the tracker. So you know the length. Once you know where the, your needle is, you know where the length, how far you're going to go in. So that's determining the length of the screw that goes in. I'm going to just skip this part. So once the screws have gone in, these are reduction screws that we are using here. Again, a local manufacturer, Jesco. Once the screws are in and your uh, positions are confirmed, then you use, uh, there is a trick to getting the last grade one back into place. Uh, so you measure the cage, uh, the length of the rod. You, I lodos my rods a little more. Once this is engaged gel inside, form, gel form. it's not as difficult as people think it would be. It's very easy to put your rod in. It's one of the easiest gel maneuvers form, that you form. can do. You have to hit the base of the screw here and then take it in so that you are deeper to the deep fascia, otherwise it won't go. Once it is gone in, you have to rotate it straight. It has to be 90 degrees to the floor because you are given lordosis. If you are taking it on the side, it won't work. Ah, you tighten the lower one which is higher and then tighten the upper screw. So that pulls up the remaining part, whatever little that was. So the majority of the weight bearing is by the cage and the screws just do the last bit of reduction. We usually do this bilateral, by here for the demo purpose I'm showing it uh, to be unilateral, but that's the end point. Okay, close. Those, Number one. That's the end of the uh, picture. I'll just show you the next uh, image. Yeah, please. Thank so you that's very the post-op with the cage inside. The cage has to be inside. You have to, uh, to go and see properly. You can do it at multiple levels. This is one of our anesthesia colleagues' yeah. mom. Side with and, the corner. Uh, that's with again an Indian well. implant. That's what we did. This is but now more than six months. We have a series of step ladder deformities now beyond. Uh, <laughs> I think a uh, uh, couple of dozen now. So this is another syndromic case, grade 3 lysthesis. Uh, very reluctant for the surgery. This is now five and a half years post-op. That's her squatting just sit on it. You at uh, to one month post-op. The reason to show this is a lot of people hesitate to huh. let their patients squat. Uh, squatting Artery. is actually safer than forward bending. What you should worry in a spine fixation Absolutely. is forward bending Achha because you're loading the implants. When you're squatting, it's your hip you. and the knees which Aapka is doing most of the work. 
and this is one of the safest positions to let in. This trains the back. But if you are secure of your fixation, then you should hold because you are not going to keep your patient in bed for three to six months. So if your uh, fixation is secure at one month, you can do that. We have published this. This as a uh, policy, we do CT scans at six months to check for union. These are some of our cases. And high grade listes is showing Bridwell one. We have now close to 100 cases of high grade listes that we have done via minimal access surgery. And so far, we have been lucky. We haven't had a neuro deficit. We had transient uh, neuralgias in two patients, dural leaks in a, a couple of them, which were managed. They didn't give any trouble to us. Uh, well, that is uh, all the advantages of minimal access surgery: less tissue disruption, less blood loss, less mobility. Uh, you leave the posterior elements which are so tension surfaces. Uh, 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 even the other thing to sell is if you develop adjacent level, you still have an intact Shahan midline to dissect and go and do that. Uh, accuracy of screws is good. Yeah, and of course, uh, there is a learning curve. I believe every, I, I'm still scared of fixing an acetabulum or an upper end tibia fracture more than I would go uh, be scared of uh, uh, high grade listesis. Well, the, it's quite safe and effective, but I wouldn't recommend this to be the first surgery for you to do. This should be after okay, you've done a reasonable okay. amount and you're confident of your skills of doing mm -hmm. minimal access. Thank you. Thank you for a patient hearing. Very good talk. I think your message and your video was very good. But since your topic is high grade listesis, so I s expect some questions from the spine surgeons over here that that is it high grade listesis, okay? So any questions to him? Any query you want to clarify? Yeah. So initially, Sir, yes, yeah? the first two cases we did, we realized it's not required. So uh, what happens with an open surgery, when we used to do this 10 uh -huh. years back, we would go right Sahabe. across to the lateral aspect. Uh -huh. And like I said, we would rely on the screw to do the reduction. So you have not jacked up the height. So when the reduction Achha. happens, the clumped up annulus is going to just come up and hit on your dorsal root ganglion. And that's where so the uh, nerve goes off. Here, what you have done is this clumped up ganglion is already stretched out. So when the last one grade comes in, it does not go and hit your ganglion. So that's why neuromonitoring is not required. You are doing open, you are doing grade 3 plus. This is not exactly a high grade list. This is grade 2. So I'm talking about grade 3 and grade 4. When we do that, when we do open, we always use the neuromonitoring. But for the last five years, we haven't done a single one open. We have done all MIS and it none of the screws have worked out. And we document each and every case. We make it a point to get them to follow up at one, three, six, one year, two years, and five years. And all of them are doing so far so good. So the sequence is cage insertion. Then decompression, thorough decompression. Correct. Yes, and yeah. then doing a medical screw fixation and reduction, whatever. Yeah, is that that should be how it should yeah. be. Because if you do your reduction first, it's already a cramped up compartment. You're reducing, Lumbar you're going factor. to cramp it up further. Right. So, my so far we haven't required to do it. That does say, uh, just the level four five is there. We fix four five. Sir, so my question is in grade three, Caesar's grade four. If you leave grade three listers. Also, you Caesar? do this Cut cage lumbar. first because Always. the lumbar, exiting lumbar. nerve root in grade 3 or ah. 4 will be very close to the uh, disc space before you distract. So that's why you uh, you open up the ah, cameo strangle. So when you're opening up the cameo strangle, sorry, you have the exiting root, you have the traversing root, you have a pedicle here, and this is Pon close by. Pe? So this area when you're opening, you can actually see the exiting root here sometimes, the ganglion. So when it, you have it under vision, you do injure it. That's the first thing. Second thing is you use blunt. Uh, of course, you're going to take care. Like you, when you do a spine surgery, you see uh, you do a wide laminectomy. You say. You're seeing the entire uh, dural structure there, so you take care and not injure it, right? So you have to take care. So it's not like it's uh, as I say, it's going to take time. You have to be careful of not injuring. Yes, That's I got your point, but sir. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll do uh, where uh, we uh, partially uh, reduce it and then put the case so that's uh, So, that's what you do with the distraction. So, when you go with the first uh, inter body distractor, it is 2.5 millimeters thick and 6 millimeters wide when it goes in. 
It is blunt on both the sides. And when you jack it up, you jack it, uh, jack a 2.5 millimeter space to six. So when while you are doing this, the the lax structures are going to stretch out. So the dorsal root ganglion will have some play because it's actually the whole nerve is loose. It has uh, been in that position of shortening for a long time. So as you distract, it goes back to its normal pace and it goes away from the feet. So the best way to know that you have distracted enough is when it goes back to its normal place just under the pedicle superiorly. Uh, even, and even in a grade 3, if suppose you are here and here, so what what you saw here was a very stiff radar. So if it's a lytic lysis, it will just reduce by grade 1 or 2. When it is stiff, then you have to put a pen field, check what is the distal, uh, posterior most margin of the vertebra that has gone forward Artery. and then start your work. You should be able to do. Because there is a PLL that's raised like that. And th that is lumba, actually lumba, you lumba, find lumba. a hollow cavity between the soft tissue and the uh, lysthetic bone. So, so you know so, it's safe. So you are not, not point. So you are still you speak, yeah? putting the cage first and not putting always, the even always. the other side screws. Always. Always. Also yeah, I, if you d use your screws to hold or distract, which a lot of my friends do, majority, 90% of your patients are going to be 50 to 60 years plus women with very poor bone quality. So you have uh -huh. a tube, you have a screw in it, you have distracted it. So your titanium has gone and hit the superior edge. You have done your intradiscal work and then you are compressing or leaving it alone. So you are actually giving it a loop. Then in that case, you should take it out and put a larger screw. Gautam but Prasad why go through it when you don't need to? In okay. many Dr. Anupam, uh, in often we see there is a anterior lysthesis at one yeah. level and there is another retro lysthesis. Suppose the patient is having L45 so anterior lysthesis yeah. and the L45. 5S1 so how you deal with that? We will fuse both. So okay. if it is a 4-5 anterior yeah. and an L5 retro, yeah. I yeah. will yeah. always fuse first, uh, both of them. But if it is a 5-S1, same sitting. So I showed you that case. Both were anterior. But see, doing two level uh -huh. is just wanting uh -huh. your uh, want to other place and doing it. Mere if you have a lysthesis, retro lysthesis, what it said, it was yeah, first done by the body I to try to get the sagittal balance. Now, Until as the the anterolysis is kept increasing, Hyderabad. the retrolysis is also ah. increases to compensate. So, beyond a certain point, it will not yeah. uh, be stable. So once you fix it, that is already a lax joint. So, your uh, ah. all your movements yeah. are going to go to the next level. You That's where adjacent levels place. happen faster. So, if it is a lower retro, you have to fix it 100%. If it's a superior retro, and it's a very mildly effused joint and otherwise stable and not moving on a flexion extension view. You may leave it in the elderly. In the young, you have to fix because that's going to degenerate over time. But elderly, there is so much osteophytes uh, that, that it is usually stable and you can get away with that. I hope I make sense to you yeah, because yeah, the yeah. proximal segment is retro. You have to fix. Uh, you may, may not fix if it is stable. But distal segment, if 4-5 is anterolysis and L5-S1 is, is retro, you have to fix it. Because L5 S1 will take more stress than a 3 4. 3 4 is as you go above, the movement decreases. I hope I am making sense. Continuously. In high grade lysthesis, high what is your aim? Always to reduce 100% or when you stop that I should not proceed further? So the aim should be to correct as much as is possible. We can rarely get a perfect reduction unless in a lytic lysthesis you will get. But in a stiff lysthesis, you should try to get under grade 2. The goal should be to get it to under grade 2 so that your sagittal it balance is improves. Is if you are at grade 3, then you are going to come, the patient is either going to come with the screws backing up or the next level going into the same. Because grade 3 will give you an unkyphotic uh, uh, segment. So you have to get back the lordosis. And grade 2 gives you sufficient end plates for a fusion. Anything less than grade 2, you will not have a good anterior fusion. In grade 2, you are able to achieve selecting the cage. How you decide the length of the cage? So, ideally, you should put at least 24 millimeter cage because the vertebral body will be 35 odd millimeters inside. But if it's a very small person and it's grade 2, then sometimes you put in 22. Putting 20 is not advisable because the pl uh, footprint of the cage is so small. It's after all a weight-bearing structure. Chances of it sinking become high. Mm, so okay. the bigger and longer the cage you use, the distribution of the stress is larger. The shorter cages tend to sink. So I prefer to put longer cages as much as possible. In using the distractor, 
that you are trying to jack up. Yes, sir. Uh, sometimes we are uh, breaking the end plate. Door se mat toot jayega. That also can happen. So yes. how you manage that? So One end plate breakage is something that is catastrophic. Uh -huh. Most of the time, it will not happen with jacking it up, but it will happen with the curate. Yeah. So by the time we get in to do the final curating, you have already done the jacking up. Part. So in that case, what I do is I put a lot more uh, bone graft to patch up that defect. And I would put my cage straighter in the edge where there is more dense bone. Or if it, uh, the breach is more on the lateral side, I'll put the cage medial where there is a more uh, end plate remaining. That's the only way. If not, you pack graft on the same side. You dock the tube from the other side. You make a new tract and put your cage from that side because otherwise, if your cage is not holding, your high grade is going to fail. Thank then you, you he's bound to come back. Then you'll have to go anterior the next time. In grade three list, this is the inferior mm -hmm. end plate of the superior vertebra. We have a pretty small surface area for the cage so to sir, sit on that. And uh, that it's is it's the And while we are reducing it, thank you. The cage is. Well fitting. Thank you everyone. So actually you can only put the cage huh? in after your release no, no, is complete. Four days flat there are a bed. lot of times what we do is medialize, go to the base of the spinous process, put an osteotome right across to the facet joint directly. Remove the whole facet so your posterior release is complete. You do a discectomy from that. So, you know, yeah. so that is the uh, bilateral facetectomy. First you try over the top. If that does not allow you to open up more, then you go from the opposite side and take the, you have to do what has to be done. Your end point is, go and do it. I had the misfortune where I thought, nahi karega, sit. A hypertrophic stiff, do the opposite side. This was a two level. She had, she recovered, but she just like moving. But then we went in like within six hours of knowing that this happened. And you cannot say, I will do it tomorrow, or the patient thoda that day. So your recommendation is that if there is a post-operative foot drop, and you have not cut or nibbled or any uh, punch. If you get a foot post-operative deficit, it is most likely, and it's the one case where we didn't do the three, four, we could not get out of the uh, chair. And that's yes. the on the, okay. we didn't undo anything. Okay, okay. We just went and took off the facet. The moment the facet came out, we went the same night to uh, took it off. When she, at five o'clock, she said, my foot is painful. We realized it was weak. Uh, weak turned her over, told my friend this needs to be done. We did a CT scan, confirmed the extent of the bone that was there and just took it off. Sir, getting CT scan then with the implant, some you better bony landmarks. Rim of air inside, so that gives you an idea how much you have taken out. So that's what we interpret, we interpret the air inside. And this was like, we did the CT probably three and a half, four hours after taking her out of the OT. And on the sixth hour that facet was out, otherwise she would not have recovered. Uh, In any hello? case, in any case where the elasticity could not be reduced uh, within two or even within two, but the nerve roots are getting tented, uh, tense due to the pseudo disc. So any time do you remove the posterior edge of the lower vertebra? So the only time what we remove is when there is an overhang, grade three, this is going to be the position. This is the upper end of the lower vertebra. So to go here to see this, this is already over it. So okay. I remove about 10 millimeters by 2 millimeter edge here. So this allows me to see this, which is already covered. So I don't have to go here much. So once this is off, you see your entry here. And then you start distracting. That's so all. this removal you do from medial to lateral complete? Yeah, yeah. So I, I showed it that kerosene yes. that I was yeah, using. Yeah, yeah. That is what we do. You need a 2 millimeter. Yeah. 3 millimeter will be too big. You just remove. So 2 millimeter ensures that you don't dig deep. And you have to keep it facing outside and you have to remove at least 10 millimeters to give you adequate yeah. access and vision inside. Because you're putting a six millimeter uh, distractor, so a couple of millimeters up and down to see is required. Thanks. I think what I about the comparative result of inter transfer fusion and the posterior decompression? Posterior lateral yes. fusion so and I was lateral. never a great Desert. believer in uh, intertransverse fusion. So what happens is if you get a pass defect, you're in trouble. One, to get a proper intertransverse fusion, you have to expose to the tip. You have to remove the entire muscle to the intertransverse membrane. If you're putting your graft in the muscle, it is going to get reabsorbed because there's so much circulation. If you, while opening it up, break the intertransverse, uh, this thing, the chances of non-union are higher because the, the 
blood supply comes from the pedicle to the transverse process. So, an intertransverse fusion is a very flimsy uh, fusion, an interbody fusion. Uh, most of the times people do intertransverse fusion as an augmentation or where the body is tall. If the vertebral body is not tall, just doing intertransverse fusion does not work. You should not rely on that. Sir, Last question. Yeah, in, yeah. In a young patient, 25 years of age, with lysis, both side lysis, and grade 1 lysis. Nothing uh, neurological deficit, but sometimes occasional back pain. Accidental detection. So what you will recommend? So if the patient Cage is or interparse uh, fusion? First thing is if the patient is asymptomatic, we observe. Okay. I do not intervene unless it is beyond grade 2. Be beyond grade 2, even if it's asymptomatic, you have to intervene because it will have long-term postural consequences. Grade 1 to 2, you can wait. And if I have to do, younger the patient, I'm more aggressive because that fusion has to last longer. And I'm very careful of getting my lordosis restored. If you're not going to get your pelvic alignment proper, that patient is going to come with the next level gone. Other thing is also in this people, a large number of athletes come to us. This happens in young patients in two cases, where there's poor vitamin D and bone uh, uh, nutrition, or where there is high impact sports. In both the cases, it requires rest. Majority of them surprisingly recover and unite and are asymptomatic. We give a facet block, give vitamin D uh, supplementation and rest them for six weeks. That's the only time I make a patient lie down for six weeks. Soak it out, toilet kill job. And it works. And if I have to fuse, then I will put a nice lordotic cage in the front and then reduce and do it. So anytime only osteosynthesis of the pars is not rec recommended? So osteosynthesis of the pars has about 30% failure rate. It is only recommended to be done in sportsmen who are going into Olympic sportic activity where that kind of uh, pass defects cannot be left alone. In other patients, it would be overkill. There are a lot of patients who do their beautiful systems to get pars hold and distraction. I personally put a pedicle screw, put a rod and uh, take a lamina hook and compress the two and remove, you have to excise the entire non-union, put yeah. proper iliac crest graft and the only then it unites. But it's only worth it if you're an athlete or somebody who needs to do high energy work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for a patient hearing. Thank yeah. you so much. Dr. Vishal, you did very well. I was expecting all these questions, and I think I can see they are satisfied. Well done. I think we are on Yes, surgery. sir. The case, case is already ready. I think Dr. Chabra has reached there. So we'll just have a briefing about the case. Dr. Ankit will brief us about the case, and we'll go to the theater and have a look. से मैं डायरेक्ट ये दिखाना चाहूँ तो ये भी दिख जाएगा हाँ ये देखो ठीक ठीक तो वी हैव वन मोर टॉक लेफ्ट it is by Dr. Shailesh. And to moderate the session, sir, I, I request Dr. S.K. Yes, Singh, yes, sir, final, uh, and Dr. Sanjay Yadav to come on the dais, please. Okay. 
चलेगा उसमें आपके पास लाइव है सारा मत कट करिए सारा मत कट के आ गया वेलकम अगेन इन द पोस्ट पोस्ट लंच सेशन सो वी ऑल हैव टू गेट बैक फ्रॉम अस लंबर सो आई वेलकम डॉक्टर सैलेश हु इज head of the spine unit at sancheti hospital to deliver his talk on uh, different spinal pathologies and his experience with uh, oam navigation thank you uh, apex uh, institute uh, singh sir uh, dr swarup and uh, the varanasi orthopedic association the upoa and central ioa for this wonderful uh, symposium today and as everyone has already spoken about uh, various aspects i am just talking about certain interesting facts about safety in spine with uh, oam navigation and uh, what all different uh, surgeries we are doing this is not moving हाँ ना मतलब ये अगला स्लाइड के लिए anyway uh, as uh, everyone has already spoken about uh, the safety in so by the time they are fixing uh, if there are any questions by yeah. previous talks we can uh, we can have them विशाल सर साइज ऑफ द केज हाउ यू डिसाइड द साइज साइज ऑफ द केज सर डॉक्टर टू इंडो डॉक्टर अनुपम इज अवर एक्स प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द वाराणसी और द प्लेस एम वेरी डायनामिक पर्सन साइज ऑफ द केज ईच केज विल कम विथ अ ट्रायल सो यू हैव टू ट्रायल यू हैव टू सी लाइक एल फोर फाइव इज यूजुअली द टॉलेस्ट डिस So 5s1, if the L45 is normal and you are doing L5s1, yes, 5s1 should at least be three fourths of the L45 size. Yes, so that's an adequate cage. Yeah, thank you. 45 should be taller than or at least equal to three four if the three four is normal. And uh, initial parts we should always put the trial in, do a CR view to see that it has been uh, the, that height is this person, and that's how I trial. Uh, because the fact that you are fusing, most of them are going to be degenerated. उटिक सर्जन न्यूरोसर्जन ट्राई टू गिव दम ब्रेस गिव दम एक्सरसाइजेस एंड वी 
uh, try to uh, give some time to uh, get the child older. But these are the deformities when there is a significant progression, we have to be careful and plan for some amount of uh, corrective procedures in this. And these are not very easy because shoulder balance is very, very important when we talk about, uh, we always think about the squaring of pelvis and uh, pay, uh, pelvic obliquity, but shoulder also is something which we have realized is a very, very important aspect of deformity. And uh, this is what the x-rays were. Significant kyphosis at cervical thoracic region and uh, challenges can be putting screws at D1 because the angulation can be very, very steep and difficult. Uh, putting a C7 screw also can be difficult in uh, uh, deformities where there is a cervical thoracic uh, element. And uh, this is where the OAM really comes into play and it, it's become a, a habit now for us that we use OAM in such cases. It not only gives precision but accuracy uh, and I would like to say that OAM will not make a bad surgeon a good surgeon but it will make a good surgeon a better surgeon. That's one thing, you know, ki after you do a lot of surgeries, you are experienced, you are expert in your subject and then you are doing it, life becomes very good because tactile feedback is one of the important aspects in spine surgery. Despite of OAM, robot, anything. But that tactile feedback, I can uh, uh, ask anyone who is using OAM, Vishal or uh, Dr. Uh, Chabra because that is very, very important. You know, you are using these gadgets, but it's ultimately you who is performing the surgery. At, at difficult and complex pedicles, a lot of time there is very, very thin and sclerotic pedicles. This is the thing which really is of a great help. And uh, we see in uh, various different deformities, you see the cervical thoracic area where you are, it's difficult, you know, this is uh, putting a screw is really a challenge. You have to do a lot of different variations and angulations while putting the screws in this. And that is where uh, I think the technology is uh, a, a big brother for us and supporting in this kind of ventures. And if you see the final outcome uh, is really good. Uh, cervical thoracic deformity, we, we could manage to correct the kyphosis, we could manage to correct the scoliosis and uh, it, it, it's really a central and balanced spine at the end of it. And I think the credit goes to the team, it, uh, credit goes to the newer technology. And these are the things which we have all seen, what is CAM, what is OAM, everyone now knows about it. It's not two CAMs, it's not, it's the intraoperative real-time CT scan. It's a real guide for us. Uh, where it is really useful, it's really useful in deformity, it's really useful in minimal invasive surgery, it's really useful in revision surgeries, in tumor surgeries. You can actually see how much tumor you have excised. And we have a lot of cases where we have used OAM intraoperative. It's a 360 degrees uh, real time thing. Uh, sometimes I feel it's more than that. And these are the principles of OAM where image acquisition is done first then the registration, then the navigated instrumentation and optical tracking. So these are the few basic things which, uh, which really are useful. And as I already uh, talked about, why navigation? Accuracy. We have published our own series of 177 pedicle screws in osteoporotic spine and that was always a problem for us because a lot of time there used to be a breach, pedicle burst and we are in soup. In our series, 99.6% was the accuracy in osteoporotic pedicles and that's one of the largest uh, published series in inter, uh, a journal of neurosurgery spine. Uh, and perforation rates, now I think with the new OAM, the O2 and uh, steel station, less radiation, even the previous one, S1, uh, the, the O1, uh, the radiation was slightly more. I think one thing is sure, surgeon, the, uh, the healthcare staff, the OT staff, everyone is out of the theater. Only patient is getting 13 seconds of radiation. And we are coming up with a paper that, uh, which is already, I'm just talking about that it's not significant. The radiation people feel it's a CT scan, there will be a lot of radiation. It's not the real scenario. You are using only 13 seconds of uh, actual uh, the scan. And uh, we always talked about this. And uh, now this is uh, the great experience is with the great outcomes and various pathology as I just spoke about and even cervical pedicle screws. One time it used to be nightmares. I am doing spine surgery for many years now. I was always scared for using a cervical pedicle but now we are using it upright and center wherever there is opportunity for using a better hold instrument we use a cervical pedicle screw which we always thought of a lateral mass. 
and we are actually uh, talk, uh, thinking that it's it's definitely a significant stronghold in cervical spine and that that's because of this oam which gives us that intraoperative comfort zone it guides us just like the pilot who guides you know okay, there are waypoints why there are no crashes between two flights we, we we see so many flights nowadays no one crashes uh, on the road there are more accidents because there are waypoints there are like imaginary markers and the pilot guide they are just following that waypoints and waypoints that is our satellite and na navigated gps and that's what is coming into spine that you are just following the waypoint you are just following the gu guide uh, guide and tracks for this and uh, as a, again this is a challenging case 15 year old girl uh, progressive deformity if you see it's a very bad spine cervical thoracic thoracic lumbar and again young girl deformity hemi vertebra and the uh, family is concerned you know they have always this thing in mind uh, you know okay this is not going to be good for my daughter because tomorrow we will marry her all these things and again these are the neglected cases a lot of people will just tell them ki nahi nothing to do she is okay she is managing but the patient and the family knows this is not something which is okay and if you see this is a very unusual curve you know those uh, we realize these are the curves and uh, with this beauty we really can correct this kind of curves and if you see this is the pedicle here and there is no no way that we can go through this pedicle if you are using a free hand but with an oam you really can go through this also and these are the outcomes which are if you see the lung volume the lung capacity everything is changed in this cervical thoracic deformity and this is where we are going to uh, expect people will be asking for a better correction with uh, better outcomes and uh, various other uh, uh, pathologies like high grade listesis it becomes really a very very additional uh, boon for us again 63 year old lady high grade listesis there is a fracture at uh, thoracic uh, thorac uh, thoracic spine uh, i think it is lower thoracic and again uh, these are the challenging ones we really can just go through both sides we can uh, expose and we can go through the oam which really additionally helps us and really we can this she was not walking for almost 4 to 5 months and we really can give answer to these problems high grades really uh, one of the biggest advantage of oam is uh, a, a high grade deformity and we really can use this in most of these cases very comfortably and we don't need to add many levels in this what used to happen we used to go to l3 we used to go in you know, a multi segment but mono segmental we rarely do a high grade in multi level we really use mono segment because it's enough if you have a good hold in all these four and uh, again if you see this uh, pelvic indices everything is significant and we did this delta which is again uh, a, a, a limo delta that's what we are uh, calling it less invasive modified oam delta and we are significantly happy so far with the outcomes of this in revisions no anatomy all distortions and we really can use this oam as a sixth sense or a you know ki additional eye for us we can this is a, a physician who was operated elsewhere came to us with two years of persistent pain stop practice because of his pain and this is what was the problem and there was compression at thoracolumbar spine and he was really worried he all he went out of india for taking opinions and he was not convinced he really wanted something which will give him the best answer um, we also explained that this is a challenging one because of the compression he wanted guarantee we said we can't give guarantee oam will not give you guarantee or robot will not give you guarantee it is the pathology and you know can that is uh, unfortunate any any incidents happens like that but uh, we were lucky to go ahead with multi level long uh, fixation and um, again he was osteoporotic we could use this uh, uh, osteoporotic screws and now it is 2 years he is really doing well challenges like tumors i already spoke about all these things in tumor distorted anatomy margins vascularity whether you want to do a n block you want to do a complete excision what you want to do and these are the cases where 
form really gives you direct intraoperative. You have removed this tumor. You have not removed this. Everything can be seen on table, and that's the beauty of this yeah, instrument. Uh, this is a revision adenocarcinoma. Three years back operated, came with again compression. We really could manage to decompress, take it out completely, and he's still far holding on well. It's nearly one year from his revision adenocarcinoma dorsal spine surgery. And this is the last one, osteoporotic, as I already spoke about, challenges are many. We need pedicle to pedicle hold. That's a precious pedicle. We can't breach in, we can't break out. And this beautiful uh, machine really helps us to give exact what we really want. And that's uh, where you really can uh, get the better outcomes in whatever thing we feel. If usually we had to stop and we used to additionally advance the level but this is our paper I just spoke about uh, and which really talks about very high accuracy um, uh, for this uh, uh, instrumentation in osteoporotic spine. And again, traumatic uh, fractures, high grade uh, fractures and some uh, difficult chance ones, we really can use this. So this is not only for difficult ones, this can be used in various different pathologies. And I, uh, if you see, this this was a tough one, but we, we were lucky. We could get all screws as it was planned. And this is the last case I will just show. This was a interforaminal uh, osteoid tumor, and it was difficult to access. We could manage to do it with less invasive unilateral excision of the tumor. And again, this was... On table, we could see that the tumor was out. This patient was suffering for a long time. He was given EKT and many things. If you see, this was the tumor here. Yeah, and it was into the foramen. It was not exactly. It was the pedunculated and it was descending downwards. And we really, if you see now here, you can see that tumor. And we can just do it unilateral take out the tumor and this was the complete tumor osteoid in between the two pedicles not in the posterior aspect uh, out of the body and we could see it actually on table and this patient is completely symptom free. So these are the various challenges and uh, I think uh, list is endless. This is going to stay, and I think everyone slowly will. And uh, yes, to, like to catch. So, so I would like to. Send deep tendon reflexes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody? Hi. Four, four, five, and just one of the use the pedicle for the lesion. We was it just the yeah. So if we can spend some more time and uh, uh, we can ensure that uh, we uh, the implant is stable at no extra cost except of that of the cement, right? That may add value. However, open screw, uh, use a bike and uh, you may not use cement, but there are various other ways of, of uh, pedicle screw augmentation. You can use marceline ticks. There are n number of other ways in which you can uh, uh, augment the are better. Pardon? Longer screws are better. Yeah. And yeah. more screws are better. Yeah. The, the biggest size screw. Bicortical, very important. Other thing is never do an MIS multi level. If the T score, if you're done, uh, is beyond two levels, if your T score is more than minus 2.5. You should not do an MI because it is a recipe for disaster. In an open surgery, the rod goes to the screw. You send the rod to the screw. In an MI surgery, the screw comes to the rod. So unless it becomes a challenge because as you manipulate the rod, there is an absolute contraindication apart from stiff deformities. Like this case has so much anterior osteophytes. Trying to do an MIS is going to be a disaster event because there is a lot of degeneration right up to L2. You can't fix everything to L2 because then the next level falls. Multi-levels uh, in osteoporotics and stiff spines are contraindications in MIS, definitely. Not do your post-graduation without doing under-graduation. If you
you know your open stuff, then MIS is just a natural progress guide. First, be thorough with the open techniques and then yes. you would... So, other things uh, like Chabra sir was saying, when you use a, a stainless steel wire or a hook as an argument with the screw, you enhance the purchase by nearly 65%. Lamina is much softer than a pedicle which is cortical. So, when you use a muslin tape, it's much wider, it distributes the load much wider. So, these are better uh, holding. Second thing is all steel... Uh, so, the Lamina... Uh, it has a good hold also in the osteoporotic bone as was being mentioned. So, being done by many people, that would also give a stable fixation. So, one of the things we do when we do open is we don't do a wide laminectomy and don't take the spinous process out. So, unless there is a congenital canal stenosis, there is no indication of a laminectomy as a decompression uh, pr procedure. What you need to do is to take away the flavum which is infolded because of the loss of height. So you take away the flavor, you leave the midline ligaments intact. You leave the spinous process it says intact because they are uh, attachment points for the multiferous to go and give that torsional uh, this thing. And uh, this is something that I, uh, again anecdotal, the fracture pattern in an ankle in a young person and an old person is different because the yield strength of cancellous bone of a person below 50 and above 50 is different. So the ligaments give away before the bone gives away and you have a different fracture pattern. Whereas in an elderly, so that's, uh, there is no, no paper or theory or, of this, but this is just an using another one factor that we already know in orthopedics and extrapolating it to this. Preserve the midline. Uh, how do decompress the root? So, uh, you just take out uh, the lamina up to the point where the ligamentum flavum is attached. You take out the flavum. Then you have the bent uh, keresins that you can do uh, for aminotomy into. Or you stand on the opposite side and decompress that. You can see that easier. Partial laminectomy you have to do. You have to do. You have to do. Remove the part. See, alpha S1 is be judicious. Leave the structure there. Leave the joints intact. If you are doing a T-lift, like I like to do a T-lift, so I do it for the more simple. And... Uh, you can also remove the lamina but have the interspinous ligament intact, right? The spinous process and the interspinous ligament intact. Yes. So that will give stability per se. Spine does not move like a hinge joint. If you, it's the classical uh, spinal instability papers that came 50 years ago and what is now thought of as a segmental movement. Every segment is considered as a joint which has multiple planes of movement depending on the segment you are in. So you have to preserve those segments and at least try to retain the anatomy that like torsional uh, ek movement hoga, ek lateral bending movement hoga or flexion extension hoga. So flexion extension is something that the screws will and the cage will hold. But a torsional movement is best held by an intact facet. So try to at least retain on one side. So my friend uh, who does a lot of midline decompression, so MIS is not restricted to just tubular decompression, attachment of the muscle to the spinous process. So to give an analogy, in a knee replacement, if you cut the patellar tendon or osteotomize the attachment to the tibia, it's very easy to do because you can then see the knee better and uh, balance it. But that quadriceps will lose power and you will have a quadriceps lag there. Similarly, when you cut a muscle completely, the reason to move to MIS is that you are give, taking away the dynamic stabilizer of the spine. So like a shoulder, even spine has static and dynamic, dynamic stabilizers. The muscles, that's why need to be preserved as much as possible. So it cannot be that the muscle preserve karne ke liye mein mera kaam kam karta ho. That does not happen. It has to be adequate decompression with the, at the same time trying to preserve as much structures as possible. Correct. And you, the whole uh, means the idea is what you've been explaining is that try to offload the implant, right? Yes, as sir. As much as the normal anatomy can take the load and as less as the load comes on the implant, uh, you are safe.
So the principles of insertion of pedicle screw remain the same. All five walls are maintained, right, with the sound, right. But after you put in the, because sometimes you may go in the false track while tapping. Right? So you should always ensure that. If you are feeling that you are at the right place, but the OAM is showing something else, then how do you go about it? OAM or navigation? Sorry, navigation. That, that means DRF has shifted or not, reference frame. If your reference frame shave, uh, shifts, it will be off track. So, like when you confirm, probe this. See, like I am now touching on the spinous process. I can confirm that yes, there. Sir. So, anatomical landmark and there I can confirm it is fine. Okay. But, but if it shows that it is off track, then, then you need to do the entire registration again. Okay. So, because it's a very shallow canal, uh, vertical facets, right? So normally we would retain the interspinous, but here we, uh, because of the size of the canal, we plan to remove the interspinous ligament also. If the patient is so stenotic, then uh, preserving the neurology and uh, not yeah. causing the deficit takes pre precedence. precedence. Yes. Right. Yes. right. Yeah, because uh, th there is a neurological deficit as well, right? Yes, sir. So you go by wide and, and the hold of the pedicle screws is quite good, right? It, it the hold has been very good. It doesn't seem to be an osteoporotic bone per se. So is it possible that the camera shows from the top what you are doing? Is it Better possible? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now we can remove the DRF also so that you can see better. That's little better, sir. Uh, we will try to remove the reference frame also so that you can see better. Ye now remove this navigation screen that is not required at present, I think. Right. Just show us yeah, the surgical screen. Yeah. This screen will be removed. If you pass it either, then see. Okay? If it comes from here, better see. So the two facets are almost kissing each other. The audio visual team, just please show us the only surgical screen. Remove that uh, navigation screen. Wo navigation wala usme Wo picture in picture nikal dijiye please. Okay. वो जो नेविगेशन का जो इमेज है वो निकाल दीजिए प्लीज केवल सर्जरी का इमेज दिखाइए वो नेविगेशन वाला इमेज ना वहाँ प्रोजेक्ट नहीं करना नहीं नहीं नेविगेशन वाला वो सक्षम वाला हैंड निकालेंगे वी कांट सी व्हाट शाब्दिक सर्जरी Facet Nikala. Can you see? 
the drill hand is actually blocking the other camera from what we are doing, so we are not able to do that. Can the camera uh, move to the opposite side uh, so we can see? No, we will, we will show from the other side. Right, right, we will show from the other side. Round, round, this house. Yeah, we can see it much better here. So, as was mentioned, we will be doing, removing the facet only from one side. Right? and not removing it from the other side, right? Oh, so your pl plan is to remove whole facets of the partial? Pardon? Come again, please. So what's your plan, removing the full facets of the partial? Yeah, of the left side, the full facet, and doing a T-lift. On the right side, we will be undercutting. So medial one, uh, medial one third? Haan, haan. Dr. Chabra, can you orient us to the so anatomy? This is the, is the cranial. This is the we are trying to burn and, and trying to remove the lamina. Now we are on the right side. Yes, sir. Can you tell us the RPM you have set for this? 75, 75. 75,000. Yeah. Mm. 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 Yeah, it but becomes yeah, uh, navigated drill. Ha, uh, we to dusra bhi use kar sakte. That doesn't serve any purpose here right now. So, this side we've been able to reach the flame almost. Very stenotic canal, and because of the orientation, it's almost like a vertical canal.
what is surgical plan sir in this case in this plane uh, uh, in this case we have to decompress that is the main plan decompress both levels and also do a fusion at l45 so we have to decompress not only the foramen not only the lateral recess but also the central canal at both the levels right because all these three are stenotic so we will need to then also see six nerve roots l45 and s1 right i believe L4 is uh, L4 affected. Yes. L4 has a deficit. L4, 5 both have a deficit, right? And on left side, S1 also has a deficit. So all six nerve roots will decompress and also will decompress the lateral recess and the central canal. Anybody has a different plan? No, sir. Sir. Dr. Vaji. I'm just asking. So in, in this much severe stenosis, do you, opinion. A, do you put a rod on one side to distract? Uh, it helps in decompression? No, like Vishal said, right, if there is too much of uh, stenosis and if you try to distract by putting in a big cage or by putting in a rod, right, there are chances that because the root is entrapped in the lateral recess in the foramen and if you distract that will not move and there are chances of a deficit taking place. So it is contraindicated. So you decomp so we have to decompress first and then yeah. do that. Thank you. Is Vishal there? Yes, sir, I am here. Vishal, would you also have done this MIS? Uh, can do it. Yeah, can, can do, do open. Do. Yeah, I know. Right. But it's, it's, uh, but would you do it uh, open or MIS? Sir, this one, if I am doing two level, I would still go MIS. Right. Uh, because alpha S1 and L45 entry point would be same. I just right. want it by about 20 degrees to go to alpha S1. True. But uh, uh, there is very osteophytic in the front. Right. And uh, there is a chance that the 3, 4 and 2, 3 will come back after some time. Right. So maybe in this case then we would avoid uh, open because it would be much easier to go two levels above if it is open. Right. Right. Surgery. That, that so. the principles within remain the same. Right? Yes, sir. top like we do. Yeah. So you os osteotomize the facet, then go at the junction where the spinous process meets the lamina. Osteotomize through that and take it out. So that opens up. Then you do the soft tissue decompression after the bony work. You can use a drill to go into the foramen and drill it out to the opposite side. Because the microscope bending, you can see the edges. Yeah, yeah. we'll use both. He is doing a T leaf at 4 5. I think, sir, you are doing an intertrasses at 5 S1, right? No, no, he's just uh, doing decompression at L5. We are doing a decompression at L5. Yeah, because they are not anterior osteophytes, so right, there right. it's auto stabilized. You can just decompress and come out. That's right. right. In fact, that is what I had told before. <laughs> I said that in these patients, I would very often only decompress. Yeah, that also works because it's fairly stiff. Nature is doing the fusion, so we don't need to. Element analysis on cadavers, where they have done a laminectomy, where they have done a laminectomy with screw fixation, where they have done an MIS uh, fusion with without screw fixation and analyze the adjacent level stress and uh, the thing. So the best thing is uh, the least amount of soft tissue removed adjacent level stress goes down dramatically and the segmental stability also is moved. So you can see the phlebum here. Yes sir. Yes sir we can see that. 
So if you are doing a fusion, till the fusion occurs, you should not rely totally on the implants giving stability. You should try to preserve as much normal anatomy is there. Second, you are trying to fix one or two of a 23 mobile segment joint, if you consider the whole spine as one segment. So you have to do the least amount of damage while fusing that one segment so that the other segments retain their normal function. That's, sorry. So, were you there for the first case we did, the T-Lift? You saw that case, right? So, in MIS T-Lift, you do a, a, a T-Lift by default, you have to take the facet out on the side you are doing it. That gives a good graft. Most of these are osteophytic situations. So, that is a low graft. And when you do over the top, you get additional graft if you need. If you are still falling short, you can use graft expanders. You can do an allo graft, you can take out a small cut and uh, tr uh, uh, take it out from the eyelid crest. So graft is rarely the problem, including in revision cases. It is just that the decompression should be uh, uh, adequate. Just in the quest of doing an MIS surgery, you should not end up doing an inadequate job. That is not defendable. Ligamentum flavum is very much seems to be thickened. Yeah, this is the facet that we are trying to remove of the other side. Chandra sir, I will be leaving because I have a flight to catch. Yeah, yeah, it is a pleasure of uh, watching you as, uh, uh, as usual, sir. Thank you, Adesan. thank you. Nice, nice meeting you, Frank. Look forward to meeting you again. So, this is the facet of the left side, right? Yes, sir. The inferior facet, Are you working at the midline level, sir? No, a bit lateral. Bit lateral. This is the 
part of the superior facet. Yes, sir. Right. Very tight canal. There seems to be a lot of facetal hypertrophy. Also. Yeah, you can see that on the CT MRI also. There is a severe, they, are, they were almost kissing each other in the central canal. facet level you are just you uh, have to get the feel of it feel of as it. you feel in between you can do a rotational movement of the osteotome okay right as you reach the bottom it will break there right okay the other is the feel as you start feeling the giveaway that is the time to stop oh We normally use a punch to take it out. Sabla sir, Ajay. any plan to remove the disc also? Yeah, we intend doing, a, means we can do an interbody fusion also at this level because it is relatively stable, right? Uh, so, uh, not, we don't need to go and do an interbody fusion. We can do an intertransverse fusion also. So, if, we, if the alignment is not shifted, we may not remove the disc, but okay, we just sir. decompress. Any timing of the surgery is uh, delayed complications of the surgery doing so, so many hours? Uh, delayed complications means if uh, the surgery is… Duration of the surgery and related… Definitely. Uh, results. Right. The longer the uh, surgery, the more the complications, right, that are uh, both anesthetic and otherwise. So. Right. The essence is to keep as uh, the surgery should be as as long as is only required, right? So you should plan it well. But then rushing through can also have a problem. So you have to draw this right balance, right? Chavla sir. Oh, yeah. Sir, uh, pre-surgery the power was three by five. Yeah. So there are chances of improvement, uh, I think, within month. 
that question the, in the but power is zero so mm -hmm. we cannot explain to the patient whether power will come or not yeah, yeah. so if the power is zero then we can't say that to patient within hardly there are uh, chances to come back. yeah it has been the of the uh, chances reduced substantially Duration of the symptom also, sir, results with this, uh, any? Uh, there are studies which show that delayed decompression also can have a good result. There are, there are enough studies. Sir, in case of emergencies that uh, within 24 hours uh, uh, occurrence of the bladder bowel involvement patient has come. Yeah, bladder so bowel. So, do you plan such an extensive surgery or the only laminectomy decompression will work for that? Uh, no, no. Principles would remain the same. If there is a bowel in this patient, only a decompression can also do, but because the facets are so overhanging, right? So, it, the, uh, by, by removing the facet, you can achieve a better decompression, right? But um, you know, if, if the bowel bladder were involved, you have to go in early. That becomes an emergency within the first 24 to 48 hours has the best result. Yes, sir. So protect the dura with a chain, right? So that uh, with by pushing a patty through, you can also remove any adhesions which may be there. How many would have just decompressed? How many would have fused? What is the opinion of the house? Uh, sir, 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 yeah. I would like to ask one thing, sir. So, yeah. uh, in few of the patient, like the patient complained of post-operative neuritis. Yeah. So, what's your uh, tips and trick, and what's your uh, like uh, take home uh, message for us for uh, to how to avoid this neuritis, uh, so like uh, for uh, while putting this cages or how to handle the roots. So, uh, so what's your tips and trick? So, minimum retraction of the roots. Right, minimum uh, use of cautery in the region of the neural structure. Okay, sir. Right, and uh, so that that is mainly the key to reduce the chance of fibrosis taking place later. Right, and okay. fibrosis is one fibrosis and scarring are the common causes for that. Okay, sir. So, what about uh, while putting the cage that we can get this, uh, the reason for this post-operative neuritis, is it the cage while putting cage we are get, uh, we are going to have this problem or just because of the cautery that we are doing? The cage, if it is not optimally positioned, that can also cause it, right? Very often the cage backs out posteriorly also, right? So, your uh, voice is not coming. Can you, can you hear now? Yes, sir, a bit better, sir. So, 
if the cage is not optimally positioned, that can also cause uh, nerve root irritation, right? Can can the cage if if we have not applied good principles and not achieved a compression also substantially, the cage can back out as well. Okay. Sir, your voice is right now uh, much better than before, sir. Thank sir, can you. you repeat the message that you have given, sir? Uh, so, there can be various causes of nerve root irritation post-surgery. And one of them also is whether you have appropriately positioned the cage or not, right? If the cage is not appropriately positioned, that can also result in irritation of the nerve root. It can back out also, right? Yes, sir. First it on the So, one can use the osteotome to decompress the lateral recess also. So, can you orient us uh, what are the structures that you are cutting right now, sir? Uh, we are trying to resect the facet overhang into the canal in order to decompress the lateral recess. Okay, sir. Maybe when we do it from the other side, you may be able to see it better when the camera is oriented towards the other side. Request the camera person to focus from other side. Yeah, there are two cameramen here. Maybe they can change the picture to the side of the camera behind me. So it is important that we decompress not only the central canal, but also the lateral recesses appropriately. Yeah, nibbler, we would use only to a minimum. So, we try to retain the phlegm till the end as a, because it protects the dura, right? Yes, sir. So, no, no point in trying to remove the, uh, remove the phlegm early. So, we are now working on the uh, left side where we have removed the facet, right? Yes, sir. Can you just orient us uh, cranial so, caudal? So, see this is this is the right side. You can see the phlegm. Take by this camera to focus either on this. Right? And this is the phlegm. This is the center. This is the left side where the facet has been removed. This is the foramen of the left side. The cranial end, the caudal end. Right? Okay. Thank you, sir.
sir, uh, you don't use patty while uh, put taking a bite, sir? We, we use, you, you saw us using that before, but now that we have used the patty to remove any adhesions before, right, so we are now more confident to remove it without the patty, right? But it is always recommended that you use a patty so that you can prevent any incidental dural injury. The central canal is decompressed. Lateral discharge is that further. Left side, we will work on a bit on the lateral discharge. Then remove the phlegm. Identify the roots. Do a foraminotomy on the right side, and then do the tilling. Please remove the PIP. Structures are not visible. Uh, request to irrigate funds. remove the PIP because it is creating confusion. One is upside down and one is so remove one camera's picture. Only show one camera which is in center. It's a canal stenosis where we are going to do a laminectomy and put particular screws. Why are you going to do a relief in this case if there is no stenosis and there is no back pain? There is a partial lysis. I think a grade one uh, listosis, and uh, uh, because there are vertical facets and a large amount of overhang. We thought that we'll be able to decompress better by uh, doing a instrumented fusion at this level, at the L45. Okay. There's a grade, grade one listosis. We won't have. I, I, I may have considered not doing it, but because uh, of the big pelvic, pelvic overhang and the vertical facets, whereby during the procedure we could have created more instability. Right. So. We plan for that, but I, 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 one could go in for just a decompression, uh, telling the patient that there is a possibility that uh, subsequently the patient may need instrumented fusion. Subsequently, 10 to 15 percent chance if there is iatrogenic further instability that is created. Very often they choose to go in for the instrumented fusion straight away. So the foramen, uh, the, uh, the foramen on top was found to be okay. Jitesh is now trying to look at the foramen for L5 on the left side.
the phlegm is also partially ossified as you would have also seen on the images i am normally a very conservative surgeon i would not instrument most of the cases where it is not Yeah, the, the, the indication for telephase is mm -hmm. that uh, during the surgery and for decompressing the root canal, right. we might destabilize the spine. That's why we are going to use right. the cage. The lateral recesses were also very tight, and in the left side there was a deficit, and that's why we are doing a telephase. We have removed the facet from the left side, which would also decompress the left side better. if you if you can manage and decompress the root without destabilizing the spine because that you is. have to take out the facet a bit to widen the canal in that situation if you are apprehensive that you are giving an atrocity sort of problem future in future so better to put a cage and fuse it that is what you try to say No, no, nothing objective. You have to see the root, and you put a something a cannula or something that the root is free. If it is free, fine. You have already instrumented. But because there was, he's telling that the canal was also ossified. That is why he had to use the osseo toe on the facet. Almost the facets have been nibbled to make the canal room. So in that situation, there is a huge chance that it can subluxate. That is why he's going to put a cage. Otherwise, not needed. will now remove the flavor you will see how the dura expands as we remove the flavor it has been very tight before there are adhesions also within and one has to be careful so you can see that the flavum we are through the flavum on to the dura here always try to be sure that you remove any adhesions with the dissector so that the chances of dural leak are minimized and dr chaba yeah how did it come right ligamentum flavum uh, over the dural sheath right uh, appears to be uh, not very adhered or uh, constricted right can we just split and leave it as, as it is Uh, if you can see the MRI, the flavum is caused so that it can float. It then tends to it becomes non-viable, right? Okay. So there is no point in leaving it then. Okay. And plus, in order to see the foramen, lower foramen better and the root better, we will need to remove the flavum. Okay, right? thank you. you can see how hypertrophied it is entering into the lateral recess as well this is
You are decompressing the roots, sir, right now, sir? Yeah, this is. Can you appreciate the dura right now? Uh, here we, we, we have. Over the, take camera over the top so that we can visualize better. For the Kado camera, so better reach me. Chota camera, you know, better. Chota, better. Chota, better. Chota, Let us. Sir, how you decide the end point? of your decompression at a particular level? Uh, I have to have the central canal, the lateral recess and the nerve root free. So I have to uh, be able to retract the nerve root freely and I should be able to also insert a, 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 a Watson chain or another such retractor into the foramen freely. Mr. Henry Crock always used to tell me, try to look at the blood vessels on the nerve root. Right. If you are able to decompress properly, the stasis on the nerve roots will get better. Henry Crock was a great proponent of only limited decompression. He coined the word idiopathic dis disruption. Sir, your tips to prevent the dural tears, especially in these uh, stenotic cases and also uh, when the cases uh, get uh, a little longer and the surgeon gets a kind of impatient. Right. So <laughs> first should not become impatient. Right? First going into the nascent territory always put in a patty so as to prevent any uh, uh, means remove any adhesions and prevent a direct dural tear. So um, yeah those are the tips mostly. Guarded decompression with the cottonite patties, I think, uh, will prevent the dural tear. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. Any thoughts on uh, facet inclination or variability on the two sides uh, when you are comparing the uh, operating or the treatment strategy? If there are, right? Yes, sir.
Sir, nowadays you are uh, getting the medicated screw. What's your idea about that? Implanted there. Uh, I think prophylaxis, I'm not sure if it works well, but if it would work well at least for, means if there is a spondylodiscitis, we use beads, putting in anti antibiotic impregnated beads, right, which Sir. are available and they then resolve by themselves after uh, uh, after a while. Three days ago, we have used that. Should have been Trying to go into the foramen now, it is very tight. The right size of the instrument is very important. Now I've been able to get into the foramen. The foramen is very tight. It, uh, is Sir, can you focus the camera over the nerve root, sir? Yeah. Can you see the nerve root here? Yeah, the so it's not visible. See, I am in the foramen right now. Can you see? Yeah. Can you see this nerve root? No. Uh, sir, your hand is coming the glove. Yeah, yeah, it's coming on the way. Yeah, the root. The, the suction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the root is coming. Yes, sir. Eh? 
और ये फोरमैन में जा रहा है वाटसन जे एन जा रही दिख रही यस सर यस सर नाउ इट्स वेरी क्लियरली विजिबल वेरी इजीली इट्स गोइंग या सो इट वाज वेरी टाइट वी हैड टू स्ट्रगल सो दिस शुड बी द एन5 रूट राइट या वेरी फाइन वेरी फाइन दिस सेक्शन सर Sir, in such a kind of cases where lot of bone is there, right? So the bone scalpel can be of any use. Bone scalpel, yes, but not at this place, I think. Uh, not at this place, for this reason. It would means whatever osteotome did, it would do well, right? I'm not sure if people use it in the foraminal area. तो लाइट ठीक से फोकस कीजिए ठीक है बहुत सुन क्या अंदर आने के लिए I'm going in the foramen on the. Professor uh, Chhabra, uh, in the other OT, uh, cervical spine is going on. Right. Would, you, would you be, uh, would you like to close down for a while? When you start putting the cage, yeah. we would love to see that. Yeah, yeah, Meanwhile, sure, sure. can we switch off the camera to the other OT? Sure, sure, sure. I'll be going there shortly. After we do the interbody on this side. Yes, sir. sir.
हेलो हेलो So the next case we are going to do in a other OT is a 30 year old male patient, right hand dominant, the upper limb since last 20 days. He got a twisting injury and hit the neck, at that time he felt some clicking sound from the neck, no history of unconsciousness, no similar episode in the past. Uh, his plantar reflex, bilateral extensor, deep tendon reflex, upper limb and lower limb are normal, sensation bilateral upper limb normal. Uh, only um, bilateral elbow extensor were weak, slight weak, 4 by 5, bladder and bowel have it normal. So this is the neck movement. Sorry, video is not getting on. So this is the flexion extension view of the cervical spine. So MRI was C3, C4, C4, 5 uh, disc collapse. This is the case. If you want, uh, mm? Mm. so it's a acute history of 20 days only. So. Only 20 days back, he hit his neck in the wall and then he felt pain there. And after that, he started having tingling numbness in both upper limb. Bilateral triceps was weak, only 4 by 5. Sensation, everything is normal. And before there, no neck pain, never he had such a strain. the patient, he had uh, some gait disbalance. Haan, gait disbalancing is there. Yes, sir. He is uh, sir, clinically he is having disbalancing while well work, plantar is bilateral extensor, that is he is having upper motor neuron right. symptoms, right. power is C7 dermatome is involved, but radiologically it is C, C4, C5. That is not matching, but the symptoms is of UM and I agree. This, yes, sir, disparity is there. No. Primary injury. Yeah. Can you see the root here? Yes, sir, we can see. This one here? Yes, sir. Can you see the root? Yes, sir, sir. Very well. Right, and you now can see relaxed. that the foramen is now open, right? Yes. You can see the full instrument going within the foramen, right? Yeah. So uh, the roots on both sides are free. Yes. And now we will also do a T lift procedure, yeah. right? Yeah. From left side, sir. Or from the left side, yeah. where we have already removed the first. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which approach, which one, sir? Cervical spine. Uh, which approach for? 
We are not going for Syria because it's a soft list. Right? Anybody would have gone posteriorly in this case? Patties are key. Oh, yeah. Ah, patties. Mm -hmm. So, can you see the disc here? Yes, sir. the disc again? Yeah, this, this, we we'll just show it to you better. So this is the disc. I hope you can appreciate it. Suction tube आरे सर सामने। Dr. Chawla, sir, uh, can we take up two case presentations in between and sure, we will sure, sure, keep, please, keep please, on seeing and interactive with you, sir. Please go ahead. This is okay. nothing new, just an interbody fusion that we'll be doing. Yeah, we will be coming back, sir. Yeah, thank yeah, you, sure. Thank you, sir. Thank sure. you. I will request Dr. Sawalullah sir to present his case. I have four slides, but I have a little bit. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I think the slide is full. So, we didn't have an examination, but still. We had a 60 years, around 60 years old female. She presented to us with inability to walk and came on, <coughs> came lying on a uh, stretcher. And uh, she was actually spastic on examination, so we got to the x-rays were uh, equivocal. There was nothing which we could make out. So, and so as usual, 
the, uh, we got uh, uh, MRI done. So there were problems at multiple levels, but the major problem was at uh, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, D, 3, 2, D, 7. And then again, if we see a little more clearly, there were some issues at uh, L1, L2, and again uh, at lower lumbar disc. So uh, the neurological localization was made dorsal spine. She was uh, <coughs> yeah, spastic. We thought this is the most common thing. So uh, some element of uh, kind of OPLL with uh, ossified flavum, Dr. Wally. Any more thoughts from your side? Yeah, yeah. So we, we, we have the actual sections on the next slide. So this is the whole film, and then we, we have taken the specific segments like pointer here. Do we have a pointer? Yeah, we can make out D3, D4 on <coughs> that side there is. Uh, yeah, so spe these segments are there or some element of the thoughts which came to us like what, of course, this is the level which we, where the pathology appeared maximum. So the first plan was to decompress at this level by a long uh, lemicomy in the dorsal spine. Then this was doubtful. It was uh, tricky. We have kept as uh, was standard focus CT. Then we discussed such cases as a, as a team. But uh, so we, we actually planned a standard uh, long laminectomy decompression with the bone scalpel at this level. The plan was that if we were able to finish this in sufficiently or reasonable time, uh, we, we were plan so we, we, we opened up. We kept the prognosis guarded. We explained the patient. We exp also explained the chances of uh, further deterioration or no improvement. Uh, L4. Yeah, since she was spastic, uh, yeah, this L4, L5, uh, relatively less significant. Yeah. But again, so it is a good incidence of patients with where they have a tandem stenosis. So for tandem stenosis. Uh, when we were doing fellowships in Japan, they have actually two teams operating. One team operates at the cervical spine and the other team operates at the lumbar spine in single yeah. single sitting. Or otherwise, <laughs> the more significant aspect, you do the cervical spine first, you observe, give some time. Yeah, but this uh, still... Uh, that we'll see in long-term follow-up is hardly two months post. Yeah, she was she was on st stretcher with uh, with spasticity, not facet flare. Uh, axial image of L45 was a this diff because the my focus of presentation was on this one, but it's uh, it, it was otherwise it was there. But uh, okay. so this we we made a long uh, window with with the bone scalpel. And then we decompressed. So there was actually uh, chronic compression. It was a very tight. Uh, and I think neuromonitoring would have been useful in this case, but we we we, we did not uh, use it here. Uh, so there was quite a bit of bleeding in, in and the flavum was sticky. It was very difficult to remove. There are few few segments where we have to. Uh, decompress it all around and kept it as a flotation segment. So this took around two to three hours in spite of using the bone scalpel and other gadgets we had. So we decided not to proceed with otherwise and we decided to observe the result after this one and then if needed we can do a stage decompression. So after that we went many kind of methods. So now uh, what are the thoughts on the anterior this thing because there are significant anterior uh, pathologies. So especially uh, our friends and colleagues from outside. Uh, MRI? Uh, MRI? Yes, this or which one? Post-operatively, we have not got done the MRI. So my, my thing is let, let three months or six months pass, then we get an MRI done and see the, see the improvement. So spasticity of the patient has gone reduced, but uh, the patient was complaining of uh, Did they some difficulty in the bladder. Three level, sir. Laminectomy at the three level, sir. Three level. Laminectomy me ye to involve kiya hai. We have gone extra one here and one here. Four level you did. So this Five is level. one, two, three, four. 
वन हेयर एंड वन हेयर सो सिक्स इसके ऊपर नीचे सो दैट लॉन्ग लिमिट मीन दैट वी एज्यूम दैट द पैथोलॉजी इज प्रोग्रेसिव that the, we assume that the pathology is progressive we do a long okay. laminectomy okay. yeah kyphotic yes so so that is one thing so that was that's what uh, when we went uh, after the surgery we revised we reviewed something so there was a thing called d kyphotic surgeries so where they actually put instrumentation there and reduce the uh, reduce the kyphosis so that's why we try to remove that use or avoid that by going further long so uh, spasticity has come down but still patient is follow because Don't i think hardly six weeks down the line uh, that this cut that level the top level and the second level yeah third level so that was did you remove that disc yes so this is actually d3 d4 so yeah. dorsal discs are very difficult to remove from uh, yeah. posterior and going anterior is risky because that is the causative why i think the factor is compressive so that these are these this, this is a very this is uncommon cases that uncommon, I, uh, that yeah, uh, very very need uncommon to go from the letter so she was running uh, from for last one and a half to two years she was yes because yeah. so that's how we can thin down so mic dj dr vali ko mic dj please Uh, like uh, for these cases if you want to remove the disc there are two approaches one thing is that you need to remove the facet this is that thoracoscopic approaches are better to remove out that disc you can go anterior and remove with a uh, remove from anteriorly but uh, still because uh, these uh, disc are calcified so removing disc uh, all of a uh, whole it's very difficult so it's better the whatever the, whatever the job that you have done it's better to go from posterior do instrumented uh, instrumented fusion along with remove uh, full length laminectomy that you have job that you have decompress whole of the cord at but uh, i'll uh, i i dis disagree with the uh, calcified disc because the hyper end side what is the causative factor from posterior side sir anterior side yeah and this is the thing so this is a pll yeah this is pll this is not the disc Yes, CT scan, CT scan would have, would have done, yes. uh, uh, guided us uh, regarding calcification. Uh, Another is uh, there are three approaches. We can go transfacetal, transpedicular, or we can go like an anterolateral decompression, removing two three ribs from the sides, and then approaching it from the side would be a safer approach. No, again so I differ. Uh, here PLL is justified, and PLL is a continuous structure. It is not only the disc level. At disc level. ossification is causing problem but provides so you have to remove complete excision of the if you are going from the complete excision of the pll it's only at the disc this that doesn't look like a disc extrusion disc is look this, this looks okay so mysterious disease and uh, we should yeah. for, uh, we should work up for fluorosis Yes, this is continuous type. Yeah. So we we uh, because going posterior and posterior and anterior or posterior or anterior approach via posterior or posterior lateral. So that actually then we have to consider a lot of factors like the surgical time. and all other things so we decided that it's it's well described yeah so this is indirect like we do in a long cervical opll we do long laminectomies from c2 to uh, upper c6 or c7 so stage 1 we did a long laminectomy we will observe for about 3 to 6 months and follow up and if needed we will decide on the fate of these anterior discs or they are not compromised i think you did a good job uh, because you have used these are the cases where you need what you call bone scalpel bone scalpel so i i uh, i forgot to mention so the bone scalpel was uh, and, 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 and one, the department and one, and one in the reign of professor rai thank yes, you very much and one more thing dr sanjay they are very dangerous you know prediction about them once you do the decompression many times you know you have to be very scary when you are doing an opll they might land up because already patient is, is spastic paralysis but the power is there but he might go into full facet paralysis level uh,
So, uh, from those complex cases, I am coming to very simple cases that we uh, really encounter in our day-to-day -day practice. So, there is a big dilemma regarding how to treat this osteoporotic vertebral fracture because as we all know, these patients are very common and uh, for, uh, because like they are very simple but still there is a lot of uh, dilemma how to manage, when to conserve, when to operate. So, just taking a simple cases, I am going to start. Uh, so, I have given the topic that what an orthopedic surgeons need to know about osteoporotic vertebral compression fracture. The reason why, because I was thinking because lots of uh, our orthopedic colleague will be there, because you don't require any extra speciali specialization to treat this osteoporotic vertebral compression fracture, because the natural history says that majority of these patients can be treated conservatively, only few, about 10% they require your operative intervention. So first of all, we should know what fractures what is the geometry of fracture that can be managed conservatively? So, what are the uh, points we need to remember? What what treatment should actually we uh, we need? She is a 55 year old female suffered from trivial trauma as a fallen down. She developed nearly onset back pain and found difficulty in moving. Uh, so, just a simple OPD scenario. So, she was referred to the emergency bay. On examination, she has diffuse tenderness tenderness over the back. But and the neurology was intact as majority of the uh, these osteoporotic fracture they have intact neurology so what comes next so as we all know we do x-ray for these kind of patient as we encounter so we did an x-ray i'm really sorry for the poor quality of this x-ray because they are very old so what we see five four three two one there's osteoporotic vertebral compression fracture that we see because the geometry that we see so so make an interactive. So what comes next in your mind? How you are going to treat this patient? Yeah. Ah, that's a good point. Okay. So uh, when when would you like to go for an MRI? As a first instance, as you encounter this patient, always one emergency, first. always. Always first. So, anyone differ from this opinion? I would like to work up the patient for the cause of uh, this fracture with a trivial trauma. Yeah, that's a good point. Yes. As all these patients come with a trivial trauma because these are the pathological fracture, yes. we should always and always investigate this fracture because osteoporotic compression fracture is a diagnosis of exclusion. It's not a uh, primary diagnosis. So, it's always an exclusion one. So you need to exclude all other causes, whether it's a tumor, it's maybe mean because if it's old age patient, majority of they do come with the metastasis or uh, like a primary uh, sometimes tumor fracture. So we need to always and always investigate. So good history must have excluded this fracture. Okay. So. So we did an x-ray and other set of investigation that I, uh, we used to this osteoporotic fracture above the T10. Then we'll routinely uh, advise MRI to uh, screen out the other causes for the pathological fracture. Otherwise, if it is at the dorsal lumbar junction, then at the first instance, at the first encounter, we do all the metabolic workup of our patient like uh, serum calcium profile, bone mineral density, x-rays. In the calcium profile, we do calcium, serum calcium, serum phosphate, alkaline phosphate, and uh, BTH level. So all these uh, for our, at the primary workup. So after executing all, after doing this metabolic workup, then 
we start all the conservative protocol for managing this patient. Sir, how do you treat your conservative? What is the conservative management do you offer for your patient? Okay, sorry. So, uh, patient was advised for the bed rest, analgesics, calcitonin, and hyperextension uh -huh. brace. As far as I rightly told, it's the same protocol that we used to follow in our patient. So, patient was not getting relieved in pain and reviewed our OPD further. So, what comes next? So, after three weeks, this is the X-ray again that we did. So, right now we see that the height is again getting collapsed for this patient. Right now, three weeks have been elapsed. So, this time we do MRI for this patient. So, here's the MRI. So, there's incidental finding of one more osteoporotic fra uh, compression fracture, but this is healed one. Proceed further. Would you like to conserve why or would you like why, to operate? Why it is healed one, sir? Pardon, sir? Why it is healed one? Which one? This one? This one? Sir, this, uh, because we have other star images also. So, in that, the edema, if there is not edema is present, so then we can see if there is uh, edema is present, then they are not healing or a fresh fracture. If there is no edema on the star images, that means it's a healed fracture. And uh, and the more so, if on examination, there was no tenderness at all on this level. So, so it is like a vertebra plana. <laughs> it looks like. So, what kind of treatment would you like to offer for this patient? Would you like to operate? or conserve, uh, if at all you want to operate, what treatment would you like to do? It's a three week. Would you like to go for kyphoplasty, vertebroplasty or something like that? So these are the options. Would you like to go conserve or operative, if operative, vertebroplasty, kyphoplasty, fix it. When to conserve? Which fracture is ideal uh, anatomy uh, that uh, you want to conserve? How much cement? If you want to do the vertebroplasty or kyphoplasty, what amount of cement? How many levels to go? What, the, uh, what about the metabolic and neoplastic lesions? So I'm not going to get into the details uh, because we are just discussing the case. So here this patient. So as this is the X-ray at the three months follow-up. And uh, we have uh, taken the anti-osteoporotic treatment. Uh, we have started teriparatide and uh, because the bone mineral density score was uh, as around minus four for this patient. So we have taken this patient on uh, teriparatide and two months of calcitonin nasal spray. And at the end of six months, as you can see, uh, the some bone is getting formed and the density is getting improved and the, there was no pain at all at the six month. Then after, at the uh, end of uh, this 18 month, what we see, there's a lot of bone is formed and the, uh, this, uh, this, uh, the previous, extra, previous fracture was there, but this fracture healed uh, very well and there was no instability in the flexion extension view. So, just one more case, I'll go quickly, I won't take so much of time because uh, here is 75 year old female that presented with a back pain and she was bedridden from last one year. An examination, she has diffuse tenderness over the dorsolumbar region. And neurologically, she has a power 5 by 5 at hip and knee, but the power at the ankle and the, uh, at, at the ankle and the foot was reduced. And it was reduced from last six months. She was having this much of power. Bladder bowel was involved, and, but the sensations were intact. Patient was a known case of diabetes, hypertension, hyperthyroidism, and she was also treated case of breast CA last five years back, but that was totally controlled. So this patient, old, old age lady, but uh, power, neurologically she was uh, involved, but uh, and along with her she is getting involved. So we are going, uh, we get an X-ray, MRI. So here's an X-ray. This is L1 fracture, osteoporotic uh, that, that we see. This is L1 fracture for this patient. Then here's an MRI for this patient. 
PET scan was also done and there was uh, no recurrence of any uh, any CA breast secondaries or something like that. There's a pure osteoporosis. Ankle and foot was oh, down. Oh, 75 uh, year old lady sarcopenia will be too much. Yes. So power cannot be 5. Yes. This is one second. This uh, vertebra which is visible, whether it has developed during the transportation treatment or it is a one-year-old situation. So one-year-old situation, she was having this uh, trivial trauma history. She was having fracture, but last six months, neurology was involved. Yeah. But because of the comorbidities, she was not getting operated anywhere, and she yeah. came to us. So she might have developed this osteoporotic fracture, and during the rehabilitation, yeah. sitting, walking yeah. like this effort, yeah. she has progressed yeah. to the yeah. compression yeah. of the colus medullus. There was no recurrence. She was taking regularly PET scan every year. And she is in my regular phone number. Okay, that's fine. What did you say? So, so what we did, we plan, we did uh, investigation. So there were two options of patient regarding the pros and cons for the surgery. Because uh, surgery in such a patient is also again a ma major task. Not in terms of uh, like uh, we are doing surgery because of rehabilitation, ICU and everything is uh, challenging. So we discussed with the patient attendant because the patient was lying on bed. So patient, patient as well as patient attendant consented for the surgery. So we have planned a transparticular anterior column reconstruction in this patient because uh, uh, the bone is not that quality of uh, that quality good that we can do the vitroplasty or in this uh, in this patient. So we have taken out an alternative that we call as a cage plasty. So pro probe and this is a, a pedicle that we have made this entry. Then afterwards, we, you see all the principles that we have followed, longer screws, opposite cortex purchase, bigger diameter screws that we have taken, and in the vertebra that we have taken out over the sizer of the lift cage. Then afterwards, here is the hole that you can see that uh, we have made with all the graft material, and here is the cage that you can see that we are going to put through that uh, same uh, entry that we have made. So this is a, again a peroperative photo photograph Wash. for the keys that we have put inside after uh, loading with the bone graft that we have harvested from the local site. Cage plasty through the transmitter. Yes. I'll tell you what are the pros and cons for this one. Sir, we can. Uh, so, so the bone was osteoporotic. You can do like uh, cemented, cement augmented screws. What we have taken the longer, uh, bigger. So, how you uh, could able to decompress from anterior side? From anterior side. We have not done anterior. So we have done from all posterior. Particular decompression from the anterior side. Why to put the the retropulse fragment to put back inside? So you have not done anything. No, 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 not at all. So you can see the cord that we have decompressed. It is a fairly adequate decompress, uh, decompress cord that you can see like the 270 degree decompression is there. We have taken out this letter wall as well as the graft that we have taken. We put the graft through the same hole. Then afterwards, the fixation, it is a final, uh, final uh, follow-up uh, post-op x-ray that we can see the uh, case that has been uh, taken inside and the graft that we have put inside. Okay, all these screws that you can see, these are the longer diameter screws that we... No, and how, much, how much vertical oh. height of that particular vertebra you could achieve by this system? Sir, this is not our target that we want to achieve. Okay. We just want to put a, a support to our NTR column. Oh, okay. Okay, because you have option like yeah. you can uh, do uh, like a major surgery that you can do. You can. So bone graft is there. This, this much uh, case size, sir? Case size? It's a 8 size. 8 mm. Yes. So... For 8 mm of case, your pedicular height and Fine width there, should yeah. be much bigger yes, than sir. that. Otherwise, by, by taking the pedic, uh, you know, what we do like uh, after instrumentation, so but just D, by putting D, D12, 8 mm case accommodating. Moreover, this is an, just an approach. Yeah, this yeah. is not an ideal one, I can say. It's an alternative one. That what we are trying. We have done like uh, last 10, we can, what we can do like if you want to do the trans uh, you if you want to do it. You have taken now? Yes, sir. It's just the particular size by CT scan? Uh, no, so just per operatively, <laughs> if you, you want to... Doing, you uh, are doing research, then that must be evidence. Mm -hmm. Since you are doing research, mm -hmm. 
So there must be evidence of what is the particular size and the so particular size is used with the cementing as well. Like cement can uh, flow out, and if your posterior column is not intact, then you can do cementing. Then for that, you need to do the cage plastic. There are several other options as well. What is the advantage of preserving the pedicle and going through the pedicle? And why so not you take can, you say you can remove that thing also. As we say, that minimum is required for these kind of patient because they are like severely disabilitated patient. This patient, you can see how the, how this bone is getting beautifully formed. This is a follow up at the five month. For this, neurology has been improved, but the bladder bowel was not improved at the five months follow. -up. You can see uh, the consolidation at the okay. at the lower at the posterior part of this one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So just the take home message: majority of the osteoporotic vertebral compression and fracture heals well, and they respond good to our conservative treatment. So uh, only they are the indication for surgeries ah. in cases of unstable fracture, chronic intractable back pain, or a severely collapsed fracture, or a pseudoarthrosis. Hello. We want to switch to Professor Chabla, please. He's going to the record fine. Hello. If we can improve the illumination inside. Dr. Chabra, can you hear us? Chabra, sir, can you hear us? Are we audible there in the Hello. OT? Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Nee, nee. Professor Chawla. Professor Chawla. No. Hello. Hello. We are not connected to the
हेलो हेलो डॉक्टर रितेश कैन यू हियर अस Hello. Hello. Yeah, can you hear? Professor. Hello. Sarah, can you uh, hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can oh, hear you. Uh, I, loud have, I have one question. Yeah, yeah, when sure. When you have put the case, uh, why not? Uh, I mean, I what I do is that I put the pedicle screws and put the rod, try to distract that area, then I identify the disc and then put the cage and then I compress. You. Yes, so I don't need to try to distract here. And especially in a stenotic canal, I would not in any way distract till I have done it. And then, if we want, we need to distract, but we didn't find the need for it. And uh, after putting the cage, you compress the cage? Yeah, we compress. After putting the cage, we need to compress. Uh, you would have seen this case. Now, can you see the picture? Uh, what is, according to the house, the most important part of management in this patient? This is the main discussion. This is the main discussion. What is the most... Uh, can you see the rent there? Where, uh, just where the instrument went? Nidesh will just show you. Uh, adequate decompression is very important, but I think it is very important to do a very good preoperative counseling in this patient because uh, there were long track signs and there was a deficit. Yes, sir. And if there is such a big disc, they may there is a five percent chance that they may they may uh, rise up with a further deficit. Right, so I think if unless we have counselled them before in this regard, then it becomes very difficult to explain subsequently. Would you all agree? Yes, sir. So I think that is very important. Pre-operative counselling, solimetrol there. Yes, sir. How many grams? Or if we chalne the nascus to continue kar. So because uh, this is one. See, Naskis, methylprednisolone as per Naskis protocol is controversial. Uh, 
because uh, we uh, people are divided into this. The animal trials clearly establish that if you give the methyl prednisolone before before the injury, it works well. And the only place where you can translate that is prophylactic use, like in this case, right? So even if the cord, uh, uh, what do you call the term? The as it uh, the cord swells up. No, uh, uh, reported in literature. Uh, a compressed cord as it swells up, it can lead to further deficit. Right, so. Like a reperfusion, kind of reperfusion injury? Pardon? The reperfusion? Uh, that's what ran out. And anyway, so we have been using methyl prednisolone, not with, uh, and uh, we don't know whether the risk of infection increased or what. We feel it has not increased. Uh, we give as per the NASCAS 2 protocol. Right, 30 milligram per kg body weight, right? Uh, uh. Other question was, sir, uh, counseling of such situation for educated people and, and counseling of illiterate people. Uh, in such situation, uh, illiterate may not convert to the proper treatment and they lose the golden hours. I I uh, I have a slightly different viewpoint. Yeah. I feel all Indians are very yes. their IQ is very good, right? Uh, see people from the developed countries they un don't understand it well. Yes. So then those who come from the bungalows, I don't know what yeah. is your opinion in this regard. Yeah, true, sir, true. <laughs> right. This, uh, this is a acute this prolapse case. No. So, is it mandatory to remove the all PLL? If we, yeah, it is better to breach in PLL. Okay. It's better to do that. But, uh, it, uh, was it white cord syndrome you were talking about? Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you. In society, we had someone present in this uh, su such a case, and and uh, it is a reality, right? It can happen. Sir, in such cases, if patient asks you the chances of deterioration by percentage, what do you tell them? Uh, depends if there are long trot signs. Like I would say at least five to eight percent. Uh, anybody? I I think the same. In, in, the, in uh, without long trot signs, also uh, two to four percent is reported in the literature. Right. We are behind the PL. Yeah. Sir, in this case, sir, we will put in the graft or cage. Pardon, didn't hear you clearly. Uh, we will be putting graft or cage in this case. Bone block, bone block or uh, cage. Cage. We will put a cage. Okay. So. We will put a cage. Actually, we've been discussing of late. There is no good evidence what works best, right? But uh, in a case of myelopathy, right, if it is just radiculopathy, people who have just put graft without a plate, have not put anything, have put cage and plate, have, uh, there were already long track signs and uh, uh, with, with the uh, cage and plate, I would want to attain stability there so that any further chance of 
myelopathy deterioration is reduced to a minimum. Require, does it mandatory that uh, we should remove the all PLL? Uh, it is better to, because if we are operating for neurological deficit, to be sure. Uh, some, there are also reports in literature for such cases where people have done, in, in soft disc prolapse with myelopathy, have done disc replacement. Right? Yeah. So, uh, there, there, there are reports on that also. But there one has to be sure to, on two things. One in a dynamic X-ray, there is no excess mobility, that is there is no instability. And on the other hand, there has to be some preserved movement, at least 2 to 2 mm of uh, physiological movement which should be present there. So if, if people try to do a uh, artificial disc replacement. Sir, if, a, if such a patient presents to you with the long track signs and some neurological involvement, mm -hmm. will you get flexion extension uh, x-rays for the cervical spine? Yeah, under supervision that's not an issue because uh, 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 only thing is under GA one should not do that, but uh, 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 we, we do do it uh, with, uh, the, even, even in uh, injuries where we feel it is stable to assess the stability, we use dynamic x-rays. I know the world is divided in that regard. What is the time point in such cases when you give steroid and what is the dose which you prefer, sir? Uh, uh, steroids uh, means uh, perioperative? Yes, sir. So as soon as we start with the cord, where we expect the cord is to be handled 30 minutes before that. And then we see, uh, if the patient wakes up fine, we stop it, right? Also, it is well in the, in the SRS protocol, what to do in case of uh, a drop in signals, right? In the protocol, it's clearly mentioned you can give steroids for the NASCIS protocol. If we can't find any other cause for the drop. Sir? As you are probing with the knob, right. what is the diameter of this knob, sir, and why not the flat uh, knob, your flat probe? Your yeah, knob? It, 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 is, it looks big in, a, uh, in the microscope. Yeah. It's just a nerve hook, right? Yeah. Uh, the blunt probe should normally in our practice doesn't cause problem. Yeah. That's why we were asking repeatedly for a smaller nerve hook, right? We can do that with a blunt probe, but then if there is a fragment, pushing it back, right, is easier with a knob, with a nerve hook, than with a flat probe. Right, uh, means we, the patient has radicular pain, but also long track pain, right? Yeah, yeah. Long track symptoms, right? Yes. So, so we have to see both the foramen and the cord, right? We have the foramen on the right side, right, and the right side, and, ah, uh -huh. and the cord. The decompression part is over, sir. Yeah. Now just the cage and the plate just is left. Wash there, okay. Any suggestions?
should we look for cord pulsations? Uh, good question. But is there any study which directly neuromonitoring neuro everything is coming fine? Means fine. Ek baar le lete hain. So we have to go for multimodal neuromonitoring. So both SSCP is so deep. Yes, sir. Right. Can you see the? No, sir, not now. Wo wala not not hai, screen. No, we cannot see the neuromonitoring ye, screen. Ye wala screen the camera picture the picture the camera. The microscope ki the camera. The camera frame the camera. The Yes, sir. So, now we can see, sir. Yeah, this has improved from pre-op now, okay. after the decompression. Good, right, if you see, see the baseline now. Yeah. Right, uh, you will just see the baseline and yeah. then baseline defense. Yeah. Right. So, uh, multimodal neuromonitoring is very important. You from SSCPs, you can see a continuous neuromonitoring, right? Mm -hmm. Because motor evoked potential, you can't have continuous. And so, and. So, so read this, sir. Uh, batao, batao. <laughs> so, you have to see whether there is a drop in the amplitude yeah. and the right core. Yeah. That is also important. And the amplitude, if it reduces by more than 50 percent, that is also important. And uh, uh, the surgeon takes command, but has to inform the neurophysiologist, has to inform the anesthetist, and the surgeon needs to take steps. So the use deep anesthesia in such cases, and uh, the anesthetist would look at various things like this, this, and. Uh, and they have this appropriate, so all this they have to do. The neurophysiologist has to check again if the leads have not come out or if there is, uh, if, if it was not, try to do it again and see. The surgeon then has to simultaneously see, is it any step that I, do? it helps because it helps in removing the metabolites locally from that uh, uh, position, from that situation and it may come back. The surgeon, if they can't find anything, they can start steroids. And ultimately, if nothing happens, we do a wake-up test to see if it is not a false positive, right? And if the wake-up test also reveals there is a deficit, then you have to undo. For example, if it happened after doing a correction for kyphosis or for scoliosis, then reverse that and then uh, you have to see whether you need to abandon the procedure or continue with it. So there are a series of steps which have been recommended in this regard before taking the uh, misdirected screws. Another thing which is recommended, always take the opinion of another colleague like uh, uh, a surgeon or another neurophysiologist or an aesthetist because at the heat of things, it is always a cumulative decision which is very important. So, when it is a drop, the patient gets the maximum benefit. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, we are going to close? Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Fragment Right, 
फोल्डिंग ज्यादा लग रहा है फ्रेगमेंट तो नहीं लग रहा इन फोल्डिंग नहीं वो नहीं ठीक ठीक मैं एक फाइनल नेम्स देखने को बोल दो एक फाइनल नेम्स देख लो बेटा फिर केज शुरू करेंगे चल गुड माइक्रोस्कोप हटा दो थैंक यू आया आ रहा नहीं आता अनस्टेबल सी ऑन द सी आम कैन द कैमरा फोकस वॉट यू वॉन्ट टू सी ये ये माइक्रोस्कोप हटा दीजिए प्लीज ताकि देख सके हूँ पीछे खींच सकते हैं माइक्रोस्कोप बाहर Yeah, now we can see, sir. We can see the C. Right, right. So, we have the sizer in place. Five number. Ah, uh, can you see the C? Yes, sir. वो दिखाइए C. Yes, sir. Yeah, we, we can, can see, see, sir. Right. So we should not over distract. See, you have to see the disc above and the disc below, and take an average. It should not be above that, right? Because otherwise. Uh, one, it is over distraction. Two, load comes on the first. And a plate above it, or a combined. Uh, we have we we we'll use a cage and a plate above it. We are not uh, using a standalone cage. Right. Standalone cage, sir. They don't have a plate. Acha standalone hi hai. Acha kaun sa wala? Huh? Peak prevail. Okay, peak prevail. Sorry, we are going to use a standalone uh, cage, right? Peak prevail. not much difference uh, means uh, uh, theoretically the advantage of it is right that you reduce the chances of dysphagia with it right because uh, with the plate the chances of dysphagia are documented and and you can reduce the incidence of dysphagia with it other than that uh, there are no uh, big uh, 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 so the strength is equal so any concerns about like uh, adjacent segment calcification which is mean that uh, it is more so you, you should use a proper size plate right if 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 you impinge on the upper uh, disc or go near it right then or if you use too wide a disc right uh, cage sorry uh, plate sorry so uh, ideally you should uh, use a good quality one means appropriate sized one so again other things of importance when you try to go in right don't use too much cautery around, around the longus coli why because the sympathetic chain is just there beneath right and you may you may end up with uh, uh, that being affected so Uh, that is also important to in between keep Six. keep uh, uh, reducing the distraction through the retractors why uh, yeah to relax more the eso pressure on the mm -hmm. esophagus right uh, also when you use cautery it should not touch the retractor 
Otherwise, the patient can then develop a tracheoesophageal fistula. That is a dreaded complication of this procedure. Ankur? Ankur? Kya ho? Nahi, wo jump maar raha hai. Ah, patient. Jump maar raha hai, toh ye us mein aa raha hai kya? Ek baar nims dek. Ye five hai? Ji, sir, ye five hai. Five, thik. Otherwise, the plate doesn't sit well, but also in the standalone case, you need to do it more meticulously. If you are using a disc replacement, then it is very essential that you remove any posterior osteophyte very meticulously. Because with the movement, otherwise that osteophyte will gradually grow and lead. Acha nahi peak prevail. Acha inka to peak prevail. Wo karna. Bar hai? Haan sir, wo abhi jaha leta. Ankur. Bar, bar, bar. Sorry. So, this is zero P size also the same? Yes, sir. Zero P or peak prevail, jo bhi. Yes, sir. Yes, by mandibular. Malas, please. Malas. Brother, Malas. Jump. Five, take. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, uh, cage to fit in there, right? If you don't bar that out, then uh, they don't uh, sit there properly. So that is what is being done. Yes, thank you, sir. Ankur, hai kya? Diamond? Yeah, diamond. Diamond. Koi bhi da do, diamond bar. अभी दे दो।
Ivanska. We need to take precautions also in this patient because his hepatitis B positive, right? The whole team. Five. Yes, sir. You can do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, But neuromodulant signals, they appear the same. They yeah, they appear the same, yeah. but as we push the sizer in, the patient jumps, right? There is a flicker in the hands and in the legs, right? So, Sudden, so that's why we were a bit apprehensive on that. So then what, what should be the next step, sir, if this continues? What are your uh, thoughts about there? Uh, we did it with a bimandibular attraction to try to put it in. Right, sir. We didn't anticipate the need for a tongue in this patient. So just just a bimandibular pull. My left. So counter traction lower down. And Short, please. Sir, have we placed the final uh, cage? Yeah, yeah. Can okay. you see the Siam? Siam, yeah, dikhaiye, please. Siam, dikhaiye. Siam, if we can have a look. Uda, dikhaiye, Siam. Pe. Can you see the Siam image? It's, it's coming, sir. It's coming. Yeah. Uh, we, we have put the superior screw also and are putting the inferior screw. Yes, sir, we can see it. Right. 
What is the size of the screw which we have used? 16, sir? 16. Right, sir. एक बार इसको ऊपर कर हाँ दिखाइए हाँ now you can एक बार फिर दिखाइए always good also to take a final names because if you have pushed it right if you have not pushed something further so before before closing take a final names that is also important Wash. Take and all good with nymphs. So we are ready for wash, final wash and closure, right? Thank you, sir. Banko. Banko dal na. Banko wash hai system. By the time we are finishing, but there is no. Over, overnight we monitor for any neurological uh, change though should not be there and uh, always post-operative see the neurology. Uh, good chest therapy and uh, mobilize the patient the next day. Uh, and uh, uh, the, it is very important to counsel that the symptoms may not, may not vanish overnight. Yes, sir. The screw is embedded in the cage itself. See if we can show you within. Camera beach me dikha sakte. No, sir. On the C arm, it is appears little floating. Ah, we will try to show you within. Or upper se dikhaye. Okay. Idhar se. Idhar se aaja na. Ab C arm hata dijiye. Ho gaya C arm. C arm hata dijiye. नहीं बेटे ऐसे दे उधर से या तो दिखाओ या इसको हाँ ये लाइट कोई फोकस करो प्लीज मुझे एक लैंगन बैक दे दो लैंगन बैक दे दो माइक्रोस्कोप होता तो बढ़िया Do we have a locking uh, nut in in the center in the cage? Uh -huh. uh, no, yeah, yeah. Can you see the cage now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Ah, is my locking to new? Ah, If we are going to lock the central nut, then probably we might need to push the screws a little bit inside. As, as that's what we can uh, uh, we can see on the CM lateral. ठीक उसके लिए अपने आप अपने आप बैठ जाएगा अपने आप लॉक हाँ 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 हा� You want to know more yeah. details? Ankur? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ankur? Yes, sir. Your screw head should be locked with the middle screw, huh? We'll, we'll, yes, just a minute. I'll just get you to talk to the concern. Hello. Instruments, Ankur, instruments straight Hello. away outside. Bahar se ka sakte ho? Hello. Hello. Hi. Yes, sir. Spine guys, yes, sir. Hello, sir. Anupam this side. Anupam? Sir, Anupam this side. Anupam? Yes, sir. Your screw in the upper vertebra, lower vertebra is getting, it should be locked with the central screw, no? Yeah, it is locked and it is in the center. And it's not exactly 3 centimeter. Just check, just check. So, see the CM also and lock it. Sir, actually there is an embedded titanium thread over there in the peak cage itself. Okay, so it is. So uh, once we put the screw in.
पीक पीक है दैट इज वाई हेड इज पीएस टू बी आउट नहीं Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. बॉस अनुपम दिस साइड सो यू कैन क्लियरली सी इन द सियाम यूनिट द वायर सी अब द स्क्रू द टेंटेलम वायर यू कैन सी द स्मॉल वन एंटीरियर साइड फोकस Forty-two. Can you hear us? Yes. 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 Yes